can't wait to go on the line. On the line. This is the first time I've done in my new place. It is. Let's hope we're breaking new ground. Hey, before we start, um, I do have a question because this this vexes me. So already started, but well. I, I I don't know. Then, it could. I, it hasn't and... come up. I'm not sure. I, I don't trust him. Well, oh, where is the starting of the stream? We'll turn it off again so Rags can ask his question. Well, well you, it, it's yes. fine. It's, it doesn't have to be offline. It, it really doesn't actually matter if it's I'm online or offline. The, the or... Thumbnail, see if you think it's suitable. I, I want to have a look. Now. Let me see. <laughs> 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 Why would you? Yeah, that's cheating. That's not Thor. That's 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 like a discount Odin. It's just. It just it grasps the emotion, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what I was gonna ask because I it's one of those things where if you think about it, you sort of you sort of taint it. Okay. And I, I'm gonna be curious what you guys think. Is it got, how how is the word pronounced? Go. Is it Herculean or Herculean? I say Herculean. 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 I, I would. I, I usually I'll, say Herculean. I'll be honest. I it's don't know no how to say it particularly regularly. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not something I say often. I say it all and the should time. Should it be? Um, should mm. it be? I'm Heraclean? not sure it's a word I've ever said. I should. It, should it be Heraclean though? Isn't no, because that... that would be about Heracles' tasks, not Hercules' tasks. Um, so, oh, checkmate! Wow, I have it's not, not seen a such a he was smackdown by rags to even though I did in my life. Fuck yeah. That was just yeah. Savage. That'll teach you to ask Annihilate. questions. Are you, are you gonna be able to survive with your life from now on? My I voice is terrible. I, I'm losing. I, it, I I just was asking a question. I'm not sure why everybody. Oh, just asking questions. Just asking questions. That's all. Yeah, yeah that's what the Nazis said, Fringy. Uh -huh. <laughs> the guys. Now, I just I need you to guys to understand that that was a joke. What I just said, the Heracles thing. Yeah. Because no, I'm pretty sure I very, I'm pretty sure I very recently said Hercules, and then you reminded me that it was Heracles. I'm pretty well, sure. No, that it's happened. it's both. It's in the modern West, um, as far as I know, he's been called Hercules for a while, though I think his original name was Heracles. I'm so I sure think both are acceptable. I didn't even know um, that. I did because of Spirit, yeah. the film. Samuel Jackson. Well, I don't refers watch to Heracles films. all the time in it. I remember googling it because I was getting confused. Which. What movie? Spirit. It's like the spiritual successor to Sin City that didn't do very well. Spirit. I thought. Okay, I was making sure. Do you guys see that horse movie, the Spirit one? That was pretty neat. Yes. Uh, yes, nice. I have seen Spirit. You guys Stallion seen Spirited of the Away? Cimarron. I want. I've I have not Spirited seen Spirited Away, away yeah. but I've seen Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. I've seen Spirit I have and two Spirited younger, Away. I watched it I have with two some younger sisters, and they recently. love horses. So yeah. Mm hmm. It was no Lion King too, but they watched Spirit quite a lot. You know, Spirit For those of you don't know the deep was... lore, uh, my dad had to lock up in the closet. He had to hide I you Lion that, King yeah. 2, Simba's Pride, because my sisters would watch it so much. He got sick of it and he hid the VHS. <laughs> Just destroy it. That was, big a, hammer. that was truly a Herculean task that oh. he had to undertake. Oh. 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 As, it's actually, to be fair, hiding a VHS isn't that tough. So, like, right. Well, oh, I, just I guess it's harder than hiding a DVD. Yeah. I'm just I guess trying to say Hercules yeah. everything now because I want to. I want to get it into common vernacular because what a great word is it. Might be a bit of a Herculean task for me to undertake. Oh. But I think is it more of a Herculean task to hide a VHS or was it two DVDs on top of each other? Well, the, oh, the two, oh, DVDs. two DVDs would be devious. easier to hide. That is, that is so devious, up. one might even say it was Herculean. Oh. So devious, one might even say it was Herculean. Exactly. You guys are weird Crazy. and nerdy. You're why weird. would, we, why would we discuss these mythologies and stories of, of yesteryear when we could be talking about Thor, a oh, movie of this. yesterday? Um, no. When we when we watched it, let us pretend we have some level of system here and do the classic. Uh, we all say what we think about it. I I would like to go first and just get it over with. Um, oh, shit. All right. And paste my opinion of Multiverse of Madness pretty much <laughs> with a couple <laughs> tweaks. 
and you've got this movie. It's um, oh, we did it again. And when I say we, it's like humanity. We fucked it up again, everyone. How did we do that? We came out with another hot stinker. And uh, that's a shame. We're not doing the thing that I suggested we do for funsies. Oh yeah, we shot that down hardcore. Right no, you did. And we did. No, Mel did, did too, because of the fact that Metal already did been not. Known. You... Sorry, Rex. Sorry. That's absolutely Your not bad true. bad idea was declined. It was. It would have been a fun no. idea. Bad but, idea was declined. Yeah, my so idea anyway, was, the film we was did, very well, bad. No, Mahler said we couldn't do a thing and it would have been fun. things you'd expect <laughs> the bad movie to do in all of the categories. Though I still, you know... I'm not. Uh, I'm happy to say that it's not as bad as Multiverse Madness, at least from my point of view, to give you some level of understanding of where I'm going with this, instead of just that everything sucks or anything. With the this film might be a one. Yeah. Well, I, I think two. I think what, what two was that? What we well, said? I think we we talked briefly about it. I think we said two <laughs> with room to wiggle in between yeah, one and two. That's probably fair. Mm. But I think two is where I'm uh, where I'm kind of at right now. Um, I will say this though. I think, because I've had a little bit of time to think about it, and I've let it simmer in my brain space, I still think that I hate this more than Multiverse of Madness, though the gap in hate has closed. Yes. Does that I want to I wanna, I wanna second that. I want to say that there, I've seen a lot of really shit films and TV in the last few years, but this really pissed me off in a way that's pretty really? rare like really didn't enjoy watching this at all yeah this made me angry this film I, was, like ugh. like normally i like to laugh at things that are bad this was like oh fuck off hmm. this um, one was, i guess this one that's hurt. kind of interest well uh what, what order are we actually doing here <laughs> oh we're a little bit free for working on a subject any semblance of order. well Ma well Mahler started he went out of order he's special so we can go from left to right and just we'll skip over Mahler because he cut in front of the line that's not how it works rags we'll go metal next now because we're doing a new order of Wait. left right left right left right from the center oh my god yeah <laughs> oh, like alternating yeah, so it'll we've be done the other orders you we're shake it up buddy you metal J myself ringy and then Shad. Let's do it in um like let's do it in Let's do it in the alphabetical order of the second letter of our names. Ooh, that's not a bad uh oh, idea. That, yeah, that makes me A nice. Yeah, and I'm A too. <laughs> metal. Oh, yeah, metal. Yeah, so, oh, so I would be first, I think. Yeah, you would have been first. So Jay, your plan failed. You didn't even retcon it right. <laughs> I would have been first as well. No. No, because alphabetical oh, order of the second a letter of before, names. A G, a G is before Yeah, but that's y. the third letter, Rags. We're not, we're not counting that. We're only counting the second You're letter. Saying it would draw which means the three of us go at the same time. I see. Okay. We, we yeah, kind of did. We're, we're the ones we're, that have spoken the most. <laughs> My head hurts. I'm sorry, I'm going to interject here, Jay, because when you have a tie between the, you know, the letters and everything, you then default to the next letter. And which one yeah, I, I understand. I understand that that's the default assumption. I Exactly. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, gonna... you're wrong. No, no, no. Because the default assumption doesn't necessarily mean that, that that's what you're going to do. It's just, it's, you, it's, it's standard procedure. On you. It's, it's standard procedure, but it's not the only possible procedure. You know, when I declare that a different procedure will be taken... Damn. Because, um, you know, it's also, you. it's also default as procedure to do, like, alphabetical from the first letter rather than the second. So we're clearly already thrown that out of the window. We just assume well, that we we I kept the same so. system that we're all used In to and case, just bypass the first letter. Jay, mythical wizard Jay, who is actually next? Uh, Mattel. <laughs> fuck. All of that to make Mattel what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Mattel, off you go, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I I went to the cinema. Uh, Oof. And yeah, right. and then I so. How yeah. much before you start? How much do cinemas cost over there? Is it like kind of expensive or is it so so? Well, I how many, I, how many Deutschmarks does it take to I, I, go I, to I the? I treat myself to the premium seat because they're much more comfortable. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and they they go they recline back a little bit. Whoa. and It's actually pretty nice. Uh, That's a nice. premium seats in your cinema. Yeah, so so you're describing a normal seat for us, motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much every cinema in Australia has like reclining leather seats. But I fucking Wait, hate Germany. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Damn. Yeah, nice. We sort of have it. It's I sort of. Three... I think the back reclines a little bit, but you can get really special seats that 
lounge oh, yeah, back that's, further that's and like, they have the leg you, rest you can get wait, so like first on, class uh, yeah you have hang on see so in your australian cinemas you have a leather reclining seat all yeah um, so all of them so then, then where does the masseuse sit center. so uh okay he does it <laughs> oh hang on hang on, hang on. He's standing do, do you guys him. have like, do you guys have gold class outside of Australia? Yeah, I was about to say. That's... In Britain, we, have we literally have class. standard and premium. Premium is just a comfier seat, but it doesn't even recline. Oh, well, so what in Australia. Oh, 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 gold, oh, oh, like, gold um, class. It's kind of like posh cinema, I guess, if you want to frame it that mm, way. It's you know, it's like an area where you can get, like, champagne and oh. shit and, like, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, what? yeah. To be, to to be fair, fair yeah, I'm talking about my local cinema. Snacks. I'm not talking about the best cinema in Britain. I don't know what they do. <laughs> oh well, I mean, this is part of chains. This is part of um, like event cinemas has. Yeah, I'm talking about Odeon. So, like, so I, it's a chain. I have that... two two local cinemas, and one of them is like you know your chain cinema, and the other one is this like indie cinema that's like it's not even like built with purpose oh, yeah. built screens. It's just got mm. rooms in it with projectors that. And it's all comfy seats, and also there's a bar in the room where you watch your movie. That's pretty cool. Mm. Wow, I you know what? I could have used a bar before mm. I watched Thor: Love and Thunder. See, I oh, had to write. Anyway, what cinema a... did you go to to watch the film, Rex? Wow, you didn't I understand. didn't. I watched it here <laughs> in my home. Oh, so there's like a, you can see a cinema at your window. Yes, I had nice. a telescope. Wow, that's <laughs> epic. <laughs> and in the movie felt better because it was very far away. My uh, mine is too far away. I don't think I have a, a, have a telescope that good. Uh, yeah. No, so now that we figured out that reclining seats are actually pretty common anywhere else, except, except Europe, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, I think it depends probably on the brand of the the cinema brand. Well, I know it's a, a recent thing they added because before before the Rona, I don't remember them having those. So I guess they built them in while that happened. They uh, wanted to just turn the theater into the just, well, so just the hospital, so you could lounge on your back I'm when you got sure the, uh, going there. The reason why all our cinemas ended up having them was because it's more of an incentive to get people in. Like the seats yeah. are bigger as well, um, hmm. <laughs> so like you That's could fit fair. less people in. But I Isn't presume like the logic is that uh, you have to actually start really trying to convince people to go well, to the theater and not to see shit. Kind of. of. Yeah, like, I, th I think that might have been why they did it, make the experience more comfortable, even if it fits less people, because you know that less people in general are, are going to, like, cinemas. Yeah, make it so, a, more, a more premium thing. Even, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I figure that's the logic behind it. Um, but, I mean, still, you got, like, your super-duper crazy, like, premium... Uh, yeah. But that that costs like fifty bucks. <laughs> still Damn. Damn. Okay. No, I'm yeah. not paying that. I paid like eighteen euros for. Oh right, well, I mean, yeah, sure. Like average it's movie about, ticket doesn't yeah, cost. That and much. also, I have to pay more because I'm kind of tied because I need to search hey, for the part. original voice uh, voiceovers because most of them are obviously in German. I'm not gonna watch those. So some of them kind of I'm mostly tied to, to go to the, that play the, exclusively original voices. Uh, you think really? I'm so surprised. Hey. How much do you pay for your ticket? Hey, I'll now? beat you up. I'm um, sorry. Did, huh? Was it the 18 euros for yours? Yeah, 18 euros. But that's because it's the premium seats and also because I mostly have to use the 3D screenings. Right. They, I have to pay another extra euro and a half hmm. or something. What do you pay on average for, well, I guess premium seats if you have premium seats, Rags? We, I think, I don't generally go to the premium ones, so I don't remember off the top of my head. But the base price at the cinema that I go to is eleven to twelve dollars. Well, that's way cheaper than mm -hmm. what I have to. I, I'm on twelve pound here to. The, the thing is, is um, I I wonder if this is a, like the prices of tickets at cinemas changes depending on like which area you're in. If you're in like a poorer part of a city, the cinema just costs less. Like that's just. So, like, you can go to a cinema that's part of the same chain, and it will just cost less in the poorer area of the city. Mm -hmm. It's kind of um, interesting. I think it's interesting that we don't like this movie so much. We're talking about the quality of <laughs> seats in cinemas across the world. I think it's very interesting to, to know. Yeah. That's, uh, that's more, more substance in that conversation as well. Anyway, uh, right. So, I watched in the cinema, and I was like, wow, this is... It was pretty bad. I just went out. I was like, man, I don't really feel anything. It was like with Multiverse of Madness. It was like, uh, 
guess it's over now. I'm gonna take my bicycle and ride back, which was a nice bicycle ride, by the way. The weather was wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, I had to watch Thor in between. Um, oh, disgusting. And then I... It was really weird because I start, started taking notes for the forge I did yesterday with Ringy. And I started taking notes and then at some point realized I completely forgot about the whole gore intro and I didn't write it down. I was like, I guess I should probably do that. So I already started forgetting things about the movie because it didn't You forgot care. the best part? It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, when I started re-watching it, I, I was just like, man, this is really frustrating. Uh, I don't know what, we, what we're doing to Thor. I don't know what we're doing to the characters. I don't know why this whole thing is happening. Uh, I don't know why we need Jane back for this thing just to heat her at the end, basically. Uh, Thor is just a loser. I just, don't, I just don't care about Thor right now. Like, they got rid of that interest for me as well. Good job. Thank you. So, yeah, it's really bad. I'm going to and... apply the general rule of uh, we're going to do this is going to be like spoiler free in real time. You know, it goes through. Okay, okay. We, uh, we'll only address. But, but obviously, you can be nice and vague and broad in the mm -hmm. opening. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's about it. They, uh, they, boy, they made that me not ending, care. Am I they right? Made, made me not care about Thor anymore. And I actually kind of like Thor. But now I'm just like uh, another character in the Marvel universe that I don't care about anymore. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Jay, who, who goes next? Uh, I believe it is Shad next. Oh. Oh, is it my turn? Oh, boy. I don't know. I, th I, I thought I was going <laughs> to Wait, go no, left. it's it's you and then me and then Fringy and then Shad. You said we're doing the bouncing thing. Uh, I gave it to Jay. No, we're doing oh, no, it's, it's, it's official now. The name. Uh, and then he oh, said, it's official sorry. now. He said it. You, you, can't, you can't go back. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to rob me of this rag? My rags. What do you have against me, man? Nothing, I just thought we had an order. I thought Jay had decided on an order before he oh, changed God. his mind. No, my no, my no, order was uh, the second alphabetical second letter yeah. of the name. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, is that what you changed it to? All right. Okay, okay. I thought you were slighting me. That was a very personal attack. On my... Damn. I think yeah. I'll get over it, though. Personal attack or something? Yeah. I hope we'll be yeah. here for a while. You know, awesome. like when you're in line? This is like someone trying to cut in line in front of you. It's you should like, be upset before then. He cut before anyone else. You don't... Have we forgotten this? Ooh. But in all, well, in all the other options, I was always going last, and then he gave, he let me go forward. It's like someone letting me go forward in the line, and then you're like, no. Yeah, it's fine to be last in line. If that's that is the, it's fine to be last. You could see what everyone else does. You could judge. Not your, if you're. Hang on, no, not if you're on the Titanic. <laughs> true. That is very true. Salient uh... point. I suppose in the in that circumstance, it might be disadvantageous to be Honestly, last in line in the Titanic. My favorite part about unless oh oh was. oh, except what if you were in line to get on the Titanic when it set sail, but they ran out of space and tickets and everything, and you were in the back of the line, you never got to get on. You're like ah oh, man, and you you feel like you got gypped, but turns out it was actually really good that you were at the uh, the back of the line. That is a very good point. I might have to concede to that one. We will talk about Thor, I swear to God. We uh, will. Yes. One, one of All these right. days. <laughs> it, it's my turn. And just because Thor is such a, such a riveting film, I'm going to delay it even further because people might notice that my, my sound might be a little off. It's because I'm traveling and I'm using a different mic. This is, wow. so I apologize if, if the sound is a little bad. I, I recently attended the Abbey Medieval Festival. That was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, um, that's great. Yeah, very exhausting though. It's my my throat is like dying on me. So uh, there's a there's a double reason why my, my sound is probably crap because now my voice is dying as well. But I suppose I should talk about this. Oh, oh, so amazing film. Because wow, it was amazingly bad. Thor. Is, so in my review on Night's Watch, I actually gave it a three out of ten. But I also said on that the more I think about this film, the worse it gets. And that is very true. This is oh, like yeah. a crap It's mind. one of those. It, it, it just gets worse and worse the more you think about it. This is so amazingly bad. And they have ruined Thor thoroughly. Oh, my goodness. And oh, Taika Waititi, like, this film seems like such a jerk-off session for him where he was just high on his own farts. 
no, not giving a crap, thinking that he's untouchable and he can just do whatever the hell he wants. And as a result, he has served up the biggest heaping pile of crap I think I've ever seen him make so far. Yeah, I think this is his worst work. Ever. It's his yeah. worst movie. Uh, it's not a contest, is it? Like, no. I think, every, no, I think everything I've contest. seen of his is good. Well, uh, I guess his Mando episode wasn't very good. For about no. I keep on like, it's not, a Mando episode. His Mando but... episode isn't like this. <laughs> yeah, and like, also, like... <laughs> Not like this. I, we've we've discussed. We've already talked about this offline. I'm aware, but like, and I, I know that there are definitely problems he brought to that episode. But at the same time, I gave I give it very little chance of being good. Even like like. You mean whether I or not he could was, have saved he was it. doing it, right? Yeah, that's fine. It's still it's still his work, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's hard for me to yeah, it's hard for me to compare this one to Multiverse of Madness because they're so bad, but <laughs> sometimes they're bad in different ways. Um, and then they're also you know like universe breaking things and all all that stuff. I can't really decide which one I dislike more between the two. Honestly, I think I came out of Multiverse of Madness more annoyed than Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, but then again, I wasn't, like, the characters were already ruined for me in Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Doctor Strange was mostly ruined. WandaVision yeah. was already ruined. So um, this one is a bit more of a, you know, a, a, like a stab in the heart because Thor had some vestiges left over he of He was a little hate. bit ruined by Endgame. Yeah, he was, he was, he was but there was some, some stuff was left, and now it's completely just thrown out. They have just... Oh. Made him such a bumbling clown. Mm. Mm, yeah, no, mm. I think that's fair. Um, as yeah, it's very much going to be a personal thing for uh, which one pissed you off more. Because yeah, Multiverse mm. Madness has plenty in it that can infuriate fans, but so does this. It's just a matter of yeah, whichever gets to you the most. But who's next, Jay? That would be free. Oh. Um, Thor: Love and Thunder is like an absolute mess. Um, I think that mess is, that's the word I would use to describe it over anything else. Um, while I was watching that film, it really, I've said this a few times, but it feels like they were rendering the film on a laptop as they were driving to like deliver it to cinemas. <laughs> um, like because of how late that film came together, it's like, it is so clearly like a bunch of component pieces that they didn't know how they were going to fit together. They hadn't made up their mind on what the story was going to be about. Um, and so you're left with something that's like very visibly sloppily put together. Um, and the result is that you have a film that is incredibly incoherent. Um, yeah. it, incoherent in terms of plot. It's, it's like a kind of a catastrophe on that front. The characters are either thin or contradictory. The thematic through line is just doesn't really follow at all and isn't very well supported. And of course, this is a Marvel movie, so the world building is shit. Um, <laughs> even though the whole point of the Marvel Cinematic I, Universe is that the world building is the appeal. But, I would like um, to highlight phase two bad world building is where's Iron Man? Phase four yeah. bad world building is you've completely reset how everything works again. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, you yeah. introduced another world changing, incredible power that was just never acknowledged, or you've introduced they do that multiple times. So, no, no, so in yeah, two, yep. two do that multiple times. Yeah, multiple of them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's really shit. Um, the something that's been really uh interesting. Uh, so. People can be pretty hyperbolic when they say, like, something is the worst thing ever. You know, it's like, well, all right, calm down. Like, it's just really bad. Something that's been really difficult with Phase 4 is um, that the, the spectrum of quality, with the exception of um, No Way Home, is so condensed. It's, it's all been really bad um, in a way that films... <sighs> What is the range of quality in this phase? Like one, two, and three? Uh, kind of, of. It's in that one to three range. Yeah. I guess now we could how, say it's in the zero to three range. Like nine times in a row, you know? Like, <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to consistently. Something's gone wrong. Like, the, the process that's used to make Marvel movies, like, it doesn't work. Something's wrong. Yeah, and it's, it's only been suffering deteriorating. 
it's been deteriorating so badly that like it seems like even general audiences and a lot of like film people on the uh on the Twitter land and everything are already turning against this film like right yeah. away, which doesn't typically happen with Marvel oh, yeah. products. Which is really nice to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I was actually never surprised. Really satisfying so, you know, to come out of a old movie and go, as, that was um, shit, and turn to Twitter and be yeah. like everyone's saying, Oh, that was shit. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> as we've commented on, it was nice to see the turnover on Multiverse Madness was quite quick. This one was like almost instant. instant. I don't think I've ever and seen it this fast. Wonder. People are turning on this film as they watch it. It's great. Yeah, Which is I, really I was good. genuinely surprised that people have been defending such crap recently. Yeah. I was actually expecting that, well, they're just going to enjoy all the dumb jokes in this and then give it a free pass. But to see them actually come out and say that, yeah, oh. oh. A lot of viral. You can never tell. I wonder if it is just the fact that the visual effects conversation has um, tuned people into an understanding of the way that Marvel makes films. Yeah is not the way that good films are typically made. These films are, like, made in Very pieces. Very assembly line. Like put together. Yeah, this is a sludge movie. They're, I mean, they've all been sludge, basically. Absolutely. Um, but it's so clearly sludge, and it's like, what what is the product of the way that Marvel makes movies? The ideas come after, like, the project, which already is like, mm, 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 I don't know about that. Um, they, like, often pre-visualize and set up, like, action scenes before they even have a story in mind. Um, of course, they need to be beholden to what stories come after, but not really, because everybody wants really. to tell their own story, and nobody even knows what anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Like to where like you have Star Wars. Have no oh, we have a great example of, of that in this film. Very oh, yes. well. Yeah, Just, um, yeah. A lot yeah, of these but... things are made at similar times, or at least crossing over timelines, and nobody's talking to each other about their plans for a particular entity in the universe. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares, and nobody seems to be particularly fussed about world building either. Like the idea of any level of continuity and like thinking it through, just non-existent. But I've already gone on long enough, so yeah, it's 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 shit. It's not a good movie. <laughs> All right, Jay, who's next? Hang on, hasn't everyone gone? I don't know. Thanks. No, I thought no. Rags and. You you two have like kind of said stuff, but you haven't had oh, okay. I was, I, was <laughs> counting, I was counting that as us having done a go. Okay. Whoa. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Rags is upset now, Jay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Jay Rags, you want to go lead. next? No, you go. I don't want to. All right. <laughs> well, I'll go then, since Jay doesn't want to. I'm sure Jay will figure out a new system while I'm chit chatting away. Um, this movie's shit through and through there's virtually nothing that even approaches being a redeeming quality or, or or is even sort of an interesting idea that they entertain you have to dig deep until you can sort of get to that kind of thing with one exception that we'll get into later it doesn't look particularly good it <laughs> doesn't really have it just it it is lacking merits of all kinds pretty much it feels almost personal the way that it makes me hate this movie. Um, I really think that this is I think I think it was Shad who said that this is uh, like Taika Waititi just sort of like being full of himself. And uh, you really get that vibe. This is kind of like the Negaverse version of Jojo Rabbit almost where you just it just it, this is what happens i guess when you get too full of yourself after making ragnarok and you think you can do no wrong and mm. you just do whatever you want and it'll all be great and fine and people will love it and ooh, i'm gonna ruin your mythos i'm uh, not i clever you know it's 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 just this it's almost well a, this, it's, this, it's this. like um i'm i'm the the guy who makes the funny movies but i've also made movies that have heart um i can make jokes all the time that never undermine the drama yeah, yeah. the drop-off in quality the good well, oh no, yeah i never so. i <laughs> obviously mileage will vary in terms of the kind of enjoyment you get from the humor from comedies i thought ragnarok was hilarious through and through yep. i really really enjoyed ragnarok's jokes chris mm -hmm. hemsworth has excellent comedic timing and he, he's he's a really funny guy um, and he was directed well, and the jokes were written well, and they were placed appropriately. Ragnarok knew when it was time to have a moment to be solemn and to be serious. 
And you just don't have that in this movie because everything is undercut by a joke. This has become the thing that people have been saying Marvel has been like for yeah. years. Now it's that thing, thanks to this movie. And yeah, to me, they dialed that, 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 that thing you're talking about. This is they the dialed example. that up to 11. Yeah, this is, is the worst yeah, example. Yeah, I don't think we can get worse than this. The, the the amount of comedy getting in the fucking way, like rearing its head all the time to be like, laugh! And you're like, no. Well, so, yeah. I this, wanna. This, this movie has broken audiences in that regard. Um, in the, when we were watching the movie... I don't think you can give that example yet. We're gonna have to wait. Okay. <laughs> we will get there. Uh... Is the, I just want to build off of something that Rags was saying about um, the, any redeeming features in the film. To me, there was one thing that I actually appreciated and liked, and we'll, I'll point that out when we get to it. Yeah, the there was one thing, but it, it's more of a subjective personal thing, but Sex I appreciated it was in there. Uh, uh, no, no. I, I can see why you might like it, but no. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. Um, It'll be interesting. We'll see. And there might be a second thing that I was glad it was in there, but it's not much. Uh, yeah, so... I don't know if it's it worth is. saying. Uh, every... I thought the performances were absolutely fine, if not good, and Christian Bale's actually putting in effort, and it's just such a waste. Yeah, he is putting in effort. I for think a that he rises waste. above the rest, yeah, for for ultimately maybe well, the so... worst villain we've seen in a long time. Uh, hmm. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> I, I, that's, that's, I'm sure that'll be a conversation. That is an actually. interesting conversation well, to have, how he so... ranks. The reality is that this is the case with pretty much every Marvel movie. The performances are never the problem, or at least yeah. they haven't been for, like, ages. Or ever, really, I don't think. No. Yeah, the performances have always been pretty reliable. Um, mm -hmm. The actors are being let down by the material. Um, Christian Bale is definitely, ex like, rising above the material. The material itself to is... To the point... Um, where I feel like if you he was just having a night out, you went to Tesco to grab some some, and you just put a gun to his head and said, "Act as though you're a father who's <laughs> doing blah 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 blah." So you know, cry your eyes out and and curse this creature over here for doing this that and the other. He could do it. He would just do it straight away, and it would be completely believable because that's how talented he is, and that's how it feels yep. to me in this movie where it's like, "Yeah, I can act if you guys want," and then they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And he's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll do it." Um, it's weird, though, because it's housed within a film that just doesn't seem to give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It is strange to see that contrast when it's very blatant that this film seems to be almost reveling in its irreverence of everything. And it's it's trying to be jokey. This is a very this film comes across as very immature and childish. Mm -hmm. And Christian Bale is really, really putting in. He's given it all. And it, it, it stands out. It's almost it's weird. The contrast. Particularly after that said. first scene and then what we get into. What Mauler said, how this film just doesn't give a crap, right? This is probably the strongest example in recent memory for me that really demonstrates this. On multiple levels, this film almost goes out of its way to undercut any possible dramatic yeah. tension, but to also disrespect important dramatic things that has happened in characters' past and everything like that, yeah. and it just mm -hmm. plays it as a joke. It just does not give a friggin' crap to an insulting so, level. Were you made angry um, by any of Ragnarok. them? Ragnarok. There's a couple of things that do make me very angry in this. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Frustrated, so yeah. I'll, I'll probably bust a gut when we come to it chrono <laughs> chronologically. I'll bust too. Like, um, Ragnarok was uh, not afraid to be childish, whereas uh, Love and Thunder is afraid to be grown up and mature. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Why well, you tweet that out? Yeah, yeah tweet that that's, out. That. <laughs> that's, I, I, that's enough tweets for one day. Well, uh, uh, more trouble. It's probably worth, yeah, because like it, uh, the tweet I put out, I still feel like sums up my position on this as well, but it's it's a slight echo of what uh, Fringy's already said, and, and and well, all of us have actually said in terms of how it's produced, but I said that um, the film feels Slam. like it was made in a factory that was made by a factory factory that was made by robots studying human statistical reactions to sense data without knowing what a joke or drama is. Um, mm -hmm. It's a mess, doesn't even come close to explaining this thing. And I, I genuinely feel that way. Like, it, it doesn't feel quite right like it was made by a person as opposed to someone who's just, like, piecing bits together that they know work, quote-unquote, um, but doesn't at all, um, and they haven't cared to see the final thing. They've just, just put a bunch of shit together. 
I'm interested in this analogy because what parts would you say are the kind of stock standard factory Marvel things? There's loads of jokes that aren't jokes. There's loads of people uh, talking to each other without the words, like the sentences or the reactions of actually reacting to things people are saying. They just keep moving. Things keep happening. Like, uh, nobody really in the film acts like themselves, and they don't seem to even acknowledge they're in scenes a lot of the time. It's, like, mm. utterly bizarre. And then tonally, yeah. the, it just switches on a dime to the point where it feels like a robot is actually sending you signals to be like, this is, we've got two minutes of laughter, 30 seconds of sad, five minutes of laughter, four minutes of action, one minute of sad. Yeah, like, they have a, an algorithm that they use like, to yeah, figure Yeah, AI-generated comedy, it, almost. It doesn't feel at all natural. Passion. When anything like, moves from any, scene, yeah, a scene because, would demand a certain amount of time, like to be dramatic. Mm. But then they're like, "Well, time is up. We're moving on. We got action scene to get to. Like, we're on a yes. we're on a timeline here, guys. Like, let's get um, moving." You know, it's fun I wonder to, to break it down for why, but just it really does feel like the most produced thing I've ever seen, movie wise. Uh, this one, it's, see, not... it's interesting that because I I see what you're saying absolutely and I wonder if it's the way that the film was edited because I've heard there's like a a 4 hour cut of this film yeah I've that, heard that too like a, no, just like they his style of it, like directing is everyone comes into the scene they have a good old jolly time they ad lib heaps of a good old what time sorry good old jolly time have you ever All had right. a good old jolly time Max? Oh, yeah. tons, tons. I love tons, it. Tons, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it seems like the, the set work is not taken very seriously. Taika is just having a lot of fun, and they get all this uh, like crazy amount of uh, just footage that doesn't really fit well with everything else. Mm -hmm. And then come editing, they have just an insane amount of footage of and what, si what sounds like my impression is they have a lot of it is disjointed because it's all done sporadically and ad-libbed and then they had to try and cut a film together that's in a more reasonable time frame and then you get this mess well yeah well i'll try and um, point them out as we go for what i think are some of the most choppiest edits in this whole film because there's a lot of them um but it, again with the algorithm idea of the minutes and minutes and minutes it's like they filmed a bunch loads of comedy a, a bit of action and a bit of sad and then they chopped those up into series of one minute two minute three minutes tossed them all into baskets and then just were like what do we need here and it's like three minutes sad and they grabbed any random one and then they just chunked them <laughs> together and glue them like it, it's this is what i mean by produce they've cracked the formula to a perfection level that has now made it so that nobody can enjoy this anymore Mm, and it's it'll be interesting to see what what comes of that with like upcoming projects if the formula continues to like break and be and these things get like really poorly received straight away mm -hmm. like, yeah mm. which you know it give, gives us some level of hope as almost silly as that sounds <laughs> it's like hey maybe yeah. if because if this was doing incredibly well critically then marvel would not wouldn't have to change that's always been what we say like well, no, but, as... but both both this and uh, multiverse were like distinctly. Well, it, the, so I Rotten Tomatoes is not like a useful metric at all. It, the only thing that's useful about it is considering like what it says about um, perceptions among audiences. Mm -hmm. When a Marvel movie gets like a sixty or a seventy on Rotten Tomatoes, you kind of need to like skew that down a lot most of the time. Yeah. So, like, if it's six, it's probably like a two or a one. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. like, Marvel movies tend to get uh, reviewed just more favorably than that. So, it's like really interesting in terms of what it says about them, um, where Marvel's at. Like, when something gets, oh, a 70, it's like, well, that's good on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like, it ain't good for Marvel, though. <laughs> like, no. in general, based on um, how their films are received. So yeah, I would happily yeah, describe everything we've said so far as glowing praise, and that anybody <laughs> looking to find out exactly what happens in this movie, uh, you're in for a ride, obviously. Mm. So, yeah. But before we get into the first scene, is there anything else you guys wanted to set as sort of a groundwork, foundation, talking point? Oh, no, uh, the movie's uh, bad. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I guess. Um, the movie, hmm. so, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll have my, my quick go. The oh. movie is ex extremely bad. Um, all of the characters are bad. Um, yeah, yeah. With a particular focus on just like Thor is um, reduced. Um, he is a punching bag character um, for this film where he's there to be made fun of. Um, 
and nothing is seemingly off limits. Um, uh, Jane Foster is like, um, the film doesn't seem to be aware of what her traits are. She will say a particular thing, and the film, it, it, it'll be like, you know, it might be particularly egotistical, or it might be, uh, it might be completely yeah. lacking in any sense of priority, and the film doesn't seem to notice. Um, I'd be seems, curious. The film people... seems to think she's really cool. Oh, it it, it insists that she's very cool. You know, yeah. I completely agree, Jay. Like my impression of Jane Foster in this is that she has certain lines that l feel like they come from completely different characters at different points in the film. And if you, if it was a different person playing the role and the name wasn't given, you'd have a hard time picking out who this character is, apart from you know the relationship with Thor and stuff. But yeah, there's, there's struck me as that. I, I, I'll I'll give specific examples as they come up. But there were times where I was like. Okay, this is new. She's not behaving the way she used to here and there. Yeah. Even totally even within this film, without reference to the previous um, appearances of her, um, she just feels off. Um, it feels like it feels like her dialogue was written by, uh, like it feels like there were three separate writers who wrote her without talking to each other, um, like at all, uh, or in communicating or in any way. But like they wrote the same lines in in the same scene. Like they wrote. She feels um, like a wandering interloper in this movie. Despite like, how try to they might try to make her seem super important and everything like that. It, like she doesn't have a place, even though she clearly has a place, but it's like a lost character. Kind of like Valkyrie. Valkyrie more so. But he's like, I you're just sort of here. You're around. You're you're yeah. you wandering. Are, are, are you kind of other... like talking about? You know how like when you think about stories that can be really tight, how like the the uh, whatever arc the main character's going on is in some way like pretty intrinsically linked to the external conflict. Um, like, like you could directly. clearly, it's yeah, like like a Lord of the Rings where every character you're here to do this, you're doing this, you you know this person. Everyone's pretty. Yeah, people just aren't well, I, superficial in I guess, a sense. Uh, they don't just they're not just around. Well, it, I guess what I mean is that um Jane's arc is kind of like its own thing that really doesn't have much to do with the central conflict with like gore and and uh saving uh well I guess <laughs> we're jumping into plot stuff. Maybe maybe it'll become clearer as we talk about it, or maybe I'll yeah. figure out exactly yeah, what I mean. The final the final character I wanted to name check was Gore, who was just Again, um, same description. It feels like three separate writers got to write his dialogue and none of them realized there were other writers working on the project. And then they included a random hodgepodge of things that all three of them had contributed. Kind of, yeah. yeah I, he is without spoiling, he is one of the say, most blatantly... Yeah, go ahead. You know, after just even... A, you get a selection of lines and then the second time we see him, you're already like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yes. It's... it's it's like it's like fucking character assassination speed run. Like yeah, they introduce it is. him it is. immediately. <laughs> yeah. the, the immediately exactly what we've learned about him is oh no, actually the opposite thing. And you're like oh, oh wait ha what? Gore is one of the most efficiently inconsistent characters that you could find in terms of <sighs> being a villain. It it's the totally bad. I think I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, because um, I shouldn't really be saying this yet, but just the That's it's an it's easy. an action rather than even dialogue, an instant one that tells you, like, oh, they fucked it up. Um, but, we'll, you know, we'll get there. It's just, oh, it's, it's kind of interesting. His motivations flip-flop throughout the film, and the film is only aware of it occasionally, yeah. and even when it is aware of it, it doesn't earn it. And they don't do anything with it. Yep. No, I think that's one of the things that kind of is a huge unfortunate aspect when it comes to Gore, our, our main villain is that he potentially could have been very interesting, oh, but yeah. they do absolutely mm -hmm. yep. nothing. Um, After that first scene, awesome. you think, oh, this is neat. This is an interesting premise. I wonder what they'll do with this. The answer is nothing, and the opposite. So, so that's Especially in, um, in the MCU, where, uh, as far as I recall, I'm going to have to rewatch for Thor 1 and 2 to, to verify this, or maybe chat could verify it for me now. Um, I remember... In the first two Thor films, Thor is not explicitly a god. He is a 
figure of great power, but he's just like a dude from Asgard who was worshipped as a god in in the Old Norse. Like that's how I remember it, which seems very strange uh, that now it's there is a canon of no, there's just a, a they seem to be like almost a race of people who are just called gods. Mm. Well, it is a confusing um, nature in this. It, it's that, a confusing like, aspect of this film. It'll be a launching pad yeah. for beyond that. that be, like, be, beyond that, um, hang on, I've, how, I've, I've, I've been thrown off. Mola, how dare you? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, right. Um, it, there's like a lot of potential for gore there, and like I would rather see um, a well-realized gore in um, a world where it's not, there's not like literal gods that are walking among us and yeah, they're just a race of people called the gods. I would much rather see this character exist in a world where, um, yeah, some people are worshipped as gods because they are comparatively a lot more powerful than the people who worship them. And you would see Gore choosing who to slay on this basis based on like these not not actual just like that guy's a god, that guy isn't. That's just a fact. But rather a set of standards that he has. Yes, Chad, I did say among us. Um, <laughs> a set of standards that he has to determine who should die for like committing the sins of acting as a god essentially. A little bit. We haven't even told him what he does yet. <laughs> like, That's a, yeah, I, I suppose. Um, in which case, uh, shall I start this thing up? Shall we, shall we start talking about what happens in if, this film? Well, if, if, if you don't mind for pausing for just a moment, I'm going to get a drink and we can dive right on in to Why plot like things. So the movie starts and you see John Connor um, at a bar, <laughs> at like on a beach. I'm gonna get a drink. Tell him about John Connor, Jay. Oh. Um, and then a, a, like a, an old T800 shows up and it shoots John in the chest. Yeah, I love that scene. How many people here have seen Dark Fate? I, have, I mean, uh... we watched it together. <laughs> I have not, because I wanted to protect my sanity. Dude, you would have gone Good nuts. Good choice. <laughs> fucking murder John Connor in the opening scene. Uh, I, I know, I have heard. <laughs> Dark Fate is a uh, tougher one to pretend doesn't happen because of the legitimacy that it has of having uh, Sarah Connor in it, I think. Like Genesis, oh, I, I, I can treat as some easy, weird... I don't know, I don't right. know. It's I, I, also I, easier I, to pretend that it didn't happen because there's just two contradicting well, versions of events that have been put to film. No, so I, I guess what I'm saying it. is it's hard... It's hard uh, to do it, but I think I could happily watch Terminator 2, see the thumbs Not up like... as you get into the into the, the lava, and just I be think like, it's easier yeah, than most. I, I think it, I think it's easier than most. Like, um, just because it's like, hey, there's actually like no hard one canon thing that happens next. Like, even the studios have got. I mean, like, yeah, there's just two options of things that you can like. You can either go with the Terminator 3 to Genesis, or you can go with Terminator Dark I Fate. They just straight up said those were decanonized. Yeah, they did. They said that Dark Fate I mean, was the canon okay, sequel. Okay, I suppose, two. okay. James Cameron said that. But it like, the, the old films still exist, so when you're watching it's them, I guess you would count them as an Elseworlds story then? <laughs> Greatest pioneer. No buts to even... It's who's that? It's him, <laughs> Cameron. As like as that with there being like Elseworld story that are that just that are just as good as Dark Fate, I feel like it becomes much easier to just say fuck it, you know. Um, who, there's so many options here. Who cares which one I pick? I could just pick none of the above, I guess. I mean, it's but, so um, it, it, it gives a legitimacy to the stance that hey, no one can really decide what happens next. There's the first two, everyone agrees that those ones are canon, and then the next ones is, you know, there's some debate of literally the events that will happen next. Well, there didn't used to be a debate. Like, Terminator 3 was <laughs> Like, that well, yeah, was just like, <laughs> before, like the, the, but then they changed their it's mind. It's decanonized Terminator 3 much yeah, more than it's canonized Dark Fate. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. I, I, I guess it's more so like, I'm pretty sure we talked about this with Star Wars, where I said, like, as much as I would like to, when I see in Return of the Jedi, yeah. they're all there, happy with the Ewoks, all I can think is, you all failed, and you're all gonna die. <laughs> like, it's, it's, I can't, I can't not think about mm -hmm. what comes afterward. Meanwhile, for whatever reason, I don't ever think of Solo as, like, actually having happened. Um, oh, I yeah, I think about being... Solo all the time. I forget about Solo, and there's another one that I forget about, but, of course... <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Rogue One? Uh, 
No, well, not Rogue One. Solo and Kenobi. Damn, Man, the Christmas no. special. And Booby. I don't know. Maybe it'll come the Ewok to me. Ones. No. I think Kenobi. I think. Hey, Kenobi I like has Ewoks. Been, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, Kenobi has already slipped into the place where I don't really consider it canonical. Almost like I just. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. Even, oh, I don't. While I, I, I was watching that bitch, like, ugh. I was. Like, I, I just don't believe happened. these events happened. Um, it's so blatantly okay, canon breaking for me. Uh, did I, well. I I wasn't sure if I'd made up my mind yet on like where I'd subconsciously sat on that. I don't blame I, you. I don't it's care. a weird one. Yeah. All right. But anyway, I guess we're here to talk about Thor. Love yeah, and Thunder. Yeah. So you know, last we saw Thor it was the end of Endgame, right? And he's gonna go team up with the Guardians. And we yeah, all yeah, yeah. Them what exactly. I can't wait to see Thor hanging out with the yeah, Guardians again. Yeah, they had such great chemistry with some of the characters, and it'll be so cool to see them hanging out together and going from place to place, and did their interactions and dialogue and developing with their relationships. Oh, it'll be great! I can't wait to see some of that. Um, of course, with last saw him, he was also a Chongus. <laughs> And, um, and, you know, it, it, I guess there's no point in actually stating who, who matters to him and where they're, they're at. We'll just do that based on who gets introduced in the story. But we don't even open on, on Thor. We don't. We open on Gore. Gore. <sighs> um, I thought it was funny when, uh, in Drinker's video, he was, like, getting frustrated with the fact that there's characters called Gore, Thor, and Korg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gore, Thor, and Korg. It's like the Elden Ring bosses. Yeah. I still don't remember the differences. Same. Uh, up. <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, it's a guy. He's in a desert. It's Christian Bale, actually. And, awesome! Uh, oh my God, it's Christian Bale. He's praying to a god, and he's just keep on moving and with his daughter. Christian. And it's just this. It, it was already just a little bit awkward for me. You guys can maybe help me out because what I heard that he's holding her and looking at her, and then she says, "I'm dying." I think. No, I think she says I'm tired. Oh, well, I guess that's better. Well, she ain't lying either way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But well, okay. Maybe then, she's wide away. Uh. Then she does close her eyes, and I think it fades to him having made a grave. Um, mm hmm Fucking hell, that'd be tough. Out there, probably. Especially oh yeah. How weary he is, but yeah. Also, it's for your daughter. Which will also be tough. Yeah. Um. So that's 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 that's. It's already like you know two minutes in, and you're just like, oh damn. Poor guy. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Going through a lot. Uh, and then he like looks up and he spots. I guess. Uh, uh, would you call that an oasis or just a series of trees? I would certainly call it an oasis. Yeah, me too. Uh, and it's like, oh shit. Okay. And I think that the, the automatic assumption would just be like he's the mirage or something. Someone's doing something to him. Something he gets going to on. the edge of the biome in Minecraft. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he wanders over there. Gets in, he starts, starts, he falls into like a little, little pool, eats some food, drinks some water. It's like, wow, he's been blessed, clearly. Yeah. Um, and then, then he's, so something weird happens, and I'm still not sure exactly what it is. He cuts his hand. Did he cut his hand on something random, or did he cut his hand on the blade? It's the I blade. Think he cut his hand on the blade. Yeah, yeah. The God. So, uh, but something they show us is that the cut he has heals instantly. Yeah. I didn't yeah, know. And I the, don't know. Is that their way of saying in this area you heal your wounds or It's either that or he's or... already kinda affected by the blade for some reason as soon as he touches it. The uh, water he drank was blessed healing water or the same with the fruit is in right. the Yeah, because it doesn't really like... go anywhere. We just I see, you know, no it's like idea. oh I yeah. Have, yeah, I have no idea what to even say here. I just don't know. I, yeah, maybe they, they're telling us that Gore time. has regenerative abilities. Uh, I don't, I'm not, in, I'm not sure, because it doesn't really come up again, um... Well, he gets stabbed, and he's fine. I guess I that think. could be a, a form of saying it's yeah. come up again, yeah. Uh, or maybe it's just a terrible sword. writing. It's the Oasis, <laughs> or it's the sword, <laughs> or it's gore, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Well, yeah, we don't know. It, yeah, it's we, it's bad writing, because they don't indicate or try and give an explanation, oh. they just show this random thing happened, and we don't know mm. why that actually. happens quite a bit in the film to be fair <laughs> yes it does uh this film wait. is full of what i'd like to call surprise mechanics that will be discussed at length as we proceed <laughs> so as he's having a little having a little food this uh this guy looking at him and he's like look at this guy eating my food and he's 
breast. I don't know. He's got he's got all this gold stuff yeah. over him. This weird, weird crowny thing gold. and he's also necklace. And... <laughs> just just jumping on right here. This is another point where something happens without any real explanation of how, why, or what. It's like. Did he just magically wander into the realm of this god? Did the god let him come in? Was it his prayer or faith that enabled him to get there? Was it he the just sword? There? Was it it? Yeah, he's just here. Yeah, I hello god, I, and the god um, seems what surprised. So what yeah. didn't seem like the god did it? Well, well, I would go as far as saying the best faith interpretation of this is that it was a, uh -huh. a complete accident. It, it, yep. He wandered just, in here. This is where he lives. This is where the god is at, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's so funny because sometimes I wonder about recanting these stories to people because I can just see them being like, what do you mean when I say stuff? But I'm just like, this is all the information we have. So, yeah, I, mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could tell yeah. you more, but this is all we get. And, and simple things could have done it. Say if it was the sword trying to find an appropriate host or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like they could have had a close up of the sword where a dark light comes out and opens up the kind of uh, the portal. Or by this dark light seeping out of the oasis, then the oasis appears to gore. And just by that beat, it indicates it's the sword that did it. Someone in chat just said he was called there. It's like, well, but it was within reach of him dying in the desert. So. The place doesn't move toward him, right? It's him. Yeah. So it's, even if the sword is like, come here, go, it, that would still be incredibly convenient that it's within reach of him on this mm -hmm. desert planet. But, you know, unless, point unless, is... it was just, unless it was just calling out to any random fucker who happens to be nearby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like turtle uh, but the point up. is, <laughs> the film itself doesn't give any indication or cue as to what is causing this. And any explanation that anyone gives to try and, you know, explain this, it's headcanon. The film itself doesn't give us the reason. Um, yeah, it's just all really convenient that it happens how it does. Well, yeah, uh, and there's the even beginning. more, because he's like, oh, oh yeah, you know, uh, my god, you must be celebrating because, you know, we, we've all reached the point of we're all about to reach salvation or whatever. And then he's like, yeah. no, that's bullshit. We're <laughs> celebrating because <laughs> if you look right behind you, there's an evil demon man <laughs> who we just killed who has a sword yeah. that can kill me. It's, yeah, it's like, really lucky I love we got... that he mentions that. I love that he mentions that. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a joke. <laughs> like, oh, is this a sketch or something? <laughs> you know, why, what? You're like, no, that's, that's just the reality of the situation, I guess. <laughs> and it's, like, the like... Same vein. <laughs> it's the same vein. It's the same vein as what they did in um, Multiverse of Man. This is like, here is Black Bolt. Yep. He has this power and ability to kill you. <laughs> you <do laughs> like, nice. Well... This is Black Bolt. I wouldn't advise getting killed by him. His scream <laughs> straps <laughs> all of its victims. Um, Here is his sword. It is able to kill me. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the darkness sword. I wouldn't advise picking it up. I could die. Oh my god, Boy, chat, it sure you would be catch bad up. if I got stabbed by that sword. What? Those people say the sword calls to him. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But even if that's true, it's incredible convenience that he's in range, like with, with yeah. without getting fucking killed. And uh, whoops, if only it were like a day earlier, his daughter wouldn't have died. Yeah, and Literally. that explanation of the sword calling to the god says it after you know Gore actually you know gets yeah. it. To me, that was only an explanation given to explain. How he was able to grab it, or, or you know, the sword chosen. It doesn't explain how he got the... there. Doesn't explain why it's there. Isn't it weird that the the sword like ports into him at that point? It didn't do it earlier, but it did it then. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I guess that's how that works. Like, uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's all very sudden and just this is how it works. But yeah, so I guess if I summarize it quickly, so then we can bounce around talking about it. The guy is like, you know. Salvation woo, and he's like, no, just celebrate him because the guy behind you was evil and tried to kill me, uh, or not even evil, just an asshole. He's trying to kill me with this dark, dark weapon that can kill gods. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, and then uh, he like explains that he's he's suffered and he's desperate, and that uh, oh yeah, he said he tried to destroy my empire, and then Gore is like, but your empire is destroyed. Nobody's left to worship you. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. there'll be more. You know, whatever. And, yeah, and he really like, does not give a shit. Yeah, he's about like, well, his well they're all not being there anymore. You know, you're all replaceable, and then he's like, yeah. well, we've suffered, and he's like, suffering is what you do. It's your only purpose. Your only purpose. Uh... He's like a really cartoony. Um... Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> he's it's like comically evil. Yeah. It's such a, 
it's such a weird break in mood we have here. Like, mm-hmm. we see his daughter die, and it's like, oh, man. Because when I start watching, it's like, oh, man, this is, we might have something here. And then the fucking god starts to talk. It's like, oh, n- never mind. Well, yeah, so... so, so I, <laughs> yeah, I think, I'm uh, evil. Never... Also, that weapon over there kills me, by the way. So <laughs> don't touch that. Uh, Please don't touch that one. So, oh. Man, I just don't was... care about innocent people. That's me. <laughs> that was a film that also... I had when we were watching it was, um, oh, we've got, like... Gore's this sad story here, but then as soon as he's in this oasis, it's like, oh no. Yeah, oh, immediately we're in a cartoon show, and it's like, no. Yeah. And what also doesn't work for me here is this god is acting like such a colossal asshole. I'm wondering, why does anyone worship him? You think if he, because you could have like a god that's a jerk, but he puts on displays of, you know, uh, niceness for his followers to get worshippers for it, for whatever reason he wants worshippers or anything like that. But the context of this scene is that it seems like every time he finds potentially one of his, he doesn't give us stuff and he treats him like crap. Okay, what was the cause to get them to worship this god in the first place? If that's by context, the treatment that he always gives to these m- mere mortals so oh, yeah, even that's like, yeah if i, if yeah. I uh, was worshiping this god my immediate like if i <laughs> devoted my life to thinking oh this guy's great you love this guy he's brilliant and i meet him and that's what he starts saying i'd be like oh so this is a test um, yeah well um, it's, or it's pretty none of it's funny real. think of the way that it's presented that the god is he's such a jerk that a devout follower of him like it's kills him like <laughs> Like, he instantly loses um all belief in that guy, and then just yeah, he, kills yeah he's, he's he's such, he's such a cunt that a guy who literally <laughs> just you know allowed his daughter to die in worship of you uh, meets you for thirty seconds is like you're not actually that great to be honest. I don't really <laughs> like you. Yeah, they should have had him address, talk about, say something about the daughter personally. Like, when he said, like, my daughter died, he should have said something very, very disrespectful specifically about the daughter. And that would have helped no, that, a great deal. But I don't yeah, know like, this is something that you can do in, like, one scene of yeah, dialogue I, I, with I the agree. god. Um, I think it needs to be done yeah. through action and through montage if it's going to be the opening. Oh um, you would want, yeah, like, like... a man toils his whole life in a <laughs> thorough society, showing all of it um, every, at every turn. Like, the gods just don't help. And then right at the end, he discovers the truth. Mm-hmm. The gods never cared. Well, you, you could have um, you could have him like his daughter die, and then like a uh, he discovers that um, they could have helped this whole time, and they just didn't. They couldn't be bothered or something. Yeah, because it's all done so quickly. He's completely one hundred percent devout, and then the guy just says the most perfectly evil and and assholy lines within like four opportunities to even do so. It's like he knows uh, that I've got to convince you that I'm the worst piece of shit ever in record time. Oh yeah, like again, it's like. Oh, this seat feels like a test. This feels so like, saying, like know, uh, if, if my, my lifelong ideology was worshiping this guy because he's great, I might have some thoughts about all of these conspicuously evil things that he was saying that fitted within my worldview first. Like that would probably be my, you know, well, you'd you know, you know when, you, when you encounter something that doesn't fit within your worldview, your first like uh, response as a person who exists is to try and accommodate it within your world. You find the most likely explanation for it that is in, that is yeah. congruent with the things you already believe. It's not like, oh, that's not what I expected. Maybe nothing I believe is true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, to the point where he, he could even have considered, like, wait, have I died? Like, is this even... Am I just in the desert right now under heat stroke? Just... Yeah. Am it, I, am it, I it would be symbolically yeah. something that you might you think you're in the desert. You're in the desert, and you come across this paradise oasis in the middle of nowhere, and like, yeah, yeah, like you know, you could have. Uh, if you know what seems like a convincing line in that situation, who are you? Why are you pretending to be this ben- benevolent man yeah. that I worship? But we haven't got time. We've got to get him. Yeah, right. Got to get it moving. And so he says, "You are no god. I renounce you." Know what? you. Renounce. To be fair, if it if he thought he was an imposter and then killed him because he thought he was an imposter and then like upon the death of the god you have like that golden explosion, that could be like oh my he god, realize, I just killed yeah, that he actually killed yeah. the real guy and that it was That's him. probably the best way to fast track it, like as far as I can think of. That really was yeah, that jerk really was the guy. Yeah, what a what a and- bastard. And what I was actually expecting, you know, was that upon the death of the daughter, that 
the uh, you know court, whatever the guy's name was, he was praying for uh, uh, salvation to be saved or anything like that, and then his daughter dies, and that that honestly would have been enough for him to turn aside from the God because the God didn't answer. We see enough parallels like that in the real world, honestly. And then that could have sent him on his own revenge quest to try and find the God and, and, and get answers why he didn't save him when he was praying and being so devout and worshipful and everything. And that sent him on this quest to seek after the sword as a means to try and get some measure of power to take on the God. And he actually went out of his way to find it. Yet this is like just a pathetically low effort set up. It's like, no, we won't do any of that. We'll just, here's the sword. Here's the God. Uh, we won't bother trying to de delve into any level of authentic kind of character arc reaction to this and will make the god cartoonishly evil yeah. to make this set up and it was just pathetically have, low um, effort guy worships god guy's daughter dies sword on floor that kills god god is asshole and in room kill god <laughs> like yeah that's about it i guess you made it it's... slightly longer than that with a bit more dialogue and boy christian bale is have the working scene. Yeah, that's what I mean. The, the component parts to make up the point of the scene are really not far away from just the initial thought of like, what if a guy killed a god because well, he thought like he was an asshole? Point. It's like a dot points yeah. scene. Um, it's it is it is you are expediting your character change so hard. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so thin. He's also. I wanted to mention. I don't know if how many. I tried to uh, point it out here and there, but like uh, obviously we know the special effects in this film getting criticized. But like this guy, this god, so wonky he, as shit. He looks fucking yeah. terrible. Like <laughs> it looks like he's, he's been composited his face onto this like godly yeah. body, quote unquote. And when you see yeah. the wide shot of him standing, it looks really bad. He has like this but... weird position where his hand is like kind of behind his body. It looks like a like a default idol stands or whatever while he's having the uh, gore in his chokehold or something mm. it's really it just, weird and bad it looks so bad and yeah he, i don't know why didn't you just like put a real golden suit on him or something or just make him like a normal dude yeah. <laughs> like or is a normal dude i mean obviously his like physique is incredible but like a normal guy is like um, a, a person could be that his like head movements are bound to his shoulders because of, I guess, yeah. however they've managed to composite him on, so it just, uh, you can't move properly either, it just looks awful. Well, I imagine that this is that they didn't really account for it very well while they were shooting, and that seems to be the persistent issue with, like, Marvel visual effects, is they don't think about how to shoot in accordance with making it work properly, so then some poor visual effects guy has to come in afterward and, like, fix and do way more work to account for them not doing the work on the day. And yeah, um, as we kind of alluded to, you've got this really goofy scene, it's rushed as hell, and then they're like, Christian Bale, you're a father who's lost his daughter to a god that doesn't even give a shit. Act. And then he does, and he blows it out of the fucking water. He, like, he's, mm. he is performing <laughs> so well in this film. Um, it is. Oh, it's a shame him, that... <laughs> You do. It, it, I mean, you feel bad, bad for, for the character and for Christian. And Bale. also, I guess we might be jumping the gun, but I hear that Gore from the comics is really cool. Um, I feel Everyone bad for Gore. Seems fans. to love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, not not, it's like not only that, it was like Maybe, the way yeah. that this movie has decided to treat all of its subject matter is like we're only just getting started. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. So Ooh. like, I, I understand that the original comic run has a scene in it where Gore. Um, removes a character's eyelids with a knife so that uh, they are forced to watch as he kills someone they care about. Um, that character hasn't really been captured here, to be honest. <laughs> you could no. put it that way. He's kind of a goofy weirdo, <laughs> unfortunately. He, um, he this... has a lot of Joker moments. Hey, we'll get there. Okay. Very oh, sorry, I guess so that... far. This Do you want to know how I killed these gods? I think this might be a conversation, since we're talking about Gore right now, um, and this is much more about aesthetics. Um, Gore is like a, like an alien, um, but I guess they decided that they weren't going to make him an alien here, and just have him be, well, I mean, I guess he's an got, alien, but like, he's, a, he's a, a human being, like, like a human being, in terms of the way yeah. that he looks, not an alien. Everyone's and apparently, a human. Well, you know the, how, well, you in know the, the Marvel meme, universe, yeah. Pre, like, what, you'd what, like this meme, meme? the... the the uh, male orc versus female orc, fe male yeah. demon versus female demon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christian Bale is female alien. 
but also he's um, a man. Well, it's just uh, apparently the reason why they didn't make him look like Gore in the comics, which I think the design of Gore in the comics is awesome. I think it's really cool. Um, but apparently Taika Waititi said he didn't want him to be compared to Voldemort. That's really That's annoying. Weird. Uh, as a if statement. you want to show it, I'll just repost the ones that. We yeah, like it's not I Voldemort. Yeah. It's an alien. Like Wait. he's clearly an alien. Um. So, like everything that Taika Waititi seems to have said in regards to this film is just like that was well, weird and the wrong. best one recently was director's cuts are like yeah. not good. Um, I and the directors wonder... need to be reined in. Look, he's just trying to show the Snyder Cut. I always, Snyder I always okay? wonder. I almost wonder if that's just like, yeah, fuck, I'm not making a director's like, because like, of, like we all know, right, that um, this film was originally like four hours, and they cut that much content to make it two, right? Um, so is that just him saying that now, so that at no point will he be forced to make a director's cut? I, hmm. I kind of, I, I almost feel like it's this excuse to just be done with this fucking film, because <laughs> so like, I don't know, the passion doesn't seem to be in it for him. Why couldn't we have an alien? Why is every why are so many things so afraid alien. of having aliens? Ooh, look an like, MMO. I, I better play a human female. Well, it's just I don't know, man. Like one of the cool things about Mass Effect is you've got all of these disparate aliens. Um, and like even Mass Effect, you know, you could push it more that you have more of the blob the alien types because all all the like main important aliens are still like humanoid. But like that's better than I'm like humanoid. Yeah, this it's is... just like yeah. There's um. He, he I don't know. Why Mass can't we have more aliens? aliens? Well, like um. The there was, was an it's, immense it's one of the big problems in Halo. It's like why why can't we have a POV character be an alien? <laughs> like why yeah. why are we so afraid of having aliens as made characters? Racism. That's mm -hmm. why bigotry. Oh, German. Remember in the first Mass Effect, Shut we up. had the um. There there were the Elcor, and the floating jellyfish ones. I forget what they're called. And I don't Hanar, think we see in Hanar. Effect, that's it. Right? Yeah. And and those were well, they were in Mass Effect One. And I think no, they're they both up in two and three. I think. I th I don't think they're in two. I think they're gone. They're not sure at all they are in, two. in two and three. I'm sure there is one. Uh, well, whatever. Go go ahead. <laughs> Continue with it. It's just uh, I I I don't know. Like it's all. All that, because a lot of people I remember seeing said, like, you don't want to cover up the performance with CGI, as though implying that, like, you can't have a performance come through with a CG character, forgetting oh. that in this universe, Thanos exists. Yeah. And I guess someone would be like, yeah, but that's like a human face. It's like, I don't know, man, like, Avatar is like 13 years old. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. you figure it out. Like, you can make it work. Yeah, but no. just the, I, I assume that's why Rags brought it up when we were talking about like this Colin. a little bit earlier. But Davy Jones, he doesn't have a nose. Yeah. Yeah. True. But Bill Nye's performance comes right through. Mm hmm. It's it's pairing a great performance with great effects. Yeah. Um, Which to be fair, this film like, doesn't have. <laughs> no, this, this film doesn't wonder, have that because. Oh, it's a shame wonder, because there's some very the, um... cool aesthetics. I want. I wonder if that's the um. So, because I didn't want it to be compared so, to Voldemort. Thing, it's Jay. such a bizarre reason that I wonder if it's just the public reason and the genuine reason is that he didn't have faith in the effects house. He so didn't have faith in the, in the process the thing, to make it look Jay. good. Thor: Love mm -hmm. and Thunder is one of the most expensive standalone Marvel films. Well, no, I know it has that. Has a budget of two hundred and fifty million dollars. I am aware of that, but um. I still think it's possible that Taika Waititi was aware going into it that Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy the came out uh, in 2014, and Rocket looks yes, really great. Yes, but Marvel Phase Four has looked and really Groot. shit. <laughs> and so it what is, they were like is it's plausible that Taika knew this, like, had, and yet and yet he chose to have intense visual effects yeah, in the say, rest of the that, film. Really, are you saying then <laughs> well, that yeah, okay, whenever fair, he fair did? Enough. Have them you just had to or something because yeah he relies on like well, that, was that, that was a theory that, was, that was a theory that was developing live in my brain and you he know plays what, actually... a CG character called Korg in the whole movie <laughs> he was he was already introduced in Ragnarok <laughs> yeah, no I'm just saying Jay, Korg, that, it's his he choice how to be in this in here yeah yeah and Korg is in this film more than he was in Ragnarok yeah it's like one of the main characters more than overstated fucking like, like, well and Korg looks like oh. shit just while we're on Korg. Korg was. Pro oh, I hated him in this film so much. I just wanted him to shut up. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there now with that too. I'm you, there you... with him. I don't 
I wish he just wasn't around. Piss off, ghost. All right. That, that yeah, was I remember funny. Korg. Let us continue. Piss off, ghost. He'll be introduced yeah, soon, uh, Korg, anyway, so. Um, yeah. yeah, so so he's, he's like, fuck you, I renounce you. And then the god starts strangling Gore. And then the, the sword teleports itself to Gore. And um, it's kind of weird, jank editing-wise. The sword is like whispering to him and he gets hallucinations of lots of different things. The word eternity is said. Uh, some little flag uh -huh. there, it'll be fine. And, um, Interesting. Yeah, and then, and then I think it just like hard cuts to bleh, And it's like, wait, what? And he's, he's stabbed the god with the sword. And so, this god, who's clearly like very ego-driven, doesn't give a fuck about anything but himself, He's been stabbed. He knows that it's the, the sword that'll kill him that he's been stabbed with. And his choice for dialogue is the sword chose you. You are now cursed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? That's like... That, that's, that's like dialogue that wouldn't even come Allow from a me person. To like, <laughs> Allow me to expose it. So with that my everybody dying understands breath. what's happening. Yeah. It's not even close to what that man would say. He'd be like, you motherfucker! How did that even... Wow! That's what <laughs> I was thinking! Yes! But instead, like he's like, the Bastard. sword has chosen you. You are now <laughs> cursed. <laughs> That's the thing as well, it's like, it would be a lot funnier if he said, like, you bastard. <laughs> it would be, and, uh, but they need to get us, they needed those two pieces of information out. The sword chose him, which, to be fair, it was pretty obvious visually, and then oh, yeah. uh, that means you are cursed now, which is relevant. Yeah. And it was just like, okay. But they do bring that up later in the film, unprompted by the information given by this god, so we didn't need this. That's also oh, true. We we have uh, we have some more of this coming up as well. It's, yeah, it's a fairly common yeah. thing in this film. It's like, oh, stuff is overexplained. The audience is not treated like they're smart cookies. Also, no, like we're treated like we're idiots. I like how none of the people around that god are telling the god, that, oh, look out! He's got the <laughs> evil sword in his hand. No, it's done uh, real That's quick. It's like six. Real six quick. of us thingy. It was done in like a split second. We saw it in slow mo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fuck and off. you'd think if the god had any brains, he would be very, very concerned about what the sword does, where where it goes, everything like that. But he doesn't notice anything. The sword just literally uh, appears well, so right next to him. The thing, this gets weird immediately. I would even say his first scene has issues. He says, "That's funny. I don't feel cursed," which which is like, okay, I guess that's like trying to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm like, all right. And he said, "So this is my vow: all gods will die." And it's kind of like, well, hang on, mate. <laughs> like, I get, <laughs> I get that you want to kill this god. At least, you know, it's a bit a bit weird, this scene. But, you know, but like, wait, all gods? And then uh, the response to that from everybody who likes this film would be, well, no, the sword's corrupted him into thinking that's what he wants. And it's like, okay. Oh, that would be cool if that was in the film. Yeah, I don't... I don't know that that's true. <laughs> like, would it be cool if it was in the film, Rags? Or would it just be like, kind of, oh, that's I'm saying in terms of boring. you guys are... I'm saying in terms of you guys are saying that, but for your argument to really hold much weight, it yeah, would be it nice if that was actually in the film for you to mm -hmm. reference instead of you just well, made it up. Well, hopefully the, the problem would have been, been really easy. That they've given us his motivation, and then they changed it, and they've told us, well, no, it's because he's not him now. And it's like, so what the fuck was the point of all that? What was the point of all that? It's yep. the same wonder thing, right? What is the value of the arc of her making the choice to be good at the end if she was corrupted and had no autonomy before that? No yeah. choice has been made. They're a different person in a sense. Um, yeah, they've been doing that a lot in Phase Four, where like the bad guy goes, "Well, we're jumping the gun a bit." <laughs> like <laughs> we get to that later. When someone said, "To be fair, so, he also enslaved gods in the comics," so that doesn't help anything that we're talking about right now. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> we're not talking about the comics. Though. We're talking about the film. But does it, there's so many you layers know, to how much that doesn't help. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I, I have nothing against a uh, you know cursed object that can corrupt someone it can be used to good effect if uh, the writers know or how to ring, handle right? it or the lord of that. the rings exactly yeah, the one ring yeah but I, what you want to do then is consistency and for example the one division one the book gets destroyed and she's still crazed evil mad woman and everything mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so you Chad, know there's no consistency yes what more so than that right um even so if we have a crazy sword that corrupts this guy why have we just bothered with his like character and origin about his daughter? Like, uh, it, I, I get. So, I think like, you what... could work it like the the sword at least uh, calls for someone that has 
maybe even just a slight or similar in, in inclination for its greater purpose. And so this guy now hates this god and he wants to kill just this one god and that could be enough of a, a call to get a connection to the cursed object. And then if what, and the, the way they could have done it, it would have been really easy to make this so much clearer. As soon as he grabs it, have that weird, you know, uh, evil voice speak around and says like, kill all gods, kill all gods, they will all die, we'll make them all die, and something like that. And then is, and then you could have his oh, reaction like, yes, I will do it. I can, I can see it as like a, like a, I don't know, um, Dr. Octopus and his tentacles kind of dealy. I uh, kind of I wish wait, that let me, wasn't cursed at all. I, I wish his motivation this, was enough. Well, no, yeah, I, 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 feel I like would the point's getting lost. If the, it wasn't corruption. The core elements we have here, I'm trying to draw this out as like literal pieces of storytelling. It's like character with goal to kill God for being a shitty God. Sword that has the goal itself to kill all gods. It's quite a sentient thing. It provides power, it corrupts people, blah, blah, blah. We never know why this sword is this way. Uh, and I swear to God, if anyone gives me a comic explanation, you're missing the point. So it's not like that. That's the two elements, and then they combine, and well, Gore's irrelevant. The sword is now taken over. It just wants him to kill all gods, and so it doesn't work in the way that it feels like the the movie wants you to think, which is a corruption of wanting to kill one god is wanting to kill all gods. But it's not really. Those two things aren't really connected at all because the motive to kill that god was very specific. Like, it's almost arbitrary. Like, he could have corrupted him into doing anything. Like, oh, kill every god, uh, everyone that ever worshipped this god, or all of his friends, or all right, gods. It's off. like a roulette wheel of what it'll make you do if you get corrupted. I don't see the connection at all. It's like, I will kill all gods now. It's like, why? And then it's like, well, it's the sword that wants to do it. And it's like, why? We don't know. It's, it just so happens that this man got corrupted and wanting to kill all gods he wanted to kill a single god, and that's really not relevant to his overall goal because he's corrupted. It's such a weird set of, like, information. Yeah. Yeah. You could have you you shown his daughter dying it. and then him finding the sword and him vowing to kill all gods without yeah. that character moment with the cartoonishly I, evil god. Looking at the sword, it's a very kind of specific purpose, you know? Someone, whoever created this thing must have ha really hated a lot of gods. It would have worked much better if this type of sword was just, like, a... Death sword. It's it's a sword that has the it's ability to kill anything. It's like that's oh. what it is. And uh, and uh, Gore oh, was I the one like who that. came to that himself. I think I, it could work. I, I like, think it's like a classic so sword thing. kind of thing. To give you an idea of why I hate stuff like that right now is that the MCU keeps every single film inventing great powers that no one's ever mentioned or heard of before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, and being mindful really of canon, annoying. then you'd be thinking like, yeah, why didn't anyone grab the sword before you, to try and fight Thanos? If you create a fantasy universe and there's this, you know, region that no one ventures to because it's just an acidic death place, and if you go deep into its caverns, past all of its like booby traps and death traps that no one could ever survive, there is a sword that can kill anything down there that you can retrieve. I'm fine with stuff like that. It's when they're like, oh, you don't know what this sword is? It kills gods. And it, which is oh funny, by the God. way, because what does that even mean in the Marvel universe when yeah, nothing? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Thanos nearly blew Thor's head off with the Power Stone. So like, and he also choked Loki to death. If you can so. choke a god to death, then a sword that can kill a god isn't that impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. He and just also, needs like, to be. Other gods can kill other gods, as we yep. know already. Yeah. yeah, either he needs to. Essentially, the issue is that you need to be able to connect the character with his motivation yep. to a utility that allows him to carry out his whims. So you can't go too far and, of course, as we said, invent something that was a superpower all along. You, you gotta straddle that line of, yeah, this is a thing we haven't heard of, but it's not so titanically world-shattering that it would have come up before. It feels to me the natural evolution of this the sword stuff is that he's like... This worked for me. I've gotten revenge in a sense, or justice for the entirety of this god's disciples. Perhaps I can help others with their gods. And then you want to engage in like a, an adventure where he's like able to what test and, and do different things with different gods. But no, he's, he's made it clear in this scene. He's going to kill all gods. Full stop. Yeah, and of course the, the in question mark in the air is then, okay, what about the good ones that actually are helping people? And things. Yeah. What, what if um? What if he we came never across? Really get to... <laughs> what if what he if, came uh, across the? No, 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 no. What if he okay. came across the? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to. 
Uh, what if he came? He he arrives at the oasis during the fight, right? The god is fighting the demon, and like the demon is about to lose, but the demon convinces him to help him because he's like, "Oh no, this god is actually a real big dick, and he's an asshole, and here's what he does, and he doesn't actually help you." And so he sort of he gets Christian Bale to kill the god and help him out in this fight, and the demon's gonna die, but he gives Christian Bale like his powers or something like that, and that's. That's something we get more dialogue between the, the demon and trying to influence him and explain things out of. I think that would have been something they could have done. Maybe he hates um, the god so much he prays to like their equivalent of the devil or something to get a power to kill the god, but it corrupts him and the devil wants just to kill all gods. I. So. Well, we say in this circumstance, we say like demon devil almost in an. Like, uh. Maybe we don't have it be a demon or a devil. It's not a force of evil because the, the God that he ends up killing, he really is a really awful dick. So there it's, it, I'm it happens to be all gods. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah. The, the film is, needs to try a lot. That's harder what I'm saying. That, the, Cause these, it's a huge jump. Yeah. If we, if we, cause we're trying to do this as quickly as possible, right? Like that's the fixes we need. And so I would probably opt for the, and like, he prays to a god I, to get revenge on his god, but the, the monkey's poor element is that it's now corrupted him into the point where it's going to force him to kill all the gods. We don't need much history on the character the, at that point either. Not terribly. If you want to have a system where maybe the end scene, the, the first end scene ends up with him killing the, the god who's a prick, and then we, we exit that scene, and we don't learn about his motivations until later we see him attacking other gods or carrying out his plan and then he explains you know how many how many tribes were like mine how many people were like mine who were out there across all those planets that i was shown how many of them need to be you know saved from their gods or something like that and that's where we get some motivation which is, which would be something certainly better than what we get which is nothing yeah. he just wants to I kill all gods it's not hard to find a good motivation for the character to justify wanting to wipe out all gods, even the good ones. If someone just asked him why is he doing it, I he think says, it would. He could, of, yeah, he, I, could, he could perceive no, he could gods say, as being the um, as all being like well, they're so powerful they could have the power to help me, and none of them did. Yeah, like that. I mean, it, exactly. Or, or if, you he, know, power corrupts. He's like even, gods aren't really gods; they're all assholes with powers. And you know what happens to people with powers? They usually become assholes. They're not; they can't be trusted with this power. So I'm going to wipe them all out. That's like Mordo. I, I think we're going to have to work really hard to make that have, work. No one should have this much power perspective could work for him. Mm -hmm. It would yeah. be better, um, but once he meets like all the like Thor and stuff, then, well, like, well, shit. I can really believe it as a, yeah, like, it would be an interesting character at that point, right? You would have... Remember, um, Wags, he doesn't I mean, need to totally correct. believe that he as perspective. Needs, uh, he needs a yeah oh. he, a perspective that comes no. uh, up against the the heroes that can be challenged, which would an be, individual can be corrupted. An individual should not have this much power over like. And then of course the the rebuttal is an individual with the capacity for good um should be afforded the chance to like do good and be good um and help people. Yeah, you don't benefit the world when you take away a do gooder even with great power. Yeah, and, and, and you could even make the point that it's like, by taking away this power, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it just changes people's perspective. Someone will always be more powerful than somebody else. And just, it's not power specifically, it's the people. Clarification, uh, that's yeah, what we're that trying would to be build. The, the, yeah, the villain's yeah, perspective exactly. would be proven wrong in this in this thing. Like We're not advocating for yeah. it, is the point. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, well, he, it, could, it could almost be inherently hypocritical because to prevent people from having this much power, he needs to gain this much power. Exactly. Oh, dude, that's to literally the arc that they've put Mordo on and they forgot about it in Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mordo is like, too many sorcerers with too much power. I shall use all my power as a sorcerer to stop them. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hated that shit. But I mean, that film has been eclipsed like, in terms of what's bad about the MCU by its follow up. When you. When you put someone like you can have hypocritical characters like this, <laughs> they're allowed. Yeah, but you need to be aware as a writer that what you're writing is a character with an yeah, you, inherently what, what contradictory worldview. What world you view. don't want to do, let, let's put it this way: what you don't want to do is have a character have the perspective that all gods are evil, and then hatch a plan which relies on the gods being benevolent and wanting to help people in order to kill those gods. 
that that's would be an really oddly specific good. hypothetical for it, it, no one would ever write that fringy that's you ridiculous on its face i'm just saying like it would be really stupid if your villain who explicitly hates all gods because they're malevolent uses their benevolence against them that would be that weird would be i don't really, know why you brought it up <laughs> that would be that really was, inconsistent and odd it would be kind of fundamentally contradictory but i mean alas this is just a hypothetical true uh which means, yeah, that that god's dead. Gore has made his position clear. Um, Can I just jump in with an odd observation, though? No. Me. I will. I'll do it anyway. Oh, um, wow, so when shit. he stabs the god in the neck, his blood is like golden, yeah. you know, you something. And I was like, okay, this is just a specific kind of thing maybe for this god. But then later on in the film, we see it's supposed to be a fairly consistent thing. If someone is godlike person, they now have golden, yellowy, shiny blood, but not with the Asgardians. And I'm wondering, okay, what causes a god uh, to have that versus... You're not going to get your answer I, I, I would I know, imagine. there's no answer. There's no consistency. It's just, I just we're going to do arbitrary things I would extend reasons. your question out into what makes a god a god. It's just the same aspect yeah. of across the universe, yeah. there is these powerful beings, and the only thing that really ties them together is that they're powerful. Well, that they're worshipped by other people. And apart from that, because... Oh, I guess, yeah. Um... I think otherwise that, they're just powerful that would also be viable <laughs> for um gore that he judges them based on who they've decided like they've put themselves in a position where they can be worshipped as a god so that you know that's enough yeah, yeah be... you're just a strong guy yeah. on a planet uh, that yeah. you're not people aren't relying on you he he could like his ideology is against the idea of anyone who allows themselves to be worshipped yeah the film never actually you will have no understanding of what the word God actually means in this world by the end of the film. Um, I mean, it's yeah. a direct contradiction of um, the first two, as far as I gather, where God was simply a word that was attributed to Thor by the Vikings. That's just how, that's just what they thought he was. But, you know, he's always just, you know, he's just a powerful guy. Um, this well, movie is like, no, there are actual gods. What are they? We don't know. Well, it, it's not only this movie. There are now competing pantheons because yeah. um, yeah. we've got Egyptian gods and Greek gods and well, Norse gods. Ragnarok, probably oh, be, right. It was Ragnarok first, though. Um, that's where it was introduced. That's where Thor starts calling himself a god. Oh, yeah, because he call, well, because he calls himself the god of thunder and that. But and then also yeah. even like uh, Odin calls him the god of hammers. Well, you know, are you the god of the god hammers? of thunder? Not god of hammers. Yeah, it's like that. Um, that could be. That could all be like that. yeah, because um, he yeah, could be referring yeah, to what people can. see in you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. They're, they're not interested in doing any world building, though, like, and trying to figure out how to account <laughs> for all of these competing pantheons. They are heavily interested in world building, just not in the way they should be. Uh, no, <laughs> their, their investment in world building is how do we, I don't know, have characters show up in different stories so people can be, like, excited for that rather than, well, why do, how do we make sense of this world? Um, um, I think the. What's what's the line that uh, we should have had the villain ever say? Any any creature that demands to be worshipped is not deserving of it. That's a, that's a fun perspective for Gore to have. It's well, a what, what, that I, have. I guess that what it, it ties into. I guess if you want to do the whole power, you know, the nature of power and things like mm. that, it's like if you want to be worshipped or like seeking power versus having power bestowed on you, stuff like that. He could, I don't know, like, he, he could see the power to, of, to like, wield this blade has been bestowed on me. It's, like, my duty, my responsibility or something. Yeah, I don't know. You just Anything more than just, <laughs> hey, you, my god turned out to be a jerk, so I'm going to kill all of them. All <laughs> like, of them. <laughs> how yeah, long that's... did it take you to figure out that your god was a jerk? How long did it take you to seconds? give out to him yeah. to work to hating his guts? That must have been a. Well, that's what I mean. He, that must have been a long experience of questioning your beliefs. How he rushed to that, but it's like, yeah, now he's moved on even way further to the point where it's like, I would have gone <laughs> a grand adventure, killing all of the gods. He's like, whoa, okay, you are promoting yourself hardcore in terms of. <laughs> all right. Skills. You know that I reference this slide of dialogue a lot, but I think this is the funniest place it's ever fit in. The oh. wrong man's. When the guy is trying to pretend to be a white supremacist to fit in with a prison gang, and he says, It was actually a black man who shot me, which is why I decided to become a racist. <laughs> so, <laughs> I decided to kill gods because my god is a dick. 
It's it was all... actually a god who betrayed me, which is why I decided to kill all gods. Which is why I became um, an atheist. Very clever. Uh, so I, I'm gonna. I've just come across this. So um, a producer, um, in responsible. Yeah. So a guy called Richie Palmer, a production and development head, all Marvel Studios Phase Four projects, said that the main theme of Phase Four is guilt and consequences, and that they Phase Four is all film. a reaction. So this what? this is the quote. Um, when asked about it, hundred percent, because Phase Four is all reaction, and I don't mean on our part as filmmakers. I mean the characters. It's a reaction to the trauma of Infinity War and Endgame. We're still feeling uh, those effects of these movies years later. Are we? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and also this uh, something we spoke to uh, Elizabeth Olsen about every step of the way. That for her, Wanda's full journey is leading to a moment of accountability, and we think she's gotten there. Oh my, oh god. my god! No, <laughs> what you fools! That's like everyone's biggest criticism. There's no accountability oh. for her. They literally have a character tell her she doesn't need to stay for the police. <laughs> like, <laughs> jeez. Okay. Wow. Um. That, by the way, I just like to say, yeah, that is the intro scene. That is the first few minutes yeah. of the film done. Yeah. You did it. We're doing really great. Uh. <laughs> Um, you get the Marvel Studios logo. They do a little bit of electric guitar because the the idea that we're, we're ramming in Guns and Roses throughout this film, whether you like it or not. And Which, just... yeah, I just want to say it's weird that um, you know how in Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four there was basically no eighties quality to it. I get in this the sense that they just like they bought the rights to the song and they really need to use well, it. It mall. doesn't seem to really try and there you go. Huh? Mall. There was oh, a mall. Yeah. They didn't have a mall. Yeah, they did. Yeah, there was a mall. Um, <laughs> but it it's just sort of we got this song, and that's sort of it in terms of its overall vibe that it's trying to put out. It doesn't. I don't know what it's supposed to mesh with, or it's just sort of a song. Well, so the, so this is the thing uh, about that mall. It, 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 part of it is a reference to how Stranger Things season three was like. How do we do eighties again? It's like I don't know uh, this stuff, this stuff, and then they just based the whole story around a mall, and it's like ah, eighties. It's like what? Okay. <laughs> um, but the funny thing is, you know, executing the involvement of music well. It's just like hmm, what's a modern example that I would probably use to to counter example fucking Thor? And it's like it's gonna be Stranger Things season four. Um, Particularly famously virally, more than one. Are you talking scene. about Kate Bush? Funnily enough, no. I was talking about Metallica, but you could talk about that as well because they do it twice. Um, they do it well. I liked Kate Bush before it was cool. Uh, Actually, so, it was always cool. She's very talented. It's just uh, the reminder that execution is everything, and that just because you play "Welcome to the Jungle," it's like, oh, I like that song. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you do. Now you like this scene, don't yeah. you? And it's like. No, uh, no, not really. No, not really. <laughs> but if I close my eyes, I can enjoy the music. So, there's yeah. That. Um, and you might be like, "Well, then, what are you supposed to do?" And it's like, "Well, you just take a, a decent amount of time to bind a very particular song to a scene, a character's journey, the way it's edited, what events are happening. Maybe look at the lyrics, see if you can bind that to more than just being like, "I like the song. Shut up." Uh, Suicide Squad, famous example. Oh, yeah, you get that throughout this film. Um, it's annoying, and uh, it's clearly relying on shit like that to get through. Um, so we get, like, a, a reminder of Thor's history from Korg. He gives us a little um, commentary on, like, like catching us up, I guess, if, you, if this is your first and Thor film. Right, and right here already, the movie started to piss me off. <laughs> Just well, right out of the gate. The first thing they show us is that his mum would take him into wars when he was literally a baby. Like, <laughs> so stupid. And, and it's, it's just like, like you... yeah, because this this movie's a bunch of fun. It's like, um... it's it's a, it's, a, it's a joke. Like, yeah, she's going to battle with a baby hanging in front of her, and you just think, okay, so this movie is just gonna be not take itself seriously ever. The thing is, like. Base. That could probably work if it were just on its own, and we were getting that kind of thing, where it's a bullshit society, it's all absurd, lol. But like, this is... I can't help but like think about how like, oh man, a lot of his people were like annihilated because of reckless decisions in terms of how, how all this works. That's his mum, the one that got stabbed in the back. 
and that's mm. all it took to kill her. She's just walking into a full-on war with a baby strapped to her in such a way that it acts as armor. I don't know, it's just like, that's just weird, but okay. It's fun. It's fun, everyone. Stop not having fun. Um, uh, well, to me, like, if you were to look at the first Thor movie, and they would try to discuss, oh, Thor's childhood and everything like that, and someone proposed that scene, that'd be just like, are you retarded? Yeah, they that, that would just... <laughs> You know, they show him training even from a young age, but with wooden swords more than likely, or something like that. Yeah. Even though he's an Asgardian. Yeah, it's just it's just like okay. Um, and leading then they... your child into battle is an interesting first bookend to see, this movie. Right, when you say child, people might picture like a five-year-old or something. It's like no, we're talking like possibly a newborn. Like <laughs> it's yeah. just one of the most bizarre <laughs> things. Like, what are you doing? Because what's interesting is that. Maybe and maybe it'll happen again. A parent leading their their child into battle, um, or many children into battle. Who knows what could happen in this film? Mm -hmm. But the idea that what what was that you were saying about the the theme of Phase Four trauma and consequences? Interesting to hear that. Traumatic. Considering, yeah. yeah. Well, there no 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 kids in a, a horrific battle situation. They'll not get trauma from that. What? Why would you even imply such a thing? Why would that? That's not going to happen. Yeah, no, that would be it's fun. Crazy. We're having fun. We're killing. It's fun. Yeah, he says kill, um, kill. he fought killing a bunch, is fun, though, to be fair. and he fell in love a bunch until he met Jane, where he fell super in love. Everyone remembers her, and they show like loads of clips from Thor one and two. It's just it's kind of funny to me. I don't know because like it's just remember her. The idea that Thor one and two are actually important canonically to these films anymore. Like, come on. You you shell over you them all care. the time, Taika. Like yeah. you don't give a shit. Um. Yeah, and then you it's get to the awkward you part. Well, like, um, it's about to shit on like the characters from those films, right? Well, yeah, but he shows the clips and they're solemnly presented, quote unquote, like the two of them getting along with each other, holding hands and looking at each other longingly, and it's like Thor was in love, you know? Oh, and then Thor started to lose a bunch of stuff. His mum, his dad. Uh, this guy, this guy, I don't even know the name of this one, while showing the okay. Warriors 3 getting killed. What, uh, a, yeah. what a way to just crap on those characters. As, so, uh... the big reason why I found that immediately frustrating is that was completely unnecessary. He could have just said he lost a lot of people that he cared about, right? Like, you, yeah. you, you yeah. flash... You he don't, lost his friends! You don't need to say, who even is this guy? Like, uh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I bet that was probably, uh... Pretty traumatic for Thor to lose those people that he's been friends with for a long, long time. That, that, that was I guess it really wasn't, right? He never reacted to it, I don't think. We never even saw That's what he true, thought. That's true, yeah. <laughs> like... It just sort of came and went. Yep. Um, so, it, uh, yeah, just just, just mean-spirited. Uh, didn't didn't sit well with me. It never did in Ragnarok. Whenever I talked yeah, about Ragnarok, I was it... always annoyed that they just got wiped out in a scene. A lot of this movie feels mean-spirited, It, but with this unfeeling... Kind of like what's the thing he said? I'll ruin your mythos in a minute, and that, that he just has this mm. a, a lack of reverence to anything. And I well, guess, I guess he's, it's, um, imagine you're like one of the actors <laughs> who was one of those guys. It's like, oh, that guy. Oh but yeah, man, oh, that man I'm a joke cool. in this universe now. I was like huh. a participant in those two movies. Like I was a character. <laughs> I was I was in them. Um. I guess Zachary Levi's all right. He's uh, he's um, he's Shazam now. But the other two guys, oh well. Um, and it, it closed out with him saying, "And he watched his brother die, and then he died again, yeah, and then he died and again." He died and, again. Yeah. and it's like, yeah, isn't that funny? Isn't that yeah. hilarious? Go fuck yourself, <laughs> just, honestly. It's, it, especially Fucking after hell. that other one with the, the Warriors three, you just you're just like. Oh, this is what we're doing? We're gonna keep doing yeah. that? Is that the joke? Isn't that thing that's horrible that happened funny, though? It's like, I don't know, Taiki, you're pushing it. I don't know how many people are gonna be following this. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. When 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 and Loki had the life fucking character. choked out of him and Thor was crying, character. it's all just funny. Yeah, really yeah. Funny. Got, well, I guess because he's back now, so who cares? That's the thing, right? Of, like, um... I would be willing to accept that this narration was here if um when thor's relation to the um uh, to, to loki was all treated very seriously right you know um if thor's grief was actually something that was explored and it was just like yeah korg is telling this story and he doesn't take it very seriously i think you're right um that the film doesn't take fucking anything seriously ever is just well yeah so like it 
it doesn't feel um because it's so in keeping with the rest of the tone of the film it feels like it's simply Taika Waititi explaining how he feels it doesn't help that he's voicing the character yeah um, <laughs> I was going to say that. This really feels like Taika's regard for, you know, what's going on It is. On I'm sure, yeah, dude, I'm sure Taika would say to us. It's very with the actual film. Taika would probably say, like, doesn't Loki have a TV show? Like, you guys really upset that I'm making fun of someone who's not even dead? Uh -huh. that, that, that Loki This guy, Loki is dead, though. Well, so that's like... the thing. I think he would just be like, you guys need to calm down. It's, it's all kind of nonsense anyway. Oh, great. Yeah, you think your <laughs> work is nonsense? It's so that's weird because, like, shame. how do you intend to generate anything meaningful if that's how you feel about all of the meaningful stuff? I don't get it. Lola got paid. Bit of a weird perspective. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. they explain all that, and then he just says, like, Thor got really fat, and he teamed up with the Guardians, and he tried to bury his sorrows behind all that, that fleshy bod, and they continued to go on adventures and saving people, but Thor just wasn't quite there yet he's still there's something missing and they show like scenes of him crying while talking to um star lord and then he like desperately tries to lose the weight and uh realizes that he's probably never gonna feel whole again and that something's missing and that he's just gonna wait for the i think they say something like he's gonna wait until someone says thor we need you for battle and it's it's yeah. just like uh, which you might think is um, metaphorical or oh yeah we'll symbolic, get but <laughs> um, I just want to say like so what they just covered sounds like a way better film. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, he keeps going um, on adventures, saving yeah. people's lives with the Guardians, but he's losing his like investment in doing so, and he feels empty. Yep, that sounds like a movie. Yeah, mm. sounds like a what film. Been really really to have that a story I from know, a he's, film. He's, uh... He's bouncing back after they fat thought him in Endgame. I'd love to see that, you know? But we skipped all of that. Because <laughs> we've got a different yep. movie to show you. It's like, um... And I wouldn't be as mad about it if we skipped it for something really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I would have made much more sense to have that before this movie. Just from a perspective kind of deal. Just having that development going before that. And then all of a sudden we do this. But better. No. Um, okay. so yeah, we'll keep it that way. I guess it's like present. What is happening? And it's like, well, there's a planet they're on that's in complete distress. They're under a, a big old war, and Star Lord is asking Thor to finally join the fight because he just won't. Um, and the Thor's like, fine. Uh, yeah. Which and already, so the context here is is a problem. <laughs> yeah, context. People have been fighting. People have been dying, and he's been sitting there just meditating. Wow, yeah. this is desperate battle already waging. It's like, okay. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just it's it's like, oh, that doesn't sound like Thor at all. Hmm. <laughs> That's not good. Um, and then he's like, all right, let's go. We have lives to save, sort of thing. And it's like, uh huh. Okay. So you couldn't even commit to him not wanting to do it. Okay. That's no, fine. Yeah, it's it's going to be great. Uh, and of course, yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll go over this as the scenes go on. But Star Lord is like the only person who talks to Thor. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's only for about uh, the, yeah. the next I don't know eight minutes of film that the Guardians wow. don't exist within it. So if you're gonna have point. one star, if you're gonna have one Guardian talk to Thor, who would it be? It'd be Rocket. It'd be Rocket. Rocket. It'd be if you're Rocket, gonna do Star Lord, you're gonna need to get us the information of how they managed to get to be on better terms, right? Because they 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 were starting yeah. up this thing of like, oh, they're a bit, they compete with each other a little bit, they clash. Uh, but this is more so just Star Lord awkwardly explaining to Thor how he's being stupid and weird. Yep. There was a um a quote I remember from James Gunn where he's like, "Ah, the Guardians are in safe hands with like Taika Waititi." Um, I find this quote kind of baffling considering how little they're in the film. Like the quote implies that there's going <laughs> to be that's... something happening <laughs> with those characters. Maybe that's good. Characters. They're not in the film. Yeah, it is good. They're not bad. in the film. They were in space. Must be bad by well, safe. I guess. I guess I'm just <laughs> saying from Taika Waititi that barely in the film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did he mean by this? Well, that's the, that's the funny thing. Uh, Taika would have been someone maybe at some point that I would have said is really good at tone balancing. Right now, I'm like I would I wouldn't want to recommend mm, him because of this film. Know. But yeah. James Gunn yeah. is another person that I would recommend for being really good at balancing those. And I'm sure Guardians Three is going to be. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Don't say it. I um, hope it's you know, good. Special first, right? Fuck me up. That can be. That should be good, right? Come on. 
That should be good. Come on. Please. Uh, what, what even is it? Don't like, underestimate Marvel's capacity to screw destroy. up. Destroy. At this point. Yeah, destroy their own franchises. Because that's the one that a lot of people I know are like, that's the last one. If they fuck that up, then I'm out. <laughs> that's oh, that's yeah. the last yeah. one. Paula still has hope for... From what I understand, James Gunn gets freedom when he makes... Guardians films. I like the first two a lot, so... Did Taika you know. have freedom when he made Thor, Love, and Thunder? Uh, unfortunately, probably. <laughs> like, that's Seems like he suit. probably did. He probably had total carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. I bet the time limit might have been the only thing they reeled him in on, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But I could, I could totally believe that um, they just sort of let him do whatever. You enter the fight, he very comically rides Stormbreaker like it's a broomstick. Hilarious. I feel that like I'm just going to describe funny. the jokes in this film, and then you guys can talk about anything you want. Because I don't know what to say once I've described them, you know? Just like, well... Well, I didn't laugh once at this film. I don't even think I smiled at any of this. It just, I don't know, it just, none of it worked for me. Just none of it worked for me. And I thought yeah. Ragnarok was hilarious, but none of this worked yeah. for me. Um, it's almost got a chuckle so out of me at what, yeah, and, and I, I wonder if they're the same, because there was almost a chuckle from me at one point. I told you, sorry, that was there was one kind of joke I liked. And Chad, you've already told me that it wasn't that one. Um, the oh. other moment I liked that was a joke, but I didn't like it because it was funny. I liked it because I actually thought Thor's character in it was being like Thor. <laughs> Rare. You get that. What? So. <laughs> um, so we get the exposition. Basically, this planet has... Uh, it was fine, but then their gods were killed. Oh. And because the gods died, they had no more protection, and so there's a war now over the grand and important temple, and they're desperate for people to help them. And so, you know, without regarding Thor more, because we will in a second, you just immediately think like, oh, the gore killed these gods, even though these gods were protecting their people. Yeah, kind of awkward, huh? Hmm. Feels like, feels like, and this is kind of what I'm getting at, like, gore, he gets split seconds before you just start being like, I, hang on. Hang on. This seems like we need to account for this, does it not? It's uh, like it, yeah. Yeah, we'll just keep stacking that up, basically. But yeah, Thor sort of wanders in, and he's just like, he's seeing all these people shooting at each other, and, and, and he's just like, ah, oh, you know. And then um, I think Rocket says, I thought you said this was going to be a relaxing holiday. And then um, Thor's like, look at the horizon. Like, as if to say, it's like, it's so beautiful. Um... And and, and, and and like it's just it's just so strange that Thor isn't more so invested in being like, oh no, people are dying, you know? No, oh, he's just he needs to be funny now. All funny. All the time, it's all funny. Um very funny. Yeah, and, and, and uh, the the sort of king or whoever he is arrives and he's like, Thank you know, thank goodness you finally joined our fight and Thor says, You know what they say, better late than never. Like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I don't like that never. If you were like there at the beginning to help him, I, that would be I just don't idea. remember this being Thor's character at all. When was this? Who he is? What's happened? Well, no, Th Thor is just a complete goofster. His 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 uh his character is goofster and gaffster. That's I think that's it. Yeah. Um, part of what's frustrating is that they've established now that that's that's the thing that he would do, but they've also haven't done it for dramatic purposes. They they're like, isn't it funny that people are like dying and this is all happening, and he just doesn't seem to give much of a fuck. It's um, it's it's a big problem with this. There is a particular joke that we will get to that is very emblematic of this problem. But like, they can't help themselves. If they see an opportunity for a joke, they will tell it, regardless of whether it makes sense for the character, yeah, yeah. whether it makes sense for the world, regardless of whether it's funny. Oh well, yes, there is no triage here of like jokes, you know, <laughs> like where you you put, you know, you workshop them. It's like the first thought was no, the only one. Mean? You're like, yeah. Like, um, you know, like, if you're developing a joke, a joke no. can develop, you know? Like, you can, <laughs> no. you can build it up over time, and no, you have an is idea when, for a joke you, you want to tell, character but it looks stupid. A car a joke yes. is when, like, you're like, um, lol, Thor did made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is a joke in the sense that there is a structure there, it's just not isn't a very... It, I'm looking through my isn't folders it funny how thing. Thor has a trait that we would consider to be undesirable? Like, and isn't that funny? said trait, that is the joke. Yay. That's the only joke that they ever have for, but they don't do that as much for other characters where the joke yeah, is weird, they're huh? incompetent. It's so strange. It's just the one, really. Awkward, huh? Yeah. Oh. Um, um, 
And yeah, by the way, anyway. Thor isn't really motivated until the guy tells him, we used to exist in like a, a peaceful world, and then our gods were killed, and now we're unprotected. And, and Thor's like, yeah, oh, which... right then. And it's like, but why didn't, isn't that why you would have come here? Yeah, like, you would know this, surely. Did why, nobody why tell Thor anything yeah. about this fight? He just knew that a war was happening, but nobody ever, asked, like, told him why. I just thought, like, yeah, it's so was bizarre. was the first person who thought to ask him for help, and he just he waited until then. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what could be a more, uh, you know, um, believable, satisfying thing set up to explain why Thor wouldn't have joined in a battle at the very beginning. I'm thinking maybe he felt the Guardians would be able to handle it himself, but then you'd need to try and give him a reluctance that from all the things that have happened in the past, he would now be reluctant to actually go into battle. The issue with that, though, to do give that justice, that's an entire arc in and of itself for him to overcome yeah, yeah, to actually get his first for, for battle. Exactly. Um, and that would be to be one of the few ways you could try and justify this actual beginning setup in such a way that Thor doesn't come off looking like an absolute douche that doesn't care about people's lives. And he could have been like, Star-Lord coming, so Thor, we really need your help. And he's like, I thought you said you could handle it. It's like, well, obviously we can't. We need you. Pick up the axe. He looks at the axe reluctantly and is a bit frustrated that he has to do it again. And that, But then again, that's setting up an entire arc of the film that obviously they had no care or consideration to even look at. Story about apathy, maybe. You're like, yeah. as he's going like they said would happen where he starts to especially if you factor in the whole concept of death he's like is this all that life is like you, you endless battle endless yeah actually yeah. and that would be Suffering. interesting he's actually getting tired because they said he's getting tired of battle or something like that in this oh, but dude, they don't show could, it really if you tie in like he's become apathetic about life itself because of the fact that they all eventually die anyway and that this is a big long cycle where nothing changes. He has killed like a bazillion enemies and he's still getting dragged into fight. Combine that with Thor, who like hates the fact that gods become apathetic to their own followers. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we've got something. We've got something here. There's like, something there. There's like, something. <laughs> we got it. Woo! This is when you workshop your ideas, so you start with your original idea, but realize that there's room for development and refinement and changes. You workshop your ideas, you don't just come up with an idea and go, you know what, that's good enough. I got it sorted. Well, okay. You see, love is kind of like, you know, it's it's like, oh, well, I guess we're jumping the gun yeah, again. <laughs> Uh, really, yeah. Love is the only tangible force in the universe that can you be detected through black holes it's or whatever true. the fuck happens yeah, in Interstellar. That, that is true. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be relevant pretty soon, too. I bet everyone's <laughs> wondering how the fuck that could be, but it will be. Uh, so anyway, he's like... Oh yeah, it will. I forgot about that. The odds may be against us, but this ends here and now. And then he takes off his thing and, and he oh, lights up his is um like uh star lord is hyping this up he likes this oh he's yeah he's into it of, um this will contradict with how it seems like the team feels about well, Thor later on does but... it not make you uncomfortable <laughs> knowing that the all the guardians at this point are in cover using their weaponry screaming trying to get through this war when thor can end this war in like 10 minutes yeah i was about yeah. to uh, mention this it feels wow, really I... really uncomfortable uh... and that it's never brought up too because they all just Whoa. watch, and he just kills them all in like two minutes. Yeah, and it's like, oh wow, they're, they're, they're even like kind of hype about for. it. Like, what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, here he goes, yeah, which would make more fine. sense if that's how it always went. Uh, but yeah, right now, they should be like, like "You motherfucker, what took you so long?" Um, so yeah, he just he lights himself up with the lightning. We play Welcome to the Jungle, and he just kills everything. But then they do the part that if you follow me on Twitter, you will yeah. have known about. Uh, they told him that that temple has been attacked, it has taken from them, and that it's so important that that's what, like, the two sides fight over, um, to control the gods protected their coverage of it, and, you know, I don't know more about it, I don't even know if it's particularly virtuous that any particular side have it, you know, I don't know, but at the same time, the only information we have is that these creatures are attacking these guys, these guys lived here, their gods protected their, their home, which was the temple, very important, and it looks incredible, right? Like, this whole place looks it's relatively awesome. normal alien land, but this thing looks amazing. And in the middle of the fight, Thor, in order to defeat the enemies that are on top of this temple shooting at them, he crashes through the entire thing in order to reach them. Yep. It's completely unnecessary. It goes completely mm -hmm. against what he's been informed about with this. 
But most importantly, it goes against uh, exactly how he's characterized. His first movie, if everyone can even think back to that fateful... No. Oh, that, that was a simpler time. It was a, it was a while ago. Um, the fucking first big dramatic scene between him and his father and Loki is about how he's set to become the like ruler of Asgard, but that he hasn't learned very important elements of being a leader. He's strong, and he can fight wars and stuff, but he's like bloodthirsty as well as being reckless, and he's gonna get more people killed than he'll save with his, like, warmongering. And the Odin exiles him, because this is mm -hmm. shit that he's gotta learn. And then when we pick him back up in Avengers after he's learned all that shit from his movie, he tells Coulson he's annoyed that, um, he's even seen as, like, a great you know, person or a great god. Same for his brother when they've caused nothing but fucking carnage for Earth. Um, and he compares them to a particular animal that just rampages through not caring about how they get the things they want done, done. And it, like, perfectly describes him in this scene. The thing is, Tiger's not doing it. In, yeah, he's Tyga, completely and totally regressed to his... He has regressed. Pre, yeah, yeah. Tiger's yeah. not doing like, this to make bad. a point about his regression, he's doing this because it's funny. Isn't it funny that, despite the fact that he won the war and saved the day, no. he accidentally destroyed their big important temple? As though you're in a, a China store and, and you know, you, you help them out with this thing, but you accidentally hit a vase with your ass and it falls on the ground and you go, oops. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, the inciting incident of, the, of Thor's first story in the MCU was him brashly going into battle yeah. without any regard for the broader consequences of his conduct because he's prideful. Uh, a vain, uh, what was it? You are a vain, a greedy, cruel Ooh, boy. and selfish boy, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's cruel. Like, he specifically you are an old man cruel. and a fool. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Look, all right. Thor, Thor one's not like great, okay. Like it, but it's got cool moments in it. I remember That's the thing. it has good things in it. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Which can't be said really for this. <laughs> no, and, and kind and of. Again, you just, know, yeah. just... hey, 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 a lot of members of the cast are hot. <laughs> That's true. Uh, true. But we only take the clothes off one of them, so yeah. The you know, doing things carefully and being a, a good leader and a king to a people, like, they've tried to keep that going, and even in Ragnarok, I would give it to them that they're still, yeah, it's still there, I and we're still getting something. Right. Um, but this just feels like, I want to make a fun, goofy movie where Thor's doing all kinds of war fighting, beating stuff up in a badass way to badass music, and then he was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if, like, by the end of the fight, the whole point is to protect this, like, temple thing, but by defending it, he destroys it, and then someone else goes, oh, man, that would be... Can we, before, no. ever? Can nah, we I do don't it? Think so. Can we do it so that when and he's he delivering shows... his like "I succeeded" speech, it's falling apart behind him? That would be funny. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny? And he, he doesn't even acknowledge thing, it. And the other thing yeah. happens. He does eventually oh, but... acknowledge it. So does Flanders, what do you think about the house love films? That's yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, what shoot. was his acknowledgement of it? I can't remember. So a little bit later. Um, he talks to the King Yakan again, and he says, hey, so about the temple, and then the, the King guy just goes, please don't bring it up. It makes me sad when you bring it up. It's just a joke. <laughs> oh, man. So, so like, another joke. Yeah. Yes, it's oh, another joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. And then he keeps, he keeps <clears throat> talking about it. He just wants to talk about it, even though this guy's clearly upset. It's so odd. Like, because if you he watch that scene... He comes off like such a clownish asshole in it. It's yeah. Just, oh, just he's oblivious to the needs and yeah. feelings of others. Which wasn't who he was. <laughs> nope, not not all who he was. It's so odd, because he is now just completely gone. Like, you could have argued in Ragnarok that he's progressed to a different area, or at least maybe gone sideways to a different area. But, like, the guy in Avengers, Thor 1, 2, and Age of Ultron, is not the same. Just watch any one scene from Thor, Love and Thunder versus any one scene of him in those. He's, like, reserved, careful, interested, and well, invested in the world. Speaking of Flanders, you know, like, I think, I think an aspect of him that's been Flanderized is that, um, he, mm. there were things about him that were stilted in terms of his, oh, you've heard that phrase, right, Ranks? If I, I, I don't know, I, I'm, maybe Flanderized I have. Is, um, it's, it's that Ned Flanders, it. uh, as a character was, um, he was like a, a lot more character. interesting than yeah. he is now. He was an actual character, but like, oh, like, over the course okay. of the show's history, he got watered down to, I'm like the super duper friendly neighbor guy, um, without like realizing- Like just wanted to kill his mom and he was evil? Yeah, like, if- 
Um, uh, well, so so the the point I'm making is I think that um Thor there were aspects like that he didn't quite understand certain customs or um adages idioms um like it, there were there were aspects of him that were a little bit fish out of water. Yeah, not because he was an idiot, but because he's from a different. He just planet. didn't understand. But now mm. it's like, oh, yeah. so like, yeah, he doesn't understand things. That's who Thor is. Like, he he um, never understands like things about interactions or like um the how people feel. Like he's become aloof, not aloof. Um, yeah, it really needs very, to be uh, stated. It, it's it's super central to the whole movie, but this film. Thor is an Thor is an idiot. He's a loser. He's, yeah, he's a stupid, moron. Sorry, he's the that's, butt that's of I mean. every like, joke. Yeah. He is. If you like Thor, you will hate this movie. You will despise this movie. This movie seems to have just the the desire more to the, make fun like of Thor, Thor. If you like more of Thor, this movie hates you. <laughs> yeah, kind <laughs> of. It feels very mean spirited in many ways, as we've discussed already. But particularly, particularly to Thor. Who's just a loser? Because that's what Thor is. He's a dumb idiot loser. Yeah, and, but and, yeah. To be ass. fair, like in that moment, he doesn't understand what he's done yet. The implication is that probably fucking Korg had to tell him, destroyed their temple, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, and I wonder what he said about that. Yeah, like, or wouldn't it? Whoopsie. I mean, and and if we want to do our story about him becoming apathetic, what if he's just like, who gives a shit about this temple? Like, who cares? Well, do like, yeah, that's his punish a Thor. I'm gonna you're alive, alive, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'm, could I'm say, here to save you know, lives, not save temples or something. Temples can be rebuilt. Well, everything, and lives, yeah, or, yeah, that sort of thing. Everything gets destroyed you're, at some point. Well, What's yeah, the difference yeah, exactly. between now and then? Yeah, exactly. You could even, yeah, even because... try to give the old, like, Asgard is not a place, it's a people thing, but for yeah, them, exactly. And, and, then, and then they, they don't respond yeah, like, to it very we, well. They're like, we don't to like, yeah, We tried well, to defend that temple, though. That yeah, you can argue that they were people in that temple. That's actually what really, really gets me about this, is that Thor they has no idea who people. he might have killed by doing that, because this film can't mm -hmm. address that. This ain't Civil War, we're not doing that. We're, nobody was in there, okay, it was totally fine, and he knew that. Probably. You know, nobody innocent. Yeah, probably. There's a fucking war going on. Who knows how many, like, good guy soldiers there may Who be over there. these bad guys are taking hostages, you know? Exactly. That they've got it's... in the temple of leverage. And, and yeah, you know, Taika would be like, no, no, this is fun. We're having fun. I'm not having fun. <laughs> yeah, you're looking to me. I'm not having fun. No. I'm worried about the civilians. I don't <sighs> thought to be a civilian killer. And that's our because we've had Gore introduced. That is Thor introduced. We this um, is our yeah. um, opening action scene to make for, sure for the Blore. first of like five. Blore. I was gonna say we needed too. trailer footage. Well, to All be right. fair, there is another character called Thor. There is, yeah. <laughs> there is another character called. I mean, we're basically Blake. dealing with two different Thors, so no, why not? Well, no, Mighty Thor. There's Thor and Mighty Jay. Thor. Jay. Yes, mm -hmm. Mighty Thor, Jay. Yep. You got oh, wait, yourself you guys... in trouble on Twitter again. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it. I'm shit Thor. There's a seed purpose built for this. <laughs> there is a seed purpose built. It's almost like at that point the film ends and it's the director just like standing on the screen. It's like, all right, guys, come on, just <laughs> stop it. Well, it reminds just... me of uh, the trailer for is it She Hulk, where one of the cards as it goes by it says, "You will like her." Oh yeah. That's Or else. Oh, or there's, else. There's gotta be so is there a Simpsons reference that you. I can latch on to that has to do with like indoctrinating somebody into like a perspective, just telling them <laughs> Oh wait, there was um. You'll get nothing and like it. What? Oh wait, what? Fuck, that was American Dad, right? Or was that that was Family Guy? But it had the Star Trek the next. Damn it, my references are getting confused. What the fuck is happening for yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm Star Trek I'm, Family Guy, South Park is all getting tangled. I'm grasping for a. I'm grasping for some sort of reference. That uh, it's fine that, if you don't that, have one. That's fine. For not me. everything it's, it's has okay. a Simpsons reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it does. I, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Pretty the Simpsons, sure. Even I think the Simpsons uh... is relevant to everything ever. <laughs> Literally every once, single thing. everywhere. Yeah, uh, but sorry, we'll, we'll we'll press on. Well, it's time to introduce our next main character, I suppose, because we've got Thor and Gordon. So it's time for for Mighty Thor being Jane Foster, because everyone knows that's that's her role in this Dr. film. Doctor Jane the trailer. Foster. And therefore, yeah. it's like, Foster. where Foster. has she been <laughs> since we last saw her? And it's like, well, she's got cancer. That is literally the first <laughs> yeah. thing you see is that she's having a scan. And it's like, oh, okay. Mm. And um, 
we all talk sure forever about the different approaches they could have had with her and how they could have handled this story. I think all of us could agree that if you're going to be taking this story, you're going to be doing this, then you're going to have to spend a decent amount of time justifying a lot. We won't be doing that. Nope. We no. don't have the time. We just don't have the time to do that. No. Yeah, it's, it's almost like they skipped a movie in between, mm -hmm. you know, well, feels, feels no. kind of like... Well, they skipped a movie so in between I... the movie. <laughs> they yeah. It might be Many worthwhile just... to... Uh lay this out now because this is kind of a this is what i was thinking before the movie came out a concern that i had which i'm sure would be echoed by many of you was we haven't seen jane in a long time um and if she's going to be taking on such an active role in the story again you need to make sure that enough time is afforded to her and the story that's going on with her that um it's all fleshed out and works while also making sure that you have enough time to develop Thor and have his story be really fleshed out. That's like a challenge in terms of just how do you use your time efficiently and effectively to make sure that both of these characters are set up well and have, uh, you know, like a, a good story to tell for them. Um, as we progress, <laughs> I think it will become <laughs> very clear that this film um, does not use its time effectively. No. And both it Thor and wanna, Jane yeah. stuff before it. Exactly, and they don't want to address the actual seriousness and implications of what's actually happening properly. Like, hey, she has cancer. You might be want to address it with a little bit more well, concerning well, consideration. I I don't know. I guess we'll jump. So the joke, I presume it's meant to be a joke where it's like you have cancer, and then I think what Darcy says, like stage four, or like like oh, how bad. Oh, well, okay, if you want me to do, I'll, I'll wanna... run through the dialogue if you want. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we see her in the machine, then she comes out of it, and I was going to say, before we even have the Darcy conversation, there is some hyper cringe for, and, and I, I only know how this works, because this is how it always works. First time we see a character, like, every single line of dialogue they have is going to be super important for telling us exactly what this kind of person is. Like, that, that's usually what you spend your time on. Um, obviously, Gore and Thor both had their scenes, they're both horrible in terms of really understanding exactly what the fuck's going on. Like, how do they do with her? Well, she's, she's having a chemo, oh. she looks over... And she sees the guy is reading her book. He's like, mm -hmm. so, oh, and uh, that that was a teenage young guy, wasn't it? Like, oh, he was pretty young. I mean, he from like memory, that. yeah. Out yeah. of just thinking, what's the likelihood of a young guy reading a book on what was astrophysics wormholes? Probably or a student, right? I'm a, I'll, I'm yeah, I'll allow it. Men are dying. I'll, I'll, yeah, it's all right. But my issues with this go different directions. It's like. <laughs> We got a, you know, he's just reading and it's all chill and you, the camera pans up and it shows her, recognize that he's reading her book and she like smirks. She's like, hey, hey, I wrote that. <laughs> and it's just like, what, who, are you, who are you, Zap Brannigan? Like, why, why is this happening? It's such all a, the tact of a wet bag of gravel. It's so weird. And the obvious instant suggestion, because I, I was on open bar and this was said like immediately. It's like, why wouldn't you have it so that he recognizes her and goes, wait, yeah. you Jane Foster? <laughs> and then she's like, uh, hi, uh, yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, I love your book. But no, you have her go, excuse me, I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. And I I'm trying to remember her character from the first four movies because this felt out that's of all character. Of to me. That's, every, that's all of us. Not, she doesn't come across as like very egotistical at all. I don't know. Um, no, in the other movies, she was a bit more. This, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah, so... she needs to start a conversation about how she wrote that book. Whereas, wouldn't it, is... it make sense that Jane isn't that concerned? I guess unless you want to have a thing of, like, she's concerned about her legacy, maybe, because she's thinking about death, like, what, what mark and impact has she left on the world? But yeah, I would, I, I would be ready to accept that this, that this is, like, I would, be, I would be ready to accept that this is a conversation that she, she struck up because it's like, hey, fuck it, I'm probably going to be dead in a few months. Let's, let's have a conversation with this random I, person. Hey, there are well, ways to okay, I, I to think it, hold up. However, I, that's not where we go with her. I think it is totally normal that if you read a if you write a book and you happen to be sitting next to someone who happens to be reading it that you'd engage with that person. I don't think you need too much yeah. of a reason for them to do that at all. Well, the issue could, uh, is how she goes about it, and that they chose which is, to do this. This is what instead yeah. of the obvious other alt. And so it's like, so what are you telling me? Um, what you're telling me is that Jane is quite concerned at the moment with like recognition. Seems, um, seems that way, yeah. And this is the thing, I'm not even trying to be like bad faith or anything. I'm just like, what are you telling me with that happening? It's like, it must be that, right? That she is like she's looking for maybe 
recognition of her work as well. Mm -hmm. Because she hasn't got long, theoretically. Um, So, yeah, um, you have that happen, and then he's like, oh, I'm having trouble with the, I think he says the Rosenbridge something. Einstein Rosenbridge. Yeah. Yeah, and so she's like, "Oh, I, I, I can explain it." And she just like takes the book from him. And instead of uh, pulling up the Curse of <laughs> yeah. Dark video on Wormhole, she decides to destroy his book. He rips oh, a page but... out of his book, folds the paper, and then says, "Have you seen Interstellar? They made this make a lot of like that film. <laughs> it, it's worse than the, the quote is: Have you seen Interstellar? That movie explains everything really well." <laughs> Which is, this is how I knew Which the is, film hated me personally. Yeah, that's how we know that this this movie is a work of fiction. Um, and then she says, uh, "Event Horizon." You know, all these you got to see these movies because she's just yeah, she's referencing when you fold the paper and put the pen through. Which they've done it so many so, times and so many things well, now that it's like yeah, you gotta you gotta and, you gotta lampshade so, the well, fact uh, that you're copying other people's stuff. Yeah, so, and like, also, hey, can we just? I mean, if. So he's struggling with this, which is apparently explained in the book. Her explanation is to fold over a piece of paper and stick a pen through it. And he's like, oh, thank you. Now I understand. Which is bullshit. It, it's, play- yeah, no. it's played off as a joke, but how socially oblivious would you have to be to take someone's book and then rip out a page from it? Like... <laughs> It, it felt so out of character for her. Maybe, uh, maybe that page was really shit and she was embarrassed uh, and this was her excuse it, to get rid of it. Like, the the context was... of the first movie was Thor was the fish out of water who was a bit socially oblivious and she was noticing all the odd things he was doing and now she's in this position doing really odd things that a normal person just wouldn't do. It's like, oh, okay, she's I'm just... a different character. When he when he he really like he tries coffee and he really likes the coffee and he goes marvelous another and smashes the mug on the floor. Oh, so funny! Yeah. It's great. Well, that, that's kind of the point I was making in the flanderizing. The, the interpretation is Thor's an idiot, whereas what was actually happening was this is a sign of respect. I I don't know. This is part of my culture. Yeah. And so now they're also actually making Jane look like an idiot in this scene as well. It's like, oh, funny, right? I guess it's funny that she's sort of frantically explaining what an Einstein Rosenbridge is with a piece of paper because apparently you need a 3D model even though you could just like draw it on like a page. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you, you couldn't possibly draw a folded piece you of paper. Just pull up. I, I like that Kurzgesagt's video, the distinctly two dimensional video where they talk about it. And they have <laughs> well, you know what else is fucking like, three? This is two dimensional for me is the film. The no, film. my yeah. God. You could right, just yeah, have her explain um, it to him using her words because she wrote an entire book on the subject. Yeah, wrote a book on it. We're almost scrambling because yeah. there's so many dimensions how fucking dumb this is. And especially yeah. from not just the person who wrote this, but also for the character. He's quite. Spo- She's supposed to be intelligent. The idea that she's like, oh, oh that part of that. my book is difficult to understand because I didn't explain it easily, like I will with you now. Like, what? <laughs> Why isn't that in your book? Yeah, <laughs> your book should have been a leaflet. You sound like a fool. Not even, not even a pamphlet, a leaflet. Yeah. Like, yeah, but you see, you need is a 3D a model to do this. Like, no, you of don't. Of course leaflets are smaller than pamphlets. Now, I've, 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 I've might... always just used the word interchangeably. No, they're different. Someone like a pamphlet, it. you sort of open up, but a leaflet's like a one little thing. But a, a pamphlet, oh, I figured you can a, open. I figured a pamphlet was like a the the overarching umbrella term, and like a leaflet is simply a type of a pamphlet. I think they're often pretty much used interchangeably because they are so they similar, are. and they're used for similar purposes. But I do think that there is a there is a difference between a leaflet and a pamphlet, technically, okay. in terms yeah, of a, might... a pamphlet kind of folds open. And a leaflet's just like the thing that someone would hang on your door or put on your car windshield. And fuck people who do that. Because <laughs> then it rains. And then all the, the shit from that leaflet sticks to the window, she, uh, window, to, to the window underneath don't your... Don't do that. Oh. Don't do that. Go away. I don't care. I'm not coming to your fucking Baptist church. I'm, go away. Leave me alone. Stop so, fucking with my shit. I, I guess uh, some that might be worth noting, by the way, in this whole conversation about the ripping out the book and everything, Pamphlets? it might seem pedantic, but like these are kind of the things you need to think about when you're like writing a story. Yep. Yeah. It's um. Well, the every it's just character that, um, does characterizes them. Yes, there is no... and you should it's... think that with every line of dialogue that you write or every action that they take is that it will yeah. tell... They chose to do this rather than anything else. Anything else. For yes. some reason. Time, so time is limited, and so you could only have so much dialogue and stuff. 
and this is what they chose it's, to go with. It's just um, consider that something that seems really small can say a lot about a character's priorities or perspective. Mm -hmm. It's his property and her book, and she just tears a page out of it without giving a fuck about it. Like, what? What are you trying to tell me? Well, that that's that's kind of that's a good way to frame it. What are you trying to tell me? You chose to write this. What are you? What am I meant to I mean, pull like, from this? I think that if I was, I don't know, reading the autobiography of fucking whoever, and 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 I see them, and then they tear a page out to make like origami, I I guess I would be like, wow, that just happened. But I'd also be like, why did you? Why? Why did you, why do, did that? you do that? Like, <laughs> I haven't read that page yet. You know, it's, like, it's such what the a fuck? fucking weird thing. And then, like, it's she's really in... hard to read your page when it's someone a crane. that Chad has pointed out. It could be a rented college book. It's like, yeah. Oh god. It's like, <laughs> oh, can you give ouch. me like twenty bucks? Like, I got to pay the, the yeah, because it's twenty bucks a page. Those things are so expensive. Oh no, just I guess they'd replace. You'd the have whole to replace book, the whole book. Right? Yeah. yeah. And she doesn't. Um... Well, the the joke I'm making is that the college rental books are very expensive. Like a million dollars per book. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. He doesn't offer, offer an autograph either. It's, no. It's, it's well, so I odd, because uh, well, that's the more normal thing about, people do. Well, because she says, like, because he's well, like, there's no oh, tag you just, like, here. damaged your own book, and it's like, ah, but see, like, you've got the Rosenbridge. It's like, yeah, but now every time if anybody asks me, I have to explain the full story <laughs> about how I met you, and I was confused about Einstein Rosenbridges, and then you tore the book out and then put like a pen through the page. It just feels like you the thing he should say at that point is, so why wasn't this in your book? <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, a funny joke! What? And then, but I actually think Taika would, well, because she has that little throwaway line where she was like, yeah, you need a 3D model, and that's what he must think? That you Even can't though present that theory you that's just you with a pen in a book? You can't possibly present something well, 3D or 2D you can representation. Like describe it well enough that somebody gets you well, know yeah. like in a novel when there's no you imagery know, and it's just know, like, described in a way that d displays an image because of good prose like you're yeah. a scientist writing a book yeah that you know is going to be read by people who aren't experts in the field like i'm pretty sure stephen hawking like wrote the books with the understanding that that not everybody who's going to be reading them has like the full background yeah um um that ends, and then a conversation with Darcy yeah. starts. I'm gonna just read out the major yeah. points of it yeah. all at once, and then we'll go through it because, like, um, you can tell when reading back this dialogue, it's so it has a very specific purpose. It's not about these two as characters. Nobody gives a fuck. They so got yeah. How's the chemo? Still not told anyone about this yet. Oh, it's not that bad. It's stage four. That's bad. You're trying to get back to the lab, aren't you? I know you think you have to do your lab work, or the civilization, the whole civilization will be let down. You have to use your energy to fight this. You don't have to be alone. You should play the Space Viking card at this point. No, mm -hmm. I'll figure this out myself. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's it's quick, but they just get everything out that they wanted to just tell you mm -hmm. as a writer. They, they want to yes, tell you. This scene is terminal. finished now. We may progress to next scene. She's terminal, and she's not spending her time fighting the cancer. She's instead trying to help civilization with her work because she is such a virtuous person. And simultaneously, she now believes she can fucking cure cancer, and that she's refusing to contact Thor as a way of like helping her. And like, um, it's barely longer than what I just said as like yeah. notes for the scene for the dialogue because they just don't give a fuck. They're making these people say exactly what they need to say for you to have this information and move on. It's not like... It sounds very sterile as well how they deliver it. It's like, well, um, there's what, a bear, and there's a bear, so, and bear. I guess, it's like, oh. what was, what was the di- because it was the, um, it's not that bad, and then Darcy says it's stage four. Out of how many stages? Day? Four. Oh, yeah, like... That we know uh, of. And then she says that we know oh. of. That one was real bizarre to me. That's I, very I don't strange, know. yeah. I guess she's just trying like, to tell when I heard joke, that right? one, like, tee -hee. I, I guess I was just, that one kind of perplexed me a little bit. I'm like, I, man, okay, like, oof. You know? It's, I, hmm. I, I just don't really believe like, you wouldn't, I, know. I just don't believe you wouldn't like, call Thor. Like, if you have that kind of connection. We'll start, you, so what way... Like, if, you, that, if, we, right? if, if we're try, uh, trying to t uh, tell about her, that she wants to help all these people, don't you want to get healthy as fast as possible so you can help more and longer? Well, something that is worth addressing, and I guess we are going further ahead a little bit, it seems like the point of this scene is Jane doesn't want to leverage uh, her connection with Thor to save herself. If she's going to live, she wants to do it, like, you know, through, I guess, scientific 
earth based means not and that leveraging. is quite a uh, quite a thing to convince me that somebody wouldn't do that well so i i mean regardless right if you establish that that seems to be her priority mm -hmm. it would really undercut that to have her then mm -hmm. use the viking card like five minutes later immediately yeah, um, yeah that would be awkward yeah. to say don't know why you said it because that doesn't happen right yeah. now. also that no yeah. that's, that's well, just, it's, uh, pretty, just another uh, insane it's not five minutes is it it's it might be less than that maybe in this <laughs> hypothetical we could be looking at literally 10 seconds from what it said uh that would no. That would be insane. Uh, I don't also, know what just, she would say. That what well, one of the things impressions I had in the that just the the fact that she has cancer. I was just wondering, with all the technological advancements the Marvel mm. Cinematic Universe, this universe is supposed yep. to have, they have advancements in technology that makes people enhanced. Uh, there's ways to people become, you know, superhumans on multiple different levels. Of stuff I was writing. Would cancer actually be cured at this point in that universe? It might be. Well, Especially you also you... have to realize that... I'm happy that... to accept that it hasn't been. I don't know if I am. Um, so we I'm... Wakanda. If we think about what tech we've got to make use of, it was actually mentioned in chat already, you've got the refined extremist technology from Iron Man 3, then you've got the regeneration cradle from Age of Ultron, you've got the freezing capabilities that Wakanda have, which basically just put you in stasis, mm -hmm. And then you've got Wakanda in general, which probably have cured cancer. They can claim they have probably. them, but those fuckers, I don't trust them. <laughs> they're, they're, hoarding, <laughs> they're hoarding everything. They're assholes. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's From weird. nanotech to super soldier serums, yep. to, th there's so many techs. Well, I think you guys powers. are forgetting one very important aspect, which is also, you have, to, you have to remember that in this kind of crazy future space place, they have ways to give you more advanced kinds of cancer than ever before. Ooh, so it really all right, yeah. This yeah. Is a new cancer. Yeah. yeah, they have super cancer in this world as well. So. I'm sorry, it's Wakandan there cancer. It's kind of curable. Oh, yeah. They give the worst <laughs> cancer. We're just cancer. to balance it out with their cure for normal hey, no, cancer. No, no. From the snap, the energy release created a new type of, uh, you know, um, oh, no. cancer cell called, called Infinity Cancer. The old <laughs> cancer was cured, but the that new cancer is... The whole is universe. If, if I could but... remind everybody, they have little little bracelets that can make it so that if you're shot in the spine, you'll be fine. Yeah. That's just The Wakandan FBI <laughs> kills anyone who discovers the cure for cancer. <laughs> It's, I just, it's hard to believe because of everything being so out of whack, but apparently she hasn't even contacted anybody except Eric Selvig and her local hospital, presumably, I don't know. <sighs> but yeah, it is hard to believe, but it's just like, this is the cut, that's, that should be on like the lower rung of world building problems. Uh, uh, no, the higher rung, but it is on the lower rung. Well, I guess that one random student now knows she has cancer. Mm. And so, well... True. Even even if we were to say, okay, they haven't cured cancer, I was thinking, would the Asgards have that technology to cure it? And, and it shouldn't be that difficult. But it seems like, no, they don't even have that ability. And you could try and justify it. Well, they're Asgardians, they're immune to well, cancer, so they never had the research to try and well, do it. But they, they're they very advanced, though. I wonder if the implication of something much later on in the film is that she would have had a possibility of surviving had she not made a certain choice and stayed mm -hmm. in uh in a place that might be a, a sort of newish Asgard. Um, in which case that has more implications on what kind of crazy technology Asgard is hoarding in um newer Asgard that they're what not sharing about? with the world. To, to me that doesn't make sense because the choice she does she uh, she makes was for the p first reason was to get rid of the cancer and they only discover through the course of the film when Thor says it that actually it's not doing that you don't it's actually not curing your cancer it's doing the opposite hey, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll <get there. laughs> slow it down yeah, yeah. I won't have any we do have to it was mentioned that no she hasn't told Eric she said no she did say no to having told anyone else but Eric is on a phone call saying I'm sorry there's nothing we can Talking do about it yeah, yeah. exactly so she must have the told him has very little effect I think he says yeah um, and so yeah, we have that. That ends, and then she's she does she like paces back and forth in her room, sits down, and then looks over and she sees her little books on I guess Norse mythology, opens one up, looks at the page, and it's Mjolnir, and then it starts scanning around random words, and it says provides like great strength and health, great, great health. 
It's like, like okay. <laughs> it's parody levels again. It's like, wait, you, the first book you grab, the first page you open, the first couple of words you read, and it's specifically about magic book. how Mjolnir can restore you, which we magic will... Magic book. Magic book was put magic. Put a giant flag in what I just said. Mjolnir will restore you. We'll, we'll just... That's, mm -hmm. that's the theory. Um, yeah, and so, fuck it. We're going to New Asgard. And it's funny because, it's like... Oh god, we're at 20 minutes into the film, and it, it simultaneously feels like we're garbled and rushing, but we're yeah. also like, the time is ticking away. But, but could we also jump on some of the leaps of logic that Jane would have had to have reached to reach that decision? This isn't, Asgard has great technology, they might be able to cure my cancer. This is, hey, Mjolnir, maybe I could pick it up even though there's been no indication that I'd be... Oh, it's destroyed. Well, yeah, at first it's destroyed. <laughs> maybe I'll be able to repair it or something. Uh, and then once it's fixed, maybe I'll just be able to use it. Those are multiple massive yeah. leaps and assumptions that she's making for the... It's like, and then maybe that will fix my cancer issues. Like, that's your, that's your first thought? It's like, what about just Asgard technology or, or, or anything? <laughs> hmm. well, um, they show Valkyries and Old Spice ads. Yeah, I guess. I don't really care. Um, she finds being she, king I boring. About that. I thought, by the way, that well, I guess we'll keep going, keep going. I'll, oh I'll shit! Up later. Um, and this is going to be a topic for sure. We're showing a montage of things she's doing. She uh, uh -huh, has the uh -huh. grand opening of a new store called oh. Infinity Cones. With <laughs> this Thanos is hilarious. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. This is the first. This is this in one universe. That's like akin to the Holocaust ice cream or something. I like how everyone just goes to the Holocaust. Yeah, like, of course, that's the one you go to. Such an accurate, yeah, because yeah, it's just such prefer, an, a natural, man. accurate comparison. I prefer like the nine eleven Waffle House, but like it's you know, <laughs> no. it's pretty similar. Just, just yeah, in case it needs to well, be it, in yeah, yeah, go ahead, Frankie. In twenty eighteen, Thanos slaughtered half of the Asgardians, half of them, and they never came back because yeah, the snap didn't come didn't back. bring them back. Uh, and even if they had, but anyway, about four or five years later, or like five, six years later in the timeline, they create a ice cream store themed around the man responsible for slaughtering half of their people. Yeah, just, yeah, just like, to be clear, this would, this would be uh, equivalent to like the Holocaust Waffle House in uh like france in like uh, 1947 well, it's, 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 specifically like the... more specifically they would have hitler as their you know sales avatar actually on top of yeah because when i was talking to us for someone i was like they chose thanos's gauntlet and not tony's thanos yeah i was gauntlet, about to say that as tony's. well it's yeah. insane like why why is... like what are you doing there is a few obviously this is really this is really dumb and this was, was a part of me that, that you thought was... was so funny. Like you oh, thought yeah. it was such a great pun, and you it's couldn't like a help stupid themselves. meta jokes. Like, oh, oh people know about the Infinity Gauntlet. We're gonna it's we're gonna put that in there funny. because people like that. I didn't say it was funny. I'm just trying to say it's like we're just gonna but, do but this I was angry because people. Metal. <laughs> we're just gonna what? But I was angry, metal. Yeah, me too. When I saw it, I was angry too. But it's just like, we're just going to put this in here as a quote-unquote funny joke without realizing what we're going for and being tone-deaf as there fuck. Are, well, there are some counters to this. Um, okay. Let's get the main one out of the way. The best argument, I think, which is that... Um, I know a lot of you are going to be unaware of this, so I'll just do it as quick as I can. There was an incident in 1997... Uh, 77, sorry. Uh, there's a guy who bumped his head on a wall uh, in a particular movie. Oh, that's I need true. you guys to understand this so that... You can set the baseline. Uh, things can be silly. Okay, that's the argument. Uh, oh, true. great! That's your best uh, one. True. Fuck. Yeah. So, uh, all right, that's great. Die, oh, that's die. Out of the, way. <laughs> <Die>. <laughs> uh, the next argument, I guess, would say is: uh, Isn't this supposed to be like parodying how corporations will very tone deafly use events to try and make money without realizing how insensitive it is? Yeah, See, here's the, the thing, Mahler. Happened. Remember when Burger King? I released their line of fucking like like just just last month they released their roe v wade sandwich <laughs> like no it's, it's this isn't something they do yeah I was like, companies have their limits this is not something companies would be stupid enough to do they might in the boys yeah. universe which could be funny because that's like kind of the point is it's an exaggerated version of something that's pretty fucking exaggerated in our real life but Part of my problem with this is that it's organized and set forth by Valkyrie personally. She's not some soulless corporation. Yeah. She's a person yeah. who well, fought Thanos herself. 
You mentioned that second argument there, and what I thought this film was going to do with Valkyrie and the... Because she's in the suit, and she's doing the old spice ad, and she's got infinity cones, and it looks like New Asgard is becoming this really big tourist attraction, yeah. and it's getting super commercialized. I thought what the film was going to do was that was that's a bad thing. I thought it was going to say that this is bad. Valkyrie's lost her way. This isn't how Asgard should be treated. There should be some reverence to it. There's been a terrible tragedy that you're kind of capitalizing on now. I thought that I thought that is the route that the film would be taking. Nope. I was wrong. No, it's it is just not... a throwaway joke. They were probably yes, sitting in yeah, a room of, and they're like, Infinity Cones. And they're like, <laughs> what? I'm like yeah. what if it was Thanos' but holding an ice cream cone? Yeah, it's yeah. And yeah. And it's, they it's built not, this thing, too. It, it's a pun. Puns. It's a pun. It's not like, a good that's pun. It. And you, it's not a good one. Um, and you didn't think about what it would mean in this universe to these characters. It, it feels like the kind of pun that if we were like, hey, let's come up with like a pun based on the events of uh, the MCU. It feels like maybe one of the first two or three we would shit out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this was a huge. Um, we like, certainly wouldn't oh, put it wow. here considering. <sighs> The, the Asgardians have a particularly personal Grim reason to not with... want to, mm -hmm. like, specifically Thanos personally being on the ships after the tragedy of Ragnarok, going around killing people. It's doubly bad for the Asgardians to do it. It's bad for everyone to do it. It's doubly bad for the Asgardians to do it in this way. Yeah, for anybody yeah, who's confused they, by that, they, uh, the they didn't just get snapped, they got snapped again. Uh, yeah. Which sucks. So... Half of their people they were are slaughtered by yeah, well, that people didn't Also, come also, we don't know how many people Hela killed um, in Asgard before they got to escape. And then they, you know, they're, they're smaller numbers there. Oh, and yeah, then they the get whole army got wiped out by, by her, didn't they? There are, exactly. well, it, Hela, it's something... Like, yeah, Hela got wiped out a lot of people that I was understanding in the context, just yeah. because of the amount of people that were on that ship afterwards versus the population of Asgard. It almost is like... Over ninety percent of their people were wiped out by Hela. If if that's all that's left of their entire population, something that uh that you can think about uh, uh with regard to that is how do Asgardians feel about going from this insane opulent golden city in in the sky to living in a small port town like in Norway? I wonder how like the Asgardians feel about their society, like. Yeah, sure. Asgard is a people, but like our people have been annihilated. We yeah. we we've yeah. been we used like, to make steel. Damn it! Well, it's just you know we used to be we. I don't know. Like we're we just used sort of to now be worshipped as gods. We were so impressive. Someone in chat has already recommended a better pun. Infinity scones is better. They're right. Sorry. Continue. I. I. It's a better <laughs> pun. Yeah. Infinity Scones is is a better pun, but nevertheless, is this is a joke pun, yeah. that is not worth it. Yeah, no, the, no, exactly. what I'm not, I'm not say highlighting that, like, you oh, they should have done this instead. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, no, 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 not they should have done this instead. It's like, no, they did the bare minimum. They did the like, bare minimum, yeah. With their, their, their joke is incredibly shit, but it's not even a good version of the shit joke that it would be if it was, if they put effort into it. Oh, oh, not only that, they had to go out of their way to make it offensive in context. You could have something maybe associated with the Infinity Stones, but putting it on Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet, a very ob yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh, the makes them... If, if it was Tony's Gauntlet, we would now be having, like, a conversation about... Yeah, we would, yeah. Okay. It could this be could a be, celebration. Maybe this could be, yeah, it, a celebration of Tony's a victory bit. of destroying the armies of Thanos. Yeah, we're going to remember yeah. the stones for the good that they did in the end, not the evil that they did it. In, but even before, then, you know, that'd something. be the thing of like, are we really going to commercialize? Yeah, it feels There's tacky. Still the yeah, for the, exactly. the salvation There's of, still of trillions of beings, as opposed to, we're going to use the gauntlet that was nearly used to blow th uh, like Thor's head off after all of our people had been killed. Well, half of them anyway, and I guess the other half were just let allowed to escape. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a really... It's not a it's not a particularly strong piece of comedy, and it seriously hurts the uh, the world building. Yeah, yeah. the fact that Guardians would be okay with this, this and Valkyrie signs off on it and releases it, it's old. Just that wouldn't happen. Nope. 
Well, yeah, that's and, why I thought the whole point would be that she well, learns Valkyrie. to be a better leader because she she shouldn't be commercializing this kind of stuff. And the film just says, no, nah, it's just a joke, lol. Valkyrie yeah. is really weird in this movie anyway, though. Yeah. Like, They're all really weird in this movie. Sorry, Valkyrie point. fans, also Thor fans, also just everyone, fans of everything, really. <laughs> fans of everything. Really in every fans face. have done okay. The biggest disappointment that they have is that the Guardians just, you know, they escaped. Well, yeah, they barely had any lines, so... Yeah, we're kind of, especially in retrospect, because we were still, you know, fresh in the movie at that point, I'm super glad they were barely in this movie. I was just, every time I saw, like, the guy who got married to that blue chick... I was like, oh, I remember you from the Guardians movies. You're, I, I kind of like didn't. you. I hope... <laughs> oh, you didn't? That's fair no. enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> like, I somewhat of a minor character. A joke. Like, I don't... I don't think... I can't, I, I can't remember his name, but I remember the character. And Wait. when... Yeah? I, I, have, we, have we... We haven't We haven't gone past the goats yet, right? Or, or do we... We didn't skip... We oh, still gotta go yeah, we oh did. yeah, we did go past. No, wait, no, we haven't. We haven't. We're okay. Don't worry. Oh, we haven't? I got you. We haven't. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Real quick, someone in chat said that <laughs> it says EFAP 192 in the thumbnail. It shouldn't, does it? Wait. Hmm? Oh, I didn't. I, check. It showed up as the right yes, thumbnail. Yes, it does. Me, it's, it's, um, it's, um, I've currently got this thumbnail. It says 192. That's yeah. very strange because this is what it's showing up as for me. Wait, no, it's, show no, it's showing 194 <laughs> for me. Yeah. 194 Wait, for me. <laughs> I haven't changed okay, anything so since we started. YouTube! So. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. why you chose it. Because you were yeah. like, because, okay, for the conversation for me that we had about the thumbnail yeah. at the start, it was like, because hey, that one worked too. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 Jay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Jay, we need to have a conversation right now. Are you using, are you not using dark mode? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Jay. See, what a kick. Jay, kick. We got one ninety twos, threes, and fours. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, with the with the oh no, we're so talking the about the... We at, the at the start of the episode of like, <sighs> hey, do you think this image we works? Had you know, very it's different from, it's not from, it doesn't from work. Other it other literally thumbnail. doesn't. It's broken. Thanks to YouTube, yeah. it's broken. Wait, so when I when I said, what do you think of the thumbnail, Jay? Did you see? What, I, what it's supposed to be there, or did I, you see Vader? Well, like, well, I, it's like, well okay, saw, what happened in my head was like, um, everyone was saying, oh, that's funny, it's not from L Thor Love and Thunder, but it's funny, and I was like, I don't really get it, so I'm just not gonna... Oh. I, I guess I don't get the joke. I think I, I think I said that it was, like, reflective of, of like, some sort of deep seething like, resentment <laughs> for the film. That's, that's now funny as fuck, because, that... yeah, the point I was trying to make was it was hyper cringe and embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They Not that it may be like kind of. super angry, but yeah, no, they technically both of them work. Yeah, yeah. So, I I do like <laughs> the face. <laughs> the face is great. That's why I like chose it. It is the it is an excellent face. <laughs> <laughs> just... look at, I wanted you. Oh, hang on. Harold's his name, right? Yeah, hide the pain, Harold. <laughs> hide the pain, Harold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's YouTube's end then. It's not me. If if plenty of people have seen that, <laughs> is there. I need to look real quick. I'll be right back. Discuss mm -hmm. the thumbnail until I return. Oh, I've hide the pain, Harold. He's great. <laughs> but that's how I feel about this film. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, if you know, by the time Rags will be back, we'll still be talking about this. Uh, we have the play. Um. Uh. Yeah. So it's not as funny this time, and it goes on a little too long. I think it yeah. takes forever. And uh, the the, and, and the of original we play didn't have Arden as part of yeah, it too. The, you know, well, the original play. In it, guys. So, <laughs> the original play in um, uh, Ragnarok served a purpose in the plot. This one is just, hey, you remember the play? Wasn't that funny? Yeah, right? that yeah is because my feelings exactly that... shared. Yeah, because the one in Ragnarok was this is the way that Loki has chosen to present um Loki present his uh, fake death. Yeah, it's um it's informing a lot, and of course his own reactions to it while pretending to be Odin. It's like multi layered in terms of what you can pull from that, uh, and it's also a lot shorter too. Um, that mm -hmm. that's like a really good example. This one is just isn't it funny how poor and shoddy this little amateur like yeah. play that these guys are putting on in. That Whereas seems... the other one told us something about character. This yeah, one's that seems just to be the goal creepy. that is like, how funny is it that you saw this scene in a high budget and now we're doing a high budget but low yeah. budget thing? 
Like, okay. Mm -hmm. And also, you, you didn't have the humor, because it was the choir singing the actual music from Thor the Dark World for the choir while he's screaming no <laughs> to yeah, the heavens. Yeah, I am back. Doesn't, you put a lot um, more effort into that doesn't, one. Doesn't uh, Loki as Odin mouth some of the words as well? He does. I yeah. didn't do it for him. Yeah, yeah, it implies, obviously, that he's had a huge hand in making this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which which then, you know, it's just like, so it's not that it was put on by force, even though it's shit, because Loki has an ego. It's this is this is something that they are this invested in doing. How Asgard is being presented, um, what happened with Loki, and of course it's all bullshit. Like Loki's right there. Yeah. So yeah, um, it was a bit cringe, uh, unfortunately. Mm hmm. Yeah. But it definitely yeah, would be a part of the overall argument for how this is like. See, we're doing Thor Ragnarok again. You guys like that? Yeah. And it's like yeah, but. <laughs> Where yeah, do I even but, begin? But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's cr it's super good. cringe. I, I hated it. And yeah, I hated uh, it so much. They, Harold they, moment. They do yeah. their uh, their big bow, as though the the play was over. You guys were saying to me anyway, right? Like, yeah, that's if you go to the theater, that's what they do when it ends. Yeah, that's the, the that's thing the, is, yeah, at the end, all of the actors come out and they take a big the bow end and everyone's Hella coming. Destroys that Hella arriving is the end. end. Yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> See, here's the thing. It's like this. It, it's like the thing you have to remember is that this movie is shit. What from you, top to that. bottom? Yeah, you. They can't. They don't know how plays work, and they put plays in their film. Tyke has never gone to a play, apparently. No, I think I think that he just didn't think about this. I think he was like, yeah, this, this <laughs> is the right dance. point. <laughs> no, and I think that, I think that he knows how a play works. I just think that he wasn't invested in making this play work. That's fair. He, he might have not even realized how dumb it is. Because, like, remember, we're giving the context for why Mjolnir got destroyed, because then we, the next, the literal following event is that the destroyed pieces of Mjolnir are about to be relevant to something. So it's almost like a quick recant in case you forgot that she destroyed Mjolnir, which is such a weird position to be in at this point. Like, mm. oh, I hope they remember that's how that happened. It's like, yeah... I don't know. Do you even need to tell us how it got destroyed as opposed to the information we need, which is that Mjolnir is currently in pieces? Do we need to know why that's happened when you're just trying to tell the stakes of your story? As opposed to making sure people understand. You know what I mean? Like, we don't do a, we don't do a Kenobi and give you a previously on all the Marvel films before this one. Remember that? Do you guys remember? How could I yes. forget? How could I forget? <laughs> You Which, don't need um, much to establish that, you know, Mjolnir is in pieces. You just show you it. Show Mjolnir, Mjolnir, Mjolnir being in pieces. Right there. There it is. We know you have the information. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Jane. Yeah. Okay. I want to. If you guys got the stream up. All right. That, to me, doesn't seem like even remotely enough pieces to make up Mjolnir. There is the, the two issues I have with this. Yeah. The, the depiction has two odd aspects, which is that doesn't seem to be enough to be a hammer's worth. That is not one Mjolnir's worth of fragments. No. And two, there's no way they all just fell right there. No, well, yeah, you're right. He, he, like they've the, they've maintained the, the gag that they would have cut the soil out of the ground to travel this thing places. That wouldn't work Mjolnir. either, wouldn't it? I don't know. Well, That's they, like saying I, you could lift well, Mjolnir get, if you pick up the table it's resting on. Because yeah. what I get from yeah. this is they, they, they ask Thor, hey, can you bring your pieces of Mjolnir over here so we can do like an exhibition on the fucking hammer? <laughs> and please don't try to repair it because that's definitely not going to work. Well, Maybe they phrased like it like it would be a that's sort not of... How it works. Definitely. Because yeah. it would have been, re it... been repaired by now if it could just repair it. Exactly. Up. So he just decides. It... So I guess he just decides. Oh yeah, just put it here over a little glass cone, and people can watch it. Make it fight. I can't five be the only person who thinks that it's weird that the grass size and the bubble size are are two different like diameters. You know, like is that strange to anyone else? That's strange, right? It's fine with Wait, me. I'm not sure mind. what you're referring to. To be Same honest, I'm, the, the dome I'm around the, to the thing isn't as big as the grass itself. Oh, I'm fine yeah. Why would you have? Why would you have? Well, why would you make the dome, the glass specifically? It, right? What is it like? A, is there like a border around it? Oh, I'm not I, I, oh, I get you. Yeah. Yeah, like there's clearly grass well, outside they're... of the bubble, but it... oh, outside the bubble. Yeah. Oh no, that is weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's strange that you would make it like that. Mm -hmm. It unusual. almost is as if they they had done their prop work and they forgot to coordinate, and then they show yeah. up on set and put the glass said, on. It's the... like, oh, <laughs> doesn't, yeah, what's what's... Does, doesn't even look like it's sealed. It just looks like it's just no, it on there. It's like lying on like there. Yeah. 
like know. a cheese platter. <laughs> Just put the dome <laughs> over the cheese platter. So, but it's a hammer now. <laughs> we talk again about how we've had a couple of EFAP streams where we, we, or things here and there, streams, whatever. We just talk about like, oh, what is the potential of trying to get Jane to Thor sort of thing? And it's like, we've had one scene saying she has cancer and she's going to Asgard. You're like, all right, that's a start, I guess. Um, it starts to reform in front of her. Immediately. Because reason. Um, can we, um... There's no real explanation. They try because, you know... We'll get there. You know, we'll get there. <laughs> and, uh, I think that does not satisfy at all. This film has extremely bizarre pacing. Yes. The speed at oh, which yeah. things happen... I think this is where the first time it became super duper apparent to me that this film is just bam, 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 scene, 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 scene. There's mm -hmm. no room. To, it's things just happen very in, in a very quick consecutive sequence, I guess. But there's just the, the pacing of this film is so strange. Boom. She went to Mjolnir. It reforms. Boom. It, it's just done. Right. That, that's it. It's over. It's finished. It happened. Done. Very strange. Very odd. But this this uh this finally brings us to the goats, right? Well, yeah. So this is the actually the moment where you know we were talking about that that temple dialogue comes from, where he was just like, "Oh yeah, about um, that." And he's like, "Don't talk about it. it makes me sad." But he's like, "So a gift for those who do great work for our people, or whatever, or to reward you with these uh, creatures, and they give him two very large goats. They yell. They scream. They very scream. Loudly. And the first time." I don't know. It got me. <laughs> I don't know. I can see. I can see how someone would laugh at it the first time. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see how. Yeah, I can see it. It didn't do it for me, but I could. I can understand it. See the the guy who was sitting next to me in the cinema. He fucking loved those goats. He he laughed so much every time they popped up. I was like, shut up. It's not funny anymore. I, I think um, you know, Tiger would have been okay had he not used them seven thousand times. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I kind of want to like time. I I way prefer Thor's reaction to the goats to the goats being there, right? As in you see these goats and they're just loud and they're screaming and they're just giant fucking goats. And then Thor goes, Wow, those are wonderful. And you're like, Yeah, I, I like that. I like I really like that. That that seems like the Thor I I know and love. That he sees uh, beauty in those just massive weird creatures. I'm going to take your silence as agreement and move on. I agree. <laughs> sure, Jay. Um, a. So I I agree. He's like uh, Korg's like, Bad. oh man, they scream a lot, and then Thor's like, it'll be fine. And then it cuts to them screaming while on the Guardian ships. That's just they're all like panicking and it's chaotic because they're screaming, and it's just like, yep, yeah, all right, I guess that that would be. What and then happen. it doesn't get any worse. Um. And then uh, you see Nebula say, "I'm putting them down," and she gets a gun out. And uh, Thor tries to knock her gun away from shooting them. She fires, and it bounces until it hits Korg in the face. Um, I don't know. Just feels a little awkward. Uh, the, 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 it's all obviously slapstick, but like, LOL, me. so random. It's weird that she shot someone in the face inside the ship, and no one seems to really mind. Well, they say, "Are you okay?" And he's like, "Yep, I'm okay." Which is like, yeah, that should probably have been a little bit more shocking. But all right. That's just something that Good happened. that wasn't someone else who would have died from that. <laughs> yeah. um, That's good. Then we get another classic joke where uh, Korg says, I'm pretty sure that these things like respond to a certain kind of whistle. And he goes, <laughs> Which is not and, something and, and, the gift givers would explain. And, and he's just like, huh, I, I, I can't do it. How about you try to Mantis? And then she just goes, Eah. Eah. And so you, you sort of sit there for a moment like, oh, the joke is... The joke is that she thinks a whistle is making a weird noise, I guess. Okay. I I misinterpreted that. I just thought that was the strange sound that they liked, and she could just do it. Yeah, I, I had the same interpretation. Maybe that is it. That's how good the jokes but are no, in no, this film. No, we get the actual sound later. Um, at my yeah, that's, correct. <laughs> that's what um, confused me later, but at the time I thought that that's what well, the joke was. Is that yeah. the sound that they respond to? was that weird bleh, noise and she just makes it and it's a funny noise and that's literally what the joke is. This is what I mean, like, I felt it's completely funny noise. out of sync with this movie's jokes. Like, with Ragnarok, Absolutely. it was just one after another of me, like, fucking losing it. But with, with this movie, I was just like, huh? Oh. Oh, that, oh, that was the... Okay. And then, you know, we have another one where Kraglin enters the ship 
And he's like, this is my wife. And then they're like, what? You can't be married again. You can't marry every time we're on a different it's... planet. And I was like, oh, I, I guess he does that. I There's guess an interesting funny. little mini arc that I had yeah. with, because I like him as a character from the Guardians yeah. movies, and I want things to work out okay for him, because he's been through a lot, you know? He's st he's got Yondu's thing on his head, and he, you know he's been practicing with it, and he's still around. And I, I really, really, I, I want things to work out well for him. And I'm like, oh god, I hope that already. I'm like, I like you as a character. I want you to get the fuck out of this movie. You need to be gone. You need to escape. I hope <laughs> I never see you again in this movie. I, you need to be gone. They're gonna ruin you and destroy you. And then after I profess that I really like this character, and I'm and I'm happy that he found a wife. And they're going to go off into a planet and maybe have a wonderful life together. They're like, you get married on every planet. And I'm like, oh, oh. Well, but that's, and that's the long and short of it. That is the joke. Isn't it funny that Kraglin gets married <laughs> on every planet? It's like, is that all you got? Yeah, that's all we got. That's... And that's what I mean. Like, you're like, joke, joke, joke. We just had a bunch of them. And all of them are just jokes where I'm just like, okay. All right. So anyway, okay. back to plot. Um... They check out their distress signals, and there's a common theme with them being that the god butcher is killing a bunch of gods. Like, oh dear. And then they're skipping through. Yeah, and apparently... Through. Oh, go ahead, sorry. They're skipping through, and Sif is in one of them, and Thor's like, whoa, 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 play that one. And she's like, Thor, where are you? We need you. And... Yeah, don't skip over that one. And he's so, like... To me... Oh, go ahead. Just to cut in, uh, like, their reactions of all the other gods felt very like hollow unrealistic like this should be something quite serious there's someone who's going around killing gods that's a big threat but they're like oh yeah we don't really care until we find oh now we get you know the message from lady sif so it just felt very underplayed and underwhelming and if i'm supposed to get invested in the plot i'll need the characters to care a bit more and they just don't give a crap I agree. Uh, yes. This should be catastrophic for the universe because gods aren't given the name gods because they're irrelevant to civilizations. You know, like, it's, it's like, oh, these are literal gods in our universe of the Marvel fantasy sci-fi shit and they're getting systematically taken down serial killer style. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, the part that bothered me more so, though, was just the fact that we see the Sith thing and he's just like, ah, my friend is in danger. We must go. Like, where were you? For the past however long. When have you checked yeah. in on Asgard or any of your friends? Have you checked in on the Avengers? Have you checked in on, like, Sif, Anything. for example? Apparently no. You just, and, and then you declare to the screen, like, I must go because my friend is in danger. It's like, that's not you anymore, man. No offense, but... Mm -hmm. And then he proves... Had a... a little bit of offense, to be honest. He, yeah, um, then he proves that's not him because he has a device that can take him to Sif instantly and he doesn't use it for another about 20 minutes because he wants to talk about his feelings with Star-Lord. Mm -hmm. There's not, no not, urgency. Not, not in like an important way, not in like a way no. that's yeah. like, hey, I need to get uh, Star-Lord, I'm going to save before I go, you know, in case I don't make it back or something. Like, uh, it's not nothing like that, right? No. It's like, and hey, I'm... It's like, hey, it's like, a... Thor, you're hey, all bro. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, go I'm just going, bro. And he has no urgency at all for the life of his friend who could be in the balance. He's just like, oh, yeah. Gonna so, I mean, I'm starting anything. to wonder what you're trying to tell me because you've clearly shown his actions to be the complete opposite of what he just said. Is that on purpose or are you just incompetent? It's the kind I'm of energy that I, I would expect him to have if he'd been, like, hanging around at someone's apartment and then he's just realized, hey, I think they might actually be, like, kind of tired of me being here. I might go... Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely kind of energy. Um, something you get an impression of. It's kind of weird, because, yeah. Yeah, like they want him to leave. It's just, uh, Which is not what we, yeah. we were going for, I don't think, uh, for no. the potential of combining Thor with the Guardians. Infinity War, like, gave you a taste of it, and then this film made you want it to never happen ever again. Pretty much. I'm also I was also confused by the timeline. Like, how long has Gore been doing this? Because apparently he killed a fuck ton of gods already. Oh. And no one gave the timeline get, of this movie. And no one gave a yeah. shit. Well, yeah, and the, the only survivor the... of the recent war is one of Thor's best friends. Like, yeah, nice. so, Dink. Like, genuinely, right? I want, I want to try something. I want everyone to make their best guess of when the, uh, like the, the pre-title sequence, the gore, like origin story sequence, like 
how many years or months or weeks <laughs> or whatever measurement of time is that scene before the the movie? I want you all with that number in your head. I don't think and I can I reasonably you guess. No. No, no, you must. You um, must. I, I, I think my guess well, would be if I must. Post I would game, say at the least. Like most reasonable yeah. amount of time. It would need to be post end game, and I'm thinking a month. He got the sword, and then he's been killing gods for a month, and that's when they get the alert. I was going to say something along the lines of... God, it's got to be more than that, right? Um, I don't know. Because <laughs> like, I was like, thinking like anywhere Taika between like six months and like, a year. If Taika Waititi told me it was ancient history, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, like sure. it happened yeah I don't Iron know Man if this 1. movie... Like, oh. The events of this movie could be a week. They could also be years. Mm -hmm. It's I have no idea. The passage of time in this film is a mystery. You have no sense of time. Yeah. Because I don't know how the sword works specifically. If I'm to... If I have to assume what the sword does, it, he gets you know, it, and then right. he... Huh? I would have to pause and think about this. Like, how does Gore travel between realms and planets and stuff because he's shadow in the shadow realm. Yeah, he, he oh yeah, he teleports through shadows. shadows. That's, right. that's right. By the way, they don't do anything with that, which is a shame. No. Oh yeah, yeah. They, that's the really cool thing that you could potentially they do stuff with. It's thing. never, we need to uh, stay away from the shadows. We need to turn on all the lights. Yeah, we need to, you know, something that could be There's like one that, move that he know? does in the middle of a fight that's kind of, kind of neat that relates to that. We can well, talk about it when we get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we we can talk about it later because there's some potentially what this, it could have been really cool, could have been really cool, could have been, but it's not. Could have. Yeah, been. I don't know. I I I would I would assume like years. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, three years, minimum. But it's also yeah, all it's... dependent. Also, it's dependent on what the sword actually does. Does the sword immediately lets him use all his powers, or does he have to figure that out? Yeah, and how because he, he certainly. Sorry. Remember, he's, uh, they say he's cursed to oh, die yeah. as a result of this thing. So, like, there's got to be a timer on that. I wonder what that there is. There must be a timer on that. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, I, I, that's my best guess. I would say, like, something for three years. Because I'm also considering how many gods he apparently killed already. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Paul walks outside. Star Lord follows him up. And again, because, like, for some reason, Star Lord is, like, the only one that really has stuff to do here for the Guardians. Um, and he has like a heart-to-heart -heart where he basically says like, Thor, you're, uh, you don't seem to know who the hell you are despite thousands of years of living. And it's kind of just like, hmm. Yeah, this ain't sitting right. Actually, mm. after, like, the big confusion right now being, does Thor actually care about people? I'm not sure. Um, and and he, when you say you don't really know who you are, are we talking like we don't have any elements anymore? Not even like a couple of traits that you know are true, but you know, figuring out the rest. I don't know. And um, they imply that Thor's basically broken because he's lost a part of himself that he can't fill, but he doesn't want to fill it back up again because of the fear of loss. And then they try and find a way around saying it, but you know, and that's fine. But Star Lord says like uh, the bad feeling you get of like a thing going wrong is better than nothing. So you you got to go find that. Like, better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, sort of idea. Yeah, that's the phrase that they try... It's, like, the most clunky, weird way to say that. Famous phrase that everyone should... Yeah, that everyone's kind of aware of. Well, and because he... I'm pretty sure he says, like, I have loved and lost, and now I keep people at arm's length. And he lifts his arm up, and he moves closer to him to make him at arm's length. And it's like, you're a kind of cheating again you're doing it with a joke but you're telling us exactly what thor's current mindset is regarding just connection basically instead of showing us through you know dialogue or actions and stuff he's like i keep people at arm's length because i don't want to love again because i don't want to be hurt it's like oh okay that doesn't really account for the whole doesn't care about saving people's lives that much and i don't even know if that's a point taika was mm. trying to make or not i don't know was that thor's line where he keeps people at bay yeah, he lifts his own arms up and says, I keep people at arm's yeah. length, and he walks towards Star-Lord to put them at arm's length, which is, like, you know, funny, I guess, in, in that it's, like, opposite of what he's trying to get across, but... Because that, it. to me, doesn't play out with what the film is showing, because he's been, he's been 
going with people. He went with the Guardians of the Galaxy when um, Star Lord is trying to say, "When you have well, a family," Chad, and he kind of puts his doing, head awkwardly in the way. What's he doing right now? He's going to go and save Sif because he cares about her. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> okay, so yeah, you you get a bit of mixed signals. Like, um, um, but before we can think about it, they start running in loads of jokes. He's like, you know what? We've become too close. You guys, you have to go. And then Star Wars like, well, we, we, were, we were gonna go anyway. And he's like, you can take this ship. She'll serve you well. And he's like, oh, you're letting me have my ship? And he's like, you can even look after the crew. They're a good crew. And then you get Nebula... Because Thor's a moron? Yeah, yeah. And ne Nebula's like, let's go! And, and he goes, except her. And it's just like, man, this is, he's just a kid. Stupid kid. That's like the whole joke. The joke oh, is that, yeah, he's a dumb, stupid and, idiot. It's, he's vain and he's stupid. That's it. He's vain. It's just he's like, he wants to, like, yeah. <laughs> well, here it's is your four people. It's about becoming less vain. We, and, and just to finish it off, I guess, then, they all get in the ship, they're leaving, and he starts saying, like, uh, you know, you know, good, good luck, go forward by Odin's Raven, I'll see you in and they just go. They teleport through the little pole thing, he goes, oh, they're gone. Yeah, and they don't like him. They can't he resist. I wouldn't like him either. He sucks. Once again, the Guardians doing what's right. But yeah, <laughs> saving but this movie with the correct out of opinions the film as quickly as possible. I got out of it so that I couldn't be destroyed. <laughs> Remember the um, because it's one of the things I just forgot. The uh, he's like, now let us handshake, and he's like, human handshake. Now as Guardian handshake. Now the snake. Praise you. And then, he's like, and then he has Guardian. And, and Star Wars just goes like, wow, you're really dragging this out, aren't you? And like, why would you even have that dialogue when that's all your joke has is for us to actually say that ourselves, you know? Also, this is interesting. They chose to keep that versus two other hours of footage that they chose to cut. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, how bad must have been those other two hours if this is what you chose to put in? Because Well, oh my it might have been great, except Taika is just really bad at selecting you know, the true. quality from not quality. <laughs> That's always a possibility. He might have legitimately made some good stuff, but he was completely incapable of differentiating the wheat from the chaff. Um... Is there anything else about that scene? Anything else? Because I was going to say it's next up is going to Stiff. All right. Then. Only that this <laughs> next scene, like that we're about to talk about, was probably my most disliked scene of the whole oh, movie, shit. and my, I, 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 I got, I, I hated this. I can already imagine more, and, why. Yeah, I was, this one is where I said, I, I, there was already scenes that annoyed me and bothered me. I, I was just. Are you kidding me? This so, well, actually, you know what? I'll give, it, I'll just frame it and then you can take it away if you want. So we got, um, <laughs> he goes to the planet Sif was on, he spots a giant dead thing and says that's the god of the Alagarians, I think it is, and uh, he says the nicest god you'll ever meet, which I was like, nicest god you'll ever meet? So Gore is, another god that Gore has killed that's not a bad person, I guess. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> it's, just, it's just weird that you keep telling me this, but okay, I'm sure it's going somewhere, it'll be fine. He's not just killing the baddies, he's killing all the goodies, even the ones that actively, if they are killed, their people will have worse lives for it, which seems antithetical to his goals, but hmm. he's corrupted! So, okay. Anyway, you find Sif. Um, do you want to, do you want to just talk about it yourself, Shad, I guess? Or <laughs> from oh memory? my goodness, I'll, I'll, I'll try. So, to me, this scene almost encapsulates the disservice of and insult that this entire film is where this scene should have had weight there is something important here there is a relationship a past between these two characters Thor should be concerned and it is entirely played off as a complete joke and not only that they actually it's like they went out of their way for the acting to be bad that where Sif is like no leave me I shall go to the just the tone even the way that they're talking and and they talk about her potential death, and then no no we'll subvert that with another joke. Oh, you actually have to die in battle to go to Valhalla. So if it's like, damn it, and there is That's no the seriousness. She says, what does she say? I can't. Remember. She says uh, she says a naughty word. She says shit. <laughs> oh, oh well, I, I don't say naughty words, or I try uh, to avoid them. 
<laughs> and <laughs> I, 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 I got close. I got, <laughs> <laughs> um, my goodness, it was just so unsatisfying. I found it so insulting to her character, the past, the relationship, what the tone should be for the scene. And uh, I was just like, ah, oh, so, yep, this is it. This is going to be the film. I can't. All right, fine. And, and, yeah. and also, that, that's like the end of Sif in the film. She only shows up yeah. again for like 10 seconds right at the very end. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. I don't understand why you would bring the character back to do nothing with her. It is strange. You got her back and everything, and she's just virtually yeah. non-existent. And, and in, in the time movie. that she was there, you took her arm, and you established yeah. that she doesn't even understand her own, like, culture. Well, and, and she doesn't hasn't understand her own... Since what? Like, or, or two? Since 2013? That's like what 10 years fuck? ago in the timeline. More than that, even. And, like, what what is she doing here? Uh, why is it that she's, she's the lone survivor? Out. I don't know. It's funny that she doesn't get to go into Valhalla, but her arm will. It's like, oh. <laughs> that yeah. annoyed me so much. Your arm is in Valhalla, and, ah, uh, it's like, she almost died. She could be dying right now, but let's just... Mm. <laughs> no arm. Yeah, no arm. And also, what is like, that? <laughs> to me, her character is also just... a. Comp- they they were indicating that they might have explored something with her, with her relationship with Thor. She might have been a love interest, and they decide, yeah. all right, screw it all, we'll completely forget about her. Well, and to me, that... she she was a much better and interesting love interest to me than Jane was. I was like, yeah, do something with her. She's she seems a bit cool. There's a bit more more there that I could enjoy. But now they decided we'll we'll forget about her and then just get rid of her out of the kind of Thor story as a joke in the end and. It's a little bit odd, right? You've transplanted aspects of Sif onto Jane um, to make them more compatible um, rather than just developing a relationship with Sif who already existed, Mm -hmm. you know? It's Um, an odd choice, I guess. Yeah, and and you you were constructing a joke. We've talked about this so many times. You've established a mechanic in the middle of your joke to make your joke work. And that is, if you don't die in battle, you don't go to Valhalla. It's like, okay... All right, we've made that in stone now. I mean, I guess we'll have to forgive the fact that Sif doesn't know that, or which is just unreal. But whatever. Um, didn't you just remind us how Odin died? Mm. So you telling me Odin is not in Valhalla? <laughs> Even though he is, <laughs> of course he is. Yeah, it's just a bit like, oh, okay. Um, Whoopsie. Hmm. I don't know. Uh. uh Loki made it, but Odin didn't. <laughs> All right, whatever. That's fine. Well, yeah, th- this maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe does it count as a battle? The battle was over. He just got choked out afterwards. He's battling Thanos. He tried to stab him. Yeah, but he didn't go to Valhalla. He's just dead <laughs> until he, he wasn't show. anymore. Filming season two, for me. It's so exciting. Yeah. Filming season two right now. How exciting! So we get our second gore scene. And this is actually what I was referring to, where it's just like, <laughs> wait, what? So, so before yeah. we move on, I just wanted yeah. to find out: Did anyone else feel that the acting by Sif and and Thor in that was purposely made comically bad? Like, did anyone else like get they that were impression? being told well, yeah, to they... over exaggerate their uh, exactly? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, almost like they were doing the performance of the skit from Ragnarok, like the actual play of Loki's fake, you know. Yeah, it was like that. It was like that. But then this is supposed to be a serious. Well, no, that not. It's not even supposed to be a serious. Well, it should be serious. It should be very serious. (sighs) Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh. Mm-hmm. So she tells him, "It's like, oh, good thing, you know, that I would have survived and I was involved in this battle because his next target is Asgard." So, like, I need you to understand how fucking lucky that is. Thor <laughs> is going to go to Asgard now to defend it from Gore's attacks. Meanwhile, like, had she died, had she not been there, or had the next target not been Asgard and it had been Asgard ages ago, uh, Gore would also, have just... How did she find out? Or did Gore well, actually uh, say, I can explain oh, now that. I'll go and... When Gore was okay. slashing all these people down, he was like, Ah, my next target is Asgard. Ah, my next target is Asgard. It's like, a lot of bad guys <laughs> do that. It makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it does. Absolutely. But yeah, um, and, you know, it's well, not even... Asgard! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where Asgard is? Because that's where I'm going. <laughs> like, <laughs> alrighty. 
Uh, yeah, so he turns up. You love to fight on Asgard because that's where I'm going. And the thought I had when I was in the old cinema was like, hmm, this is where we can finally get interesting because he'll have to. Like, Thor can't get killed instantly like the other nice gods have been, apparently. And so Gore might actually have to deal with the fact that he's dealing with gods that actually help their people. Um, so, you know, what interest can we get out of that? But he doesn't go and attack a god. He starts to summon an army of spooky creatures. And I was like, wait a minute. And just starts what? assaulting the civilians, and, basically. Yeah, all of the citizens <laughs> like, of Asgard start getting attacked and killed by these things. And that is so, like, wait, what? Why, that though? has nothing to do with what you told us his motives are. If anything, he should be sympathetic to these people. And, and like, I, as far as I'm concerned, his second scene, the first couple of seconds into his second scene, he's just completely broken now. And you have to conclude that Gore isn't a character with a consistent goal. He's just, I don't know, an, an, an avatar for the sword, and the sword just hates stuff and things. See, the reason that they have him kidnap the children is for his larger plan going well, forward. Well, that's not even what I'm Which talking about. Interest... He's attacking them. All right. Oh, okay. It's almost uh... like the cap kidnapping the kids was an afterthought. It does seem yeah. that way, and I was going to get to that. Like yeah. His plan A is to attack these people, theoretically to draw out the gods, but again, that doesn't even... <laughs> yeah, because he oh, thinks yeah. all the gods are bad, and oh, they don't help God, any people. Brain. Like, so why I... would you attack those, those citizens to draw out the gods and don't give a shit about their people? Do you know I mean? like, You're a fool. I hit compile after saying that sentence, and my brain fell apart. It was like, wait, you can't have two of those at once. It's like, what do you mean? It's like... Oh, his motivation is to kill the, the uncaring gods by relying on how much they care about people. Excuse me, that doesn't make any sense at all. And it's like, well, <laughs> shut up. So It's yeah, funny, um, though. <laughs> I was completely lost on this guy already. I was just like, why did you do this? You have a great actor. You even have, like, a style that is new with him, with the, the, the shadows and stuff. And, like, I, he's a little bit creepy at least, but, like, what... what? What have you done? Uh, this doesn't make sense. So, yeah, he's attacking and he smiles once um, the gods arrive. I say the gods. You get Thor arrives and Valkyries, they're killing people. Um, so I guess that was part of the plan. Which, yeah, I guess I was, was to summarize that first. He does go into the fight and start attacking them. And then when that doesn't work, kidnaps some children and escapes through a little shadow puddle. Because that's what he can do. Um, mm -hmm. but a lot of things happen in this scene lot of things. I guess we'll probably talk about a couple of them. We probably should. Fine. Uh, we can do that. Hmm. So, <sighs> Thor lands, he's got Sif, and he's like, take her to the infirmary, and then starts just fighting, because of course. And Valkyrie's like, lol, uh, who, you know, like, like, Valkyrie implies it's Thor's fault that these people are here, and then Thor's like, I don't even know who these people are, and all the monsters are, and he's fighting, and then he notices that Mjolnir is doing some damage, or rather, I guess it's just electrical sounds at first, and he's like, who's the new guy? And she's like, oh, that guy? You're gonna cool. love that guy. Get it, because uh -huh. it's not a guy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. And so Thor <laughs> stares at Mjolnir, killing things for a good, like, 15-second sequence. And it was already getting frustrating. Like, dude, you're literal people, and they're dying. Like, yeah. Can you... Can you Get protect them first, and then, you know, He's just do like, the rest Ooh. later. And then they do He the learned thing. about the Infinity Cones things, so it's okay if some of them die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, fuck them. these guys. Those are not my people. And so, yeah, he keeps following the hammer until it comes right up to him, and he goes, You're back. The only... Oh, sorry, I skipped over the part where he starts whistling, like... Like going, you know, like the, the classic sort of whistle you do for a dog and saying, Come like on, a yeah. dog, boy. Yeah. Come on, come on here. Which is just like, mm. okay, all right. What? Calm down. No, that is. <laughs> he, he calls out, has anyone seen Mjolnir? Yeah, have you seen my hammer to some random soldier to that's fighting the shadow people? fighting for their lives. Have it's, you uh, seen no. my hammer? Like, like he wants to build a shed or something. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> you remember how in, like, in, in Endgame, um, when Thor has uh, Mjolnir and Cap has Stormbreaker, he's like, no, 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 you have the little one because he'd rather have Stormbreaker. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, because <laughs> yeah. the people who made this film didn't <laughs> when they were making it. Well, another reason to highlight that, and the one in Infinity War where he says, you copy my beard, oh, which is like, yeah. fun. It, these things last That's like split seconds. 
exactly. and they carry on fighting. And they haven't seen each other in years. Meanwhile, here, he's getting really lost and obsessive over Mjolnir instead of fighting people who are, like, actively trying to kill his people. It's just a bit awkward. And a lot of these moments, they're still fighting as they say these things. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, so then he follows it until he sees it go back and it's grabbed by uh, Lady Thor. Jane Foster, dressed up. You may have seen it. It's a big trailer payoff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, excuse me, that's my hammer, and you're wearing my clothes. Um, As opposed to a more apt question of, holy shit, the hammer's back. Also, holy shit, you can pick it up. Yeah. Wait, who are you? Yeah. Like, what <laughs> oh, this guy doesn't give a fuck you? about if who can just pick up Mjolnir. Crystallize that. His primary concerns are, you're trying to be as cool as me. Stop it. In the middle of You're a battle right. to save the lives uh, of the guardians. It's all hideously He's wrong. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and then he immediately, Bain. More. He immediately wow. uses his, his Stormbreaker to summon himself a cooler a costume cool nude, with a bigger costume. helmet than hers. With a big, no, stupid like CG shit. helmet. It's because they needed toys, um, merchandise with that. Because he never wears the helmet again because well, they knew the how bad it looks. I kind of liked the um, the the suit in the trailer. I thought it looked kind of neat. Um, I think the suit he's wearing with, um, before you. I like the suit that another... he's wearing before he changes yeah. it. Yeah, I don't like Ex this one. Expecting a uh, a Ragnarok, right? Another Ragnarok. I was like, hey, this suit. He's this new suit kind of feels more in tone with Ragnarok. It's like more bright and colorful. It, it suits the new direction that Taika Waititi's taking Thor in. At that point, you know, I was really enjoying that direction. Knowing that this is a literal just manifestation of his vanity, I hate it. it sucks. Yeah. yeah. It is. Awful, and also, yeah. man, I don't know, like, stupid nanotech helmets. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I guess we could say it now. Like, the CGI on Jane's helmet is unbelievably, like, bad. I cannot believe that they couldn't just build, like, a real helmet and have her wear it, that they had to CGI it in. And um, not only to CGI it in, but the, the tracking is so off, probably because I was they just didn't about to say that, set. yeah. Every time they she probably, moves her head, every time the lighting changes, every time... I cannot believe... Right. It's just Imagine being right. the guy who was told to do that. Yeah, the poor fucker <laughs> who, had to, who had to do that. Yeah, exactly. And they we need you to do the this. tracking yeah. markers on her face or something. I doubt like, they were. I doubt it. I, I, I doubt imagine it. they didn't yeah. even give a shit on set. Because this is probably what happened... We haven't done enough focus group testing to figure out what the helmet needs to look like to make the most money on merchandise and stuff. So, even uh, then, you, if you, you knew she was going to wear one, you put tracking markers on her face. Well, like, sure, but not if you're not interested in actually making the job easier for visual effects artists. Oh no! Right, I forgot that we don't care about the the product right. or the people working on the product. Right. You haven't it's made up mistake. your mind yet on how you yeah. want things to look. So you make it easier for yourself on set and harder for the people afterward. Because yeah, we'll just fix it in CGI like layer. Brief. We'll fix it in post. Well, it's it's probably, fine, guys. Well, you can redo your work, and it's not as expensive as us bringing everybody back in on our set. And it's like, yeah, and you should plan better. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the production wasn't a catastrophe. Well, it has to be. It has to have been tumultuous, especially afterward. Because look at the results. It looks so bad. Why didn't you just give her a real helmet? Why didn't you give Thor a real helmet either? I mean, you said it yesterday. Things like they probably didn't. Think I hadn't figured she's gonna have yet. a helmet on. <laughs> I, I, be they probably knew that she was gonna have a helmet. They but just they didn't, didn't know which one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, just what a waste of work. As long as everyone understands very perfectly, he, he is so frustrated in seeing that she's so awesome that he builds himself a brand new suit Stop on top of the one he currently year. has, and even adds a very little bit on to the helmet. Yeah. Is it weird that he can just like create armor and clothes for himself? He's done that well, so throughout. It's fine with me. Has he? Okay. Yeah. Well, right. I don't know. Even in original say... in, uh, Avengers, he when he summons the hammer and yeah. it's suddenly like well, metal arms. He does, it, arms. He does yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. But I think it annoys me now because all the movies do this stupid nanotech CG like fucking suits and helmets and things. I really dislike it. The reason why I dislike it so much is because I think it um. I don't know if I want to chalk it up to a level of contempt for like um for uh like fully embracing the nature of comic book characters with like super unique distinctive suits and fun masks and outfits and costumes. I think it's much more cynical. It's just that we need to see the actor's face because that's better for marketing. Um and maybe the more shallow perspective that you can't have a character emote with uh like a mask on. 
even though you can always find really unique and sort of clever ways to do that. I mean, in Spider-Man Homecoming, like um, they'd have like the little zoom in and zoom out thing on like the eyes to simulate emotions. Um, you've got options, um, but I think it is just combined laziness and and um, you need the actor's faces because it's better for marketing. I just don't like it. Um, it's annoying. Mm-hmm. And, and usually there's no reason to not have your helmet on because especially if the helmet protects your head physically like it's an actual helmet that protects you from shrapnel and um yeah and like blunt trauma and things you should always have that on <clears throat> he then finally convinces her to take the helmet off and reveal that she's jane and then he's like flabbergasted and they're just staring at each other while there's a literal building in the background on fire falling yeah, apart people fighting for mm-hmm. their lives and what's getting their it's ripped out by these shadow dogs. What I find interesting about that is that I can see someone being like, oh, Tyke is such a great visual director. The idea there with a the house falling apart in the background is that's how like that's how Thor feels right now. His world is falling apart. Jane Foster is in front, and I'm just like, this, this fucking world is falling apart. That's Asgard. <laughs> There's fighting happening right now. The building falling down in a ruin is symbolic of the building falling down in a ruin. <laughs> Crazy. And then, like, this felt so inappropriate. Uh, Korg comes back in with his commentary. We're doing a flashback sequence now. Yep. And it's like, uh, okay, I thought Gore was here welcome. to attack everybody and kill the god. Okay, that's fine. No, nope, let's flashback do it. Welcome time. to Welcome to Ratcon City, everybody. <laughs> like, oh boy. Well, yeah, it pretty oh much boy. opens with Thor and Jane loved each other a lot. They really did. Here's a bunch of footage they of really them loving did, each guys. other because the first two movies just. You know, they weren't great for that. Nobody really believed their chemistry anyway. I'm sorry, they were just attractive people put together, which isn't enough sometimes. Um, it's like, yay, they're so happy, 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 happy. They go out one night, they're having just a great old time. They come back, Natalie Portman goes to sleep. Thor's talking to Mjolnir about how, just, just how great she is. Mm-hmm. Just how great she is. Now, at this point in the theater, and, and I, I, I imagine that um, a lot of us were the same, I was still waiting to find out how Jane became worthy, right? That's, that's like that. the big... A decent question yeah. to ask. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, uh, it's been a really important mechanic in the MCU. Nobody can just... Not everyone can just pick up the hammer. You have to be worthy. And, and, and Steve Rogers fucking earned it after a bazillion movies of doing all kinds of good deeds. And so right now mm-hmm. it's, it's maintained to some degree. We're like, yeah, it feels like Thor is an incredibly special guy. Not anymore. And that's why he could wield it. And that Steve had to work his ass off to get to being like a, the purest and rightfully, of humans. Rightfully, yeah. rightly earn that right. So what did Jane do? Because you you can't you don't you don't want to dilute it. You've got to continue to be special, surely. So mm. as he's talking to to Mjolnir and looking at her, he says, "I need you to promise me you'll always protect her." And then Korg says, "And love that deep has a way of becoming magical." And then we see the little symbol form that was yeah, uh, there when Odin said, he who shall be worthy, you know, possess the power of Thor. So... To translate. Just... Right? Yeah. In the simplest of <laughs> oh, possible terms, he told Mjolnir to give her the power of Thor in the form of protection. To make sure she doesn't die, basically. Mm-hmm. And he did it by so accident. Essentially, essentially, Jane is able to wield Mjolnir thanks to a technicality. Yeah. Like a what, a great, what a great loophole. But also, Morley, your line, to protect her. Quote unquote. I just, yeah, I'm doing uh, this on purpose, protect- Shad. I'm doing yeah. this on purpose. That's yeah, yeah, the words yeah. he uses, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, yep. it are, would be interesting. Flags. <laughs> Here's something that would be interesting. So, let's say that it is, as they say, that through some weird technicality where, like, the hammer, I don't know, con- like, understands what Thor says in a way that is um unexpected, it would be really interesting if Jane found out that the reason why she could pick up the hammer was because of this weird technicality, and then it caused some conflict between them. Like, I can only pick up this hammer because you, like, told it that I could. I didn't actually earn the right in the same way that, like, you earned the right or Steve earned the right. Well, like, I just got well, it. Whatever happens with, with the right, it needs to be acknowledged in the film. It needs to be acknowledged. It is. This is something you earned and I was just given. Which doesn't happen. Yeah, well, it is. A, it I, is. I, it, I, it, well, on. I was going to foreshadow the, that, it, but more let's just jump the gun there. The, the, no, that's not jumping the, the gun. The film... That's the story that's not told. <laughs> No, I, yeah. The film actually <laughs> implies that the worthiness criteria is still needed to lift the hammer. 
Um, and so even if he's trying to get the hammer to protect Jane, I was under the impression by the later scene when, you know, uh, we'll get to it, but Thor actually tries to lift it up and say, like, oh, I'm still worthy, which I don't think he would be at this point myself. I agree. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> it implies no. that you still need to have a worthiness to even lift it. And just saying for, to the hammer to protect Jane doesn't disqualify the need for her to be worthy, but she just is for reasons, which is very unsatisfying to me. That kind yeah. of robs the mm -hmm. arc Captain America needed to be able to lift the thing. I don't think your interpretation kind of Jane is of an arc. out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, oh, yeah. Both interpretations are possible. That one, as long as he casts the spell on you or requests it from Mjolnir, you can just have all the power of Thor and you, do, you can bypass the uh, worthiness test. <laughs> or mm -hmm. uh, she also happened to be worthy and he cast that well, then thing. the spell is irrelevant. I was about to say, it kind of makes that <laughs> yeah. pointless, yeah, because, yeah. So, like, what, to me, is, I that, thought how, it was is the... that how uh, Mjolnir reformed itself then? Is yes, the yes, was yes. Like... That's what I thought. I thought the spell was the thing that, that I, I felt that the film was trying to tell That's us, dumb. that it was the spell it, that caused you know, it, it to reform the yes, chain. Dumb. It had yes, already it had spells dumb. on it to, well, then, it already we had spells on it to help people. Can't discount Cole's line. He says, "Love that deep has a way of becoming magical," as if to yeah. imply he, it really is kind of a spell cast here. Like, yeah, well, look, did we it know by it's a spell accident. cast, but the question that we are asking is: Is this the thing that allows her to pick it up despite not being worthy, or is well, this the thing that allows Mjolnir to reform um, despite having been broken? Because that's not even clear. though. Why did, because Thor. Thor is still worthy of picking up the hammer, so why didn't it reform when it got destroyed? Yeah, it's that plot exactly. hole there. That's the exactly. issue. What in his spell has anything to do with reforming Mjolnir? Like, yeah. I think it's well, there should be nothing. Really but the, the movie is trying to say that. It, to me, I felt the movie was trying to say that it's the spell that. To protect Jane, it needed to reform, so it reformed for her, which oh, I think man. is bullcrap. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, there's some other things it might want to reform to protect like I don't know Thor exactly <laughs> like, yes yeah. from hell but the movie establishes the hammer just had the ability to reform itself for arbitrary reasons that the, the movie only, decides to tell us it's like okay sure reform, though, it reforms and gains attributes because of yes it. yeah. it's now better, better than it's better now. Now. exactly yeah it can, uh, it can split up into little bitty chunks and then tear through enemies which is something that you couldn't do with it's better it's better after being better to be broken i should have broken this hammer ages ago yeah it's such crap i can uh, it's such convoluted crap wouldn't Agreed. it be cool? You know, you know what would be cool? No. If it was weaker. What? Yeah. yeah. Cool. No, we yeah. can't. We can't have it be weaker like, than. No. I I was honestly expecting that Jane would have had to collect the pieces and do some real serious research to try and figure out some unknown way that there might be a way for the hammer to actually reforge, reconnect to the magic, or or something. Yeah, make it the whole movie. That would have been just justified. To, yes. Just to go to Niv Nivaladir, is it? Never. Nivaladir. It's, yeah, that place. She speaks to Tyrion Giant. He like has to go through all these different like magical people. That she has to look at the origin of Mjolnir, how it was made, and she manages to uncover something with the work of people who are experts with materials that are rare to reforge it, and that's what gives her worthiness as well. Because her whole goal with it, her whole motivation, was to get a powerful tool back to heroes. That would have been great, but none of that it just does it because magic and reasons like oh come off it well that's kind of the i think the thing that some of us were jumping to is just like wow you stole you didn't even do the worthiness arc you just said he made it so that she had it but he didn't even yeah. need to he didn't even you skipped mean the to. fuck out of it it was an the fuck out of it. I think the thing that's really wild about it is that it's never acknowledged when it could be the source of really great great conflict and yep. when a really lot of the conflict. film is about building okay. jane up it's very odd to have Jane get her powers not through her own merits, but because Thor essentially allowed her to. Yeah, I, totally. It, it is fast contrary, track. Just fast track of well, building it's, her it's up contrary than... to your objectives of making her and establishing that she herself is a really great person who was altruistic and noble and earned that right, while also like missing out on the conflict that you could stem from, like that you could sap out of that. Um, to build, I don't know, like, you, you've wasted a really, you've wasted an opportunity here. Um, it's not like an amazing opportunity, but it's something. Well, like, seeing a character go from not worthy of wielding Mjolnir to worthy of it, like, and that is their motivation from the off, like, that seems like a really interesting arc to take a character on throughout the course of a movie, right? Like, 
Uh, they, they motivated to pick it up at the start. They can't. They got to work on themselves a bit until they can. Yeah. That could be cool. And then you get a really cool end of the movie payoff where, like, whatever happens, like, lightning strikes on them or they pick it up or, you know, whatever. It's right there. Um, repairing it for other people and then realizing at the end when she finally repairs it, it's for her. Yeah. Super cool stuff. Um, and then, like, they, they just, they blow their load real quick. They're like, no, she picks it up and she's cool now. She's Thor. She did it. Yeah, and this flashback sequence is to tell us why, which is crazy, by the way, because we're the only people who know. No one in universe knows this. Nobody knows. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, Not, as even as the, as Not even Thor. Not even Thor who did it. This just happened. Fuck you. Yeah, this is, <laughs> You're yeah, right. this is what I said. This, we got surprise <laughs> mechanics now in this story. Oh, Dude, yeah. imagine, imagine Captain America was still around. It's like, Jane did what? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> what? Be cool. I, you know, he, he's, he's a cool guy. He'd be like, whoa, good for her. Well, uh, yeah, probably. Like, this is, this is how important these things are. That If you said, like, Jane Foster, she's a fucking thought, she's worthy. I'd be like, holy fuck, what a great person she must be. Like, cause yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> What did she do? I don't know. She wasn't there for eight years or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, th what Thor right. needs to do is, hey, Mjolnir, by the way, any of my friends, any good people in the world, if they need yeah. help, protect help them all. Out, okay, protect them. Yeah. Just fly over there and do a little bloop, bloop, and then come back. Oh, but don't uh, you dare reform on, uh, on me without me, you prick. So that important piece of information right. is done. Yeah. Yeah, but I just want to point out because it was given in a flashback. Technically, not even Thor knows how it reformed that, and he doesn't even question it. They nope. all just take it in stride as, like, no mystery, because that, that would be a huge, like, how the hell did this happen? But well, yeah, why didn't it, it happen but when I needed you, be all dear? Exactly. Like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> what an asshole. Kind of trouble there. <laughs> also, I guess in the, in, the, in the same sentence, we start with the whole, the weapons are sentient, sentient kind of dealio, that starts in this movie. I guess that starts here for the first time. Because Thor is just talking to Mjolnir like it's a person. Uh, yeah, the closest, closest, the closest thing, thing that we up. really had... I mean, it's never been like this before. The, never. I think yeah. the implication was always there was some kind of a very... A, a very... Like an implied semi-sentient ability for Mjolnir to judge things. Yeah. Like people to be worthy to yeah. pick it up. But that's as far as it went. It was very, very basic and brought and there was, wasn't an issue there. And now it's like we have moody weaponry. Yeah. It's hilarious. Oh, we're getting there. There's so much yeah. shit. Oh, no, no, it's not, so it's not funny, left. though. It's trying um, to be funny and it isn't. We have... Uh, that's done. So the next thing we need to tell us is why they broke up. And... Uh, mm -hmm. We get a couple of flashes of them growing more and more distant because they both got their careers. One being science, the other being saving the literal fucking world. Um, so it feels a little bit unbalanced. And then they show us a clip where uh, they're shouting at each other. And, and good old Jane says, I have been working like all night, all day, all night on this data. And then Thor says, well, I, I have been doing this all night. And, and she's like, what, two dishes? And it's played mm -hmm. for a joke, like, because he's an idiot. Or it is. Yeah, because, you know, Thor sucks. He's a moron. It's really weird no. to do that mm -hmm. when you want to be like, their relationship means a lot, and they broke up for very important and meaningful and, and reasons that they fundamentally are, like, incompatible with the do lives they chose. But instead, they're just like, lol, he can't do dishes. Cringe. Do you remember in the not good Man, am I right? Do you guys remember in the not good movie, Thor The Dark World, how when Thor came back to Earth and Jane was like, well, where have you been? Like, you left. He explained very calmly and in a way to try and ease over her concerns. Like, yeah, the Bifrost was destroyed and the only reason I was able to come back to Earth was da 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 da. You remember how, like, that was who Thor was at that point in time? What happened to you? <laughs> yeah, we talked about before. He's got like he's oh, lost yeah. his understanding of like social interactions. He's like a clown person that doesn't even understand why people would what people want and what they feel anymore when he used to. He did used to. He used to be pretty considerate. Well, um, also, this breaks canon because this is a flashback, and they're trying to say Thor was oblivious back when they were dating, which is what is, canonically in line is, with um. Yeah, that's what uh, Fring's point Age was, of Ultron, wasn't it? That's yeah, the point. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's what I'm getting at is that they've they've forgotten who he is. Um, like they've forgotten who Thor no, is. I don't think they've forgotten. They, they have now. Care. They don't care. Um, well, I said, I said, I said rejection they don't care. of who he is. 
I, I mean, I would say that they don't care, but I, I guess what I mean is, like, I would be, I, I could believe that they didn't even remember that that was, like, something he said, or, like, that he behaved in a certain way. Um, I think if you showed clips know. of him to Taika, Taika would probably smile and then giggle a bit and go, like, yeah, he's not that anymore. What did he say? I, I will well, do something to your canon or something like that? What was that line he said? I will ruin your mythos? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And well, a lot of so people are referencing guess... that after this film. Well, and then there's also the quote about asking Natalie Portman to be in a Star Wars movie. Um, For the first time. Yeah. And, and like, that's... So, so when Christian What's Bale What's that said, quote? I'm not, I'm not that familiar with the so, Star Wars one. Um, apparently, Taika Waititi, like, I guess, while working on or after, as Thor was being made, uh, asked Natalie Portman if she wanted to be in a Star Wars movie. He didn't realize that she'd already been in three Star Wars movies. Um, what the fuck there is... Yeah. yeah, it's, it's and he it's and funny he's because... going to be making a Star Wars film. This it's guy gonna be yeah. that it's, it's gonna level be of regard and consideration to the canon and Star also, Wars. Well, I, I wouldn't, wow. I wouldn't oh, even call it like a matter of conversation. I, like that's a I you're joking, it aren't you, Roman? Right? It's just like you don't know. You just you don't know. You don't actually know these films. You don't um, have basic information about. Um, yeah, it was quotes that were back to back that were like. There's such a fucking roller coaster of uh, things. He said that uh, his Star Wars movie is not going to regard any of the the actual established Which, characters. He's going to have me, his own thing. That made me happy. Made everyone happy. Then he had a follow up one yeah. saying, "I've spoken to some people, and I realize now there's not much point in doing a Star Wars film that doesn't regard some of the things you actually familiar no! with." Oh, oh no! 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 no. Why are you becoming no. a villain? <laughs> Why would he say that? Well, so this is the thing, man. It, go by this film, his Star Wars movie, it's like, holy shit, what's that gonna be like? Oh my goodness. That's me worried. Um, yeah. That's not great, because I didn't feel that way before this film. <laughs> oh, man. And then like now we've got the director's cut as well. He's, he's, he's had a lot of, like, bizarre quotes lately. Yeah. I feel like we're approaching... Someone making a video destroying his career, <laughs> like not, not like actually not like ending his career, but like going through his career and like obliterating him in a in, you know video essay form. Couldn't I feel he like be that might happen? Thing? Well, so it's got to be it, it. It would have to be yeah. No, that's obviously I didn't actually say that. As opposed to like oh no, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like it needs to be not actually something that happened. As opposed to the way that I framed it made it sound worse than it is. You know. Well, no, no, he could have like, been joking. Um, he could have been like, hey, do you want to be in a Star Wars movie? But I don't, I don't know. Why would they, why would the quote frame it as if, it, what? Hold on, let's find the well, quote. To be fair, I have seen an article today uh, framing one of his, something he said where he was clearly joking as like a well, serious quote. I, uh, what he okay, said, like, right. it was like the article said um, he, um, he believes that um, Stranger Things shouldn't have used, uh, Kate Bush, because he felt he feels ownership over those songs, and he felt jealous um, about it. Well, that it's sounds like, like a meme. And you see the clip, and he's in a very believe. sarcastic tone, so and he's this joking. Is, this is the quote. He said, uh, Natalie said to me, what do you want to do next? And I said, I'm, try I I'm trying to work on a Star Wars thing. Have you ever wanted to be in a Star Wars movie? She said, I've been <laughs> in Star Wars movies. I forgot about those ones. It's quite funny. <laughs> It's funny, but, like, it's not a good thing. That's, um, you know what that is? That's the kind of thing he would make fun of Thor for doing. <laughs> yeah, sure, but, like, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's, you compare it to when <laughs> Christian Bale was asked if you watched Marvel movies, he just said, I watched the one with the big bloke and the stones. That's funny to me, <laughs> but it's not a problem, you know? It's funny to me that an actor on a film is like, yeah, no, I've seen a couple on the one with the guy with the big chin or something. But like, as opposed to you are writing and directing mm. a project in a universe and you've oh, yeah. forgotten about the existence of a character who is not, like, she's one of the main characters in that trilogy. I know she's nobody's favorite, but like, she's an important character. I, thought, I don't know, I maybe like, it was, hey, maybe mean, it was and then mean. I realized it was true. <laughs> like... Uh, well, I mean, just I don't know that anybody's favorite is Padme, but, but like, oh, yeah, like my, brain, my brain genuinely went like, "Hey, no, Padme's great, but like, she's definitely no one's favorite." <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, but all right, let's let's press. Flashback on. ends, and they film it in such a way that it's framed on her, but the camera's like sort of wobbling as though it, the person's drunk, and then it shows him, and he's like, "Oh, 
really hot here, huh? Oh my god. Like, uh, the employee's it's having a panic PTSD. attack because he's seeing <laughs> here. Um, and it's just like, <gasps> yep, why not? You, you had several choices, but you went with that one. Yeah. They're still fighting in the background, by the way. I yep, thought I'd point yep, that out. Are. Uh, they're still deaf everywhere. So, yeah, what do we have to do? Funny scene. Um, yeah, and he asks her how this happened, and then she's the one that says we should probably carry on with the fight because of the fight stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, again, yeah, just like, who is this guy? I don't recognize him. Uh, he's an imposter. Who are you? What have you done with Thor, as that he guy said before getting killed? Um, yeah, and then he has, his, he has a fight with Gore. Like a full-on just boss fight. And uh, mm -hmm. Gore has yep. several opportunities to kill him, and he just refuses to take them. Yeah, but he makes jokes throughout, so that's fine. He's got to yuck it up. That was pretty cringe, yeah. Um, he puts, he, like, has Thor with one arm and pinned, and the other arm, he puts the sword to his neck, ready to plunge, but he just doesn't. And then Thor goes, is that the Necro Sword? I've read about that. Yeah. And then, <laughs> it's like... What I'm surprised Thor can read in this. Whatever Gore says in response to that <laughs> is going to define his characteristics, all right? And Gore says, then you know this is gonna hurt. Mm. And it's just like, yeah, oh. I can't get a beat on this villain. He's just, he's not just inconsistent in terms of his goals and like what he is, his villainy, shall we say? I just, I don't get his, what is his personality? Is he like a goofy joker? Well, in the type, opening scene, he... he's pretty calm. He calmly he's is like, yeah, all serious. gods will die. Almost apathetic in us. Well, not, you know, like he's, he's definitely not like a zany wacky dude. It's such a shame because when he, uh, when he did that, I was like, you're not, so you're not like full on onto your mission then. You're, and you're actually like looking to have a little bit of fun here and there, which is like, that is not the impression I got from you at all. It felt like your job mm -hmm. was important. And serious, not like let's have a bit of fun while I'm killing the gods, yay! And um, in response to him saying that, Thor then says, "Pain is a construct made by the weak." Oh, ah, ah that hurts. Oh, that's sharp. Uh, uh, this is really just just slam your head against the desk over and over. Like, why must you make my <laughs> Thor this way? Uh -huh. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. I, um... Yeah, and then they continue just throwing each other around because that's all they'll ever do. And then he tries to grab Stormbreaker, and you're like, "Oh!" Mm. And uh, he really he's Stormbreaker. The reason he has that opportunity is he's tangled Thor up in a bunch of tentacles. But the thing is, when he tries to grab it, Thor gets angry and just does uh, electric stuff and breaks like out like an area of effect attack. <laughs> just blows him away. Well, it's he like, does oh. his power up, but his eyes get glowy, and that's when he has yeah. a full power, I guess. Yeah, which is something you'd like, like, you might want to just do that a lot, you know? That's probably yeah, like a good thing that you do there. Hmm. Anyway, um, Valkyrie, uh, Lady Thor, and Thor all see that, you know, Gore is right there, and Gore realizes, I guess, that they all see him, and so, uh, if you guys remember, I don't know, but this is a choppy fucking scene. They show each of them realizing he's there in, like, awkward solo shots, and then Thor just goes pew with his hammer to fire electric, for a decent chunk, and then it just cuts back, and there's just nothing. Yeah, I just and it's like, oh, away. so he's gone, and then it cuts back to our guys who are like, where did he go? Like, well, he was right in front of you. You would have seen whatever he did. I feel, I feel like this is happening multiple times in these fight <laughs> scenes, where it's almost it's like I said earlier. There's, there just seems like there's chunks of this movie just cut yeah. out. Scenes are just removed, even if they're supposed to be really important to something you're looking at on screen. That fight probably went on for longer, but they ended it, and it's chopped up with different parts of the actual ending of the scene, probably. It felt awkward as hell. Like, mm -hmm. all of them realizing he's there, he stares off at them, then Thor goes, fires the lightning for a, little, a couple seconds, and then it cuts over just an empty space, and then cuts back, and they're like, where did he go? Like, oh, mm. that's weird. But, okay. And then, yeah, the, the, the scene ends with Gore has kidnapped a bunch of children, which is... Like, what? <laughs> that just comes yeah. out of nowhere. Like that's that it really does come out of nowhere. I, it seems like, it, like if you were to watch that's that, that's why scene it seemed like an afterthought. Any, well, it if you if you watch it with no knowledge of what uh, you know, you watch it the first time, you're gonna just be baffled by like what any of this was. Well, why so did I you know, do this? Maybe don't watch this the first time. Everyone, oh, wow. yeah. don't have to it's be just like, don't. So, first it was you attack 
you attack New Asgard, and then you try to take Stormbreaker, and when, after your first attempt doesn't really work, you then abduct all of the children of New Asgard and then run away. Yeah. <laughs> What what is this? <laughs> like, I feel like we've and, we've got full on just two completely evil. different characters uh, that are in the same body. The, or something. Steel, I don't know. the steel man of this scene, which I don't think is conveyed in the film, is that Gore realizes he is unable to beat scene. them here, and so he the, is going to try and lure them into a place where he's more powerful. But the thing is, was there any indication that Gore would not have been able to defeat all three because he was pretty? strong against them all throughout the whole thing well, just memory. Might be worth giving it another shot. Well, there's yeah, a lot just... of questions to ask. So, Gore went around and killed a bunch of other gods and then attacked New Asgard while Thor wasn't there to then steal Stormbreaker from him? Why did he not just go and attack Thor while he was on his own? Exactly. If he can seemingly <laughs> just travel anywhere at any mm -hmm. time, at any because he doesn't have a spaceship, he travels through like shadows or something. So like presumably he could go find Thor anywhere, but he, this is what this and is why... how he does it. Because we've yeah, it, clearly he wants Stormbreaker, but just like why he wants do you Stormbreaker. Want, why that? Why is it that instead of anything? Why that can you... open a... Um, and why are you killing now. all these other gods then? Is that to like lure Thor? You don't need to lure him. You can go to him, right? You can travel anywhere you yeah, want. You'd have to assume he's just discovered the shit about it. Yes. His, his final guess, goal, but yeah. that was told to him from the first scene he gets that sword, according to the movie. <laughs> and so yeah, the only way they could argue it doesn't seem like it had a point. Kind of pointless. The only yeah. way you could argue it is that he heard the, the word and he didn't really come to a full real, realization or learn what that thing could do to need Stormbreaker so until yeah. right after that last one. That means then the corruption is so thorough that it completely removes his own desires, personality choices and memories and everything to the point where it just does whatever it wants, but it also does not have its primary goal in place. Until it a certain cannot, time. And that, that, that's how and that, the and it, it, it it's a complete mess. You're absolutely right. Great. And <laughs> that's why it doesn't Great. work. But that, that's <laughs> how that's how people just, would justify it. They would try to say they oh, hadn't figured it out. They didn't know what their plot was when they started <laughs> shooting. In all likelihood. And so oh, I oh. hate that. That's just a thing that happens. Hey, do you have the story figured out yet? Nah, we'll we'll figure it out as we go. It's like I feel like you really shouldn't do it that way. But you shut up, Frank. Go work on that helmet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll release your children as soon as you give us three different helmets. <laughs> um, so that's pretty bad. They uh they did not defeat this new villain. A lot of the you know property and people have been damaged, and a bunch of kids have been kidnapped. That's bad. Doesn't matter yeah. though because we're doing comedy. So I know the, 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 immediately oh, we're now doing one. like oh so hi hi Jane and she's like yeah quite a reunion huh. What's it been, like, three, four years? And he's like, eight years, seven months, six days. And uh, yeah. you may have known that from trailer clips. It's as cringe as it is in the film. It's just, yeah. he's obsessive, she's not. Because he's got all the worst traits, while she's kind of a normal person. Because that's the <laughs> way we do it. Kind of a normal, not really. Uh, no, the film we'll get there. She's a normal person. The thing is, <laughs> so, I'm trying to remember. Do they learn the children are being ki kidnapped before those exchanges or after? Oh, the, this is this, the exchanges are after they know he's taking the kids. Um, yeah, there's some lady uh, at they... night who's like, "He's taking the children." Then they try to chase oh, him, uh, but he goes into a shadow puddle. Oh, oh that is because. Uh, just Damn because, again, th this uh, uh, this film just doesn't want to take anything seriously. Like, the death of Lady Sif, that should have been really serious. Kidnapping of children, holy crap. Oh, come on, Shad, that and... was like five seconds ago. Oh, yeah. God. It's <laughs> so <laughs> bad. It doesn't even count anymore. Um, and yeah, like uh, if... <sighs> it gets worse. So he's like, I haven't forgotten since the day you left me. And then she's like, I didn't leave, you did. And then he's like, well, I would... I would know that you left because I was there. And then she was like, no, you weren't there. That's the point. How could I have left you if you weren't even there to see me leave? And then he goes, huh, uh, I suppose you're right. We kind of left each other, didn't we? And, uh, and now you're leaving me again. And that's how the scene ends. Yeah. So <laughs> she ditched him <laughs> with a note <laughs> because he was too busy saving the world. And she has now told him that really he left her first so don't even don't even make that claim because you, you went around enough and i i find it infinitely frustrating that he's not allowed to do this so i don't know why i should bother but 
No, do, you remember in Doctor Strange we kept talking about how it's really annoying he doesn't defend himself at all. He doesn't talk about anything that he does. He's always just getting chastised yeah. by every fucking character in the universe because like he, he just lets can't. it happen. Which is yeah. totally within his personality. Yeah. Yeah, unusual for Doctor Strange, very much so. And it's fucking unusual for Thor as well to just be like, "You left me, Mister. Ooh, I gotta go save the world." It's like, "Fuck me, dude. You're gonna stand up for yourself at all?" And he's just like, "No, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I did kind of leave." <laughs> okay. Uh also makes Jane look really bad that she was justifying leaving Oh, no, she's Thor strong and because, independent. Yeah, he was saving the world, but no, he should have made more time for her. Those people can die, right? Let them die. You should have stayed with me. Well, why does Saying, it need to be so defensive? Why can't it just be like, it would? It just was never going to work. Like, what I needed, you couldn't give, and that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. You know, like, it, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Like adults. You, you can have it be like a mutual one where they both recognize it's like, yeah, it's not that you are in the wrong or that I'm in the wrong. Our paths simply do not converge. That would be a callback to Convergence or whatever that thing was called in or the Dark World. I don't know. Seize those opportunities to not make your characters bad. Yeah. And then because we've had way too much drama now, like we need some comedy after that comedy. We uh, do because we mm. can't sit on a serious moment for any longer than like two minutes. Maybe so got, less than that, really. Ooh, that's a long time. The entirety yeah, of minutes. the new Asgardian community are panicking and they're piling into the community yeah. center to ask Valkyrie oh, what's going to happen now. What's, what are we going to do? Like, we, Something needs to be done. The children, our children have been fucking kidnapped. That's the reality of the situation. That is not the dialogue. The dialogue is a bunch of uh, the guys from the play walk up to Valkyrie like, Your Majesty, don't you think we should work on a performance for this entire debacle? Don't you think we should have, you know, the people, they love, they love entertainment. And people in cinema start laughing because, like, <laughs> they're gonna—they're talking about their shitty play. They're gonna make like a shitty so, play version of this horrible event. <laughs> you mentioned that, so I've mentioned this before. I was disappointed in the lack of laughs that the audience gave Ragnarok, um, especially when Grandmaster like <laughs> so many great jokes and they weren't being appreciated. This time around, I was proud of my audience for the lack of laughter yeah. throughout the film. <laughs> <laughs> when the film ends, you stand up and go, good job, everyone. Good, good job. job. Well, there was there was one guy um, at the end. I can't remember. What was the thing that they did? Oh, at the end, like, I can't remember what it was. It was something that made it, that, like, he just, he couldn't help but laugh. But oh, I guess that would be a spoiler, because that's, like, at the end of the film. Um, right. Yeah, and, and, and the big funny with that as a payoff is that she just walks off, doesn't give an answer, and then they go, I didn't hear a no. Yeah, so I guess they're doing that. Because that's important now, and funny. With with all that comedy, <sighs> I feel like this time we have some more comedy. So, Thor's just watching Jane talk to people about their crisis, and uh, then you have Korg being like, "Hey, isn't that your old hammer, bro? What's it like? Your ex girlfriend with your ex hammer?" And I'm just like dead inside. I was gonna press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I just don't want it anymore. <laughs> And yeah, and then, then they, and then and then they give you the glimpse of hope. They give you the little little glimpse. But go ahead. Wait, what's the glimpse of hope? What is the oh, what, what, what's starting to happen? But then they make a joke out of it. I'm confused. What I'm not sure. Yeah, I I don't actually. Need, yeah, I don't know what you're referring to. What? Well, doesn't he start with his speech next? No, not yet. No. You fool, metal. So we've got. Oh. Um, Never mind. He, he that. tries to pull to get Mjolnir out of your hand, and then right. Stormbreaker shows up next to him, like an ex-girlfriend, annoyed that he's looking at another girl. Mm. Like it comes in from the side, like really hey, slow. And this apparently tilt. works for loads of people. Didn't work for me. I don't okay. know what else we're gonna end up saying no. about it. Like, <laughs> look, look. I have to admit that that was the part that almost got a chuckle out of me. But the thing that stopped the chuckle was that okay. The hammers are not acting in line um, with how they've been. I hate in the past. it. I hate the hammers on heavy girlfriends. I hate it. Yeah. It's cringe. Well, it's it's trying really hard to be funny and it isn't. Um, I don't know, just it's seeing just it, annoying. <laughs> to me it was just funny just seeing it slowly kind of float in from the side of camera is like look, and I get it, it doesn't it's not, it doesn't make no, no, sense. No, I agree with you. Spontaneous reaction. Yeah, my spontaneous reaction. It is a well there. shot joke. <laughs> However, the content sucks. <laughs> yeah. No. No, I, I remember, I watched, so here's the thing, Chad, I watched that clip, right? Um, 
before like the film um was actually out it was one of the ones that they posted just out of context it's available on the internet if you want to see it like legitimately um and out of the context of like hey the hammer is acting like a petty girlfriend isn't it funny that the mm -hmm. hammer is acting like a petty girlfriend isn't that really funny isn't that really funny <laughs> um it was just like thor looking at mjolnir and then he tries to summon it and then just from behind him you see stormbreaker slowly come up and i thought that that was it i thought it was just like a a joke from the perspective of the meta of the audience right that it wouldn't yeah. be yeah, acknowledged mean, yeah. in the universe that it was creeping up on it yeah, yeah. That it was well, just like it was shot in a it, funny way yeah, no. we haven't even gotten to like how bad that's going to get as an element yet. yeah it's going to get really that's, that, bad that's going to inform yeah. for anybody who's confused that's the, you'll know why i'm angry at this more so than <laughs> this joke yeah. in and of itself um but yeah with all that comedy, though, it's probably time to get some comedy in here, um, especially mm -hmm. before... I mean, if we keep trying, eventually one of them will be funny, right? Well, so one this one's That's right. Law incredibly of funny. Well, look, and this is true, because eventually one of them got a laugh out of me. This, this one's really good. This is top-notch quality comedy mm -hmm. chat, so you need to brace yourselves for oh. this. The scenario is everyone is in crisis, right? And we need to actually set it up so that there's enough shouting that, that Thor's going to try and silence the room, but in that shouting... Some people are like suggesting ideas, you know, that they're struggling with this whole environment. This is horrible. This is stressful. The kids are gone. Someone says, we should go after them. And another one says, with what? Half our soldiers are dead. And then someone else says, half our soldiers are always dead. Half our people, right? Uh... I, I, yeah. I'd, I'd be <laughs> just as angry at those people, whether they said soldiers or people. Um, yeah. yeah, this is the line that hurt. That this, this one hurt. This one hurt really quite bad this was like the this is the audio version of infinity cones yes mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. isn't, it, isn't it funny this how the asgardian people suffer so care. much yeah hilarious please kill it me doesn't it doesn't make me feel good i don't like it at all nope it's just oh, this it's insistence, so we have to squeeze these jokes in everywhere and in doing so inevitably you are going to have people make jokes about things that you you shouldn't make jokes about in terms of the story. In, in universe, right? Yeah, universe is one of like yeah. you could do. You could do funny in universe jokes about this kind of thing. Like you could have a genuine um, scenario where someone tries to make a joke about it, and then someone is also like, "That's not funny." And like, I don't know. You could. You, that's certainly a character interaction you could have about it that could be funny. I would never deny like if, the possibility of executing it. I would just advise would against say, it when you're dealing well, with this level. Like, the town's in children War, were just kidnapped, and we've got... Everyone's panicking over it, and then the history of everyone's died. In Infinity War, they have the interaction between Thor. The, uh, he's never... Well, he's never fought me twice. It's... Uh, it's, it's poignant he's in terms of He's trying to use character. comedy to, to yeah. cope with the situation. Yeah. He's um, trying to make a joke, and he's trying to... It's, well, and remember, it's, it's not. Funny. It is funny. It's not delivered in a way that's bombastic. It's tragic. Yeah, well, it's, it, it doesn't it's go. Comedy it's comedy that exists diegetically. It's it's di it's diegetic, right? It's like it's the character is making a joke in universe, but it's not like a joke. It's almost gallows um, humor as well, in the sense well, of it, um, if you know you get told by a doctor you you run out of time, and then you were going to go on holiday with a friend or something, and then. Uh, you know, that friend is like, uh, you know, well, we, we, I guess we'll have to do something else. And it's like, that holiday would have been shit, I'm pretty sure, anyway. So don't worry about it. Like, you're trying, like, the mm -hmm. reality is so much more dire, well, but you're trying to. Uh, I, it's, I think it's accepted, well, maybe not, but, like, that comedy as a, a thing that humans do may well have just been a mechanism that we use to help us uh, rationalize, understand, and deal with very difficult situations. It kind of ties into that, like, quote that I really like, where, like, tragedy is first person, comedy is third person. It's, like, um, like I, comedy and, tr and like, difficult ad uh, situations and bad things. There is a link there that you can draw. Um, I but, don't know but, if this is true or not, but I once heard, and take this with many grains of salt, but I, I heard this somewhere, and it's, and it's something I remember. But I heard that in World War II the one of the reasons or it was believed by wherever i heard this that one of the reasons that british soldiers seem to have less um occurrences of ptsd compared to german soldiers is because the because of 
British humor was a lot more prevalent among men. Their ability to use like gallows humor and dark humor uh, helped in some kind of regard. So who knows if that's true or not, but it's something that I've heard. And I'm, I wonder if it, it really is the case. Nice. Um, well, possibly, yeah. It's interesting to think because the Germans but, but, are notoriously unhumorous, as metal constantly reminds As metal's me. avatar would the, tell you. The, right, yeah. the reason why I guess it's uh, relevant, though, is understanding comedy is um, it, the the idea that like comedy is simple is a very simple and shallow perspective on it. It's it's challenging and finding out how to in, incorporate comedy into a story without damaging the overall tone uh of whatever it is or even enhancing the tone with really good comedy it's mm. challenging you need to be like deliberate and um thoughtful with jokes especially when you know if you're going to make a joke about something yeah. that in universe is a significant event you know like you just think about it don't just throw in like aha isn't that funny it's like well wait a minute would somebody actually say that should this be laughed at well, you know yeah i think it's about timing because Look, people do do gallows humor, and so I wouldn't he say it's beyond it. the possibility. Yeah, I did. I did say that. Uh, it's not beyond the realms of possibility for someone to make a joke like that. But right after the children are being kidnapped and they're still dealing with loss and it's a serious situation, uh, it would be it, to me. It mm. feels very unrealistic that someone would make a joke like that at a time like this. Especially with uh, the joke comes after a genuine, like, uh, desperation from one of the citizens being like, "We need to send people after them." Like that's yeah. a that's a genuine call for like action, and then they're like, "Send who? The soldiers? Half of them are dead." And then the, someone else is like, "Yeah, well, the half of them are always dead." I forget the specific lines, but when Rocket and Thor are talking in Infinity Ward, Infinity Ward. Why did I say the company Ward. instead of the game? That's very strange. But right, in continue, Infinity right. War, um, there's something they have that thing where. Thor kind of tries to make a joke about it, and then you could see in his face that he's actually quite depressed. Um, and what what was I forget the lines of that specific thing, um, but it worked really, really well. Is this and a, it was, uh, yeah. Is this like a meme or something? Well, wait, 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 wait. Um, has that been brought up at all, Rags? Already? I don't. Oh, I did. Someone. God damn it. Yeah. So it wasn't a uh, meme. You just forgot. No, no it's not a meme. It's just I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, you just I don't know. brought up the line where um, when uh, he said like I'm getting uh, he's he, you know he's never fought me. Yeah, he has. He's never fought me twice. That's the line you're thinking about. I'm pretty sure. There's no other joke that I can think well, of. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, now I remember you saying that. I said but, that's no. weird. My that I so it's damn it. Friggy is so <laughs> annoying. It's I like, swear what? I'm here. Like my mind is not <laughs> oh elsewhere. I'm I'm just I I recognize right. these words. Oh I just I, realized I, that we could convince you that anything had happened. <laughs> we probably don't take now, advantage yeah. of me. <laughs> but I'm not gonna take advantage. It's just it's funny. Like someone will explicitly bring up a reference, and then five minutes later, you'd be like, "Yeah, it's like that thing." I just say it of irony. It's well, like, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna smile and say it's good. We're all on the same page. <laughs> well, we are all on the same page. And if anything, um, it, it at least demonstrates demonstrably that uh, the, the perspectives that are being informed here aren't just like. You've just like legitimately forgotten that these are things that have ever been brought up. <laughs> well, and to add to that, uh, that scene that when the dialogue continues, uh, Thor says, "And I'm getting a new hammer." Don't forget. And then forget. Rocket oh, says, be um, some "Yeah." While, yeah. It, I mean, I, I was, I was, I would say like the delivery is a little bit important. That he's like, "Better be some hammer." Like, and then he looks up down. at him. Yeah, like, quiet, it, and then because yeah, well, what's being evoked there is like I get. I get that you're trying to stay positive about this when it's fucking dire. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And th that feels like the, the, the scene itself is acknowledging how fucking horrible that stuff is. While in this film, it feels like the film is like, you have to think about it. It is kind of funny that Asgardians have died so much. It's not funny, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> Me, who is an Asgardian and probably knew a lot of those people. <laughs> yeah. So relatable. Uh, um, so yeah. yeah it's very that's one of the most frustrating jokes in the whole movie for me. I was very annoyed with it. Well, I think it's, it's the one I probably the hate the most. Uh, this is the attitude when the writing isn't it funny how like Asgard sucks and they can't they just can't do anything right. Um. All right then. <laughs> so it's 
it's very the, spiteful comedy. Like the jokes yeah, are pretty it feels cool at the expense. Yep. Well, they're just always at the expense of like the characters in the story. Um, there's no, there's no jokes where everybody, and now of course a good amount of comedy is like at someone's expense, but there's never a joke where everybody can laugh together with happiness, you know, and, and just chill with how, you know, a joke that oh, makes yeah. everyone happy. Every joke is at someone's expense. Yeah. Um, except and usually the ones it's I poor. like. Except usually, the one I you... like. Okay. Well, we'll get, well, I guess we'll get into that one. Well, and the Screaming Goats one, which is the other one the that I don't goats hate. One is... Well, the I guess... Expense. I guess you're laughing at the goats, right? No, I guess, yeah, and then they're like, oh, and they, they fuck everything up for the people on the ship because they're loud and annoying. It would be pretty funny to imagine laughing with the goats as they're screaming. You're just like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, goat, and then you just wrap your arm around them. <laughs> like, ha, ha, like I that's know, a good I, one. I guess the thing goat, that's yeah. like is that Thor is happy with the goats. Right. So we are laughing at, yes. like, we're laughing at Thor being Thor, but, like, you know, it's positive. It's, we're, well, I mean, I was laughing because the goats were screaming. That was that was all there was for me. I didn't find it I, funny that the goats were screaming. I found it. I funny found it. All I found it. Well, so look, I I like the absurdity of just these screaming goats that you can hear them and they don't want to be going where they're going. They're like resisting at every opportunity, being dragged along to be taken. But the 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 goat joke wore out its welcome pretty quickly. So oh. yeah. Everyone arguing, and, you know, that joke having been made as a result of just the chaos. Thor sees this as an opportunity to be like, alright, fine, I need to get everyone in order, Allie. it's time for a speech, and... This is what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, okay, so to sort of back up Metal's position, I, I assume what your position is, is the it's like, alright, we can give Thor an opportunity to actually do a thing that he's good at, and to yes. actually help his people. It's all Specifically in mind, that as soon as he shouts, everyone stops talking and looks at him. It's like, okay. I was surprised that they actually. I was shocked too. To yeah. I the <laughs> joke was he's trying to get everybody to actually listen to him and everyone ignores him. And then yeah. Jane has to say, hey, and then everyone finally, yeah. Yeah, but uh, and he's, he's hey, like, everybody, goes an between them talking. and everyone's like, oh, we respect this guy. Uh, he's probably going to take care of everything. But, well, naive little me. That's yeah, not so what happened. Oh, and there's so. also something that they you know, they could have explored if they wanted to, that as much as Valkyrie is trying to be their leader, the people still defer to Thor because he yeah. is their true king. But of course, they'll do nothing with it, and they, they did nothing with it. They, they did film. nothing with it. What is the point of Endgame setting up that she is actually well-positioned to be a leader, only for her to not do that great a job? Why would they yeah. do that? I don't even know that they're oh, saying she's doing a bad job, it's just she doesn't like the job. I, but I've... That's an interesting direction to take it. Well, they don't really do anything with her in this movie. She doesn't have time. No, I don't, I don't. She doesn't really have an arc. <laughs> she's just she's in there. this movie a lot for... They state it, her current set she's state of being. Um, but that's mm. it. Anyway, this speech mm. begins, and we're off to, like, a partially okay start. I think he says, um, you know, times like this, we need to unite. To yeah. Come together, and you're like, all right, good, good, good. And he says, "We're afraid, we're scared, afraid, yeah. anxious." <sighs> and it's like, yeah, and then uh, you go, like, oh, here we go. Yeah, because you're like, yeah. what's the joke then? And then he goes uh, in the background. Meek is writing things down, <laughs> and uh, uh, Thor's like, "I, j I like uh, uh, yeah." There's a sweet, and then he goes, "If we, we, if we are to find the children, we must first look." Uh, within ourselves and it's just like yeah. oh fuck and then he goes i'm sorry i can't do a speech when you're doing the squeaking stuff like, you know what? okay i want to compare this to the um because that's what heroes do joke from ragnarok where he makes a rousing speech then he picks up a ball to like smash it or like a heavy object or something to smash a window and the window is stronger than he expected and it just bounces off and hits him in the face um at mid-sentence Right. And he was going to say, that's what heroes do. And then he's like, oh, ow. And then he gets back up and still enthusiastically finishes his sentence. Because it's like, that joke is like, hey, something bad happened to Thor. Isn't it funny that Thor fucked up? And like, but it's it's a completely different spirit to the joke where this is like, Thor still remains positive And he's like, he still kind of comes out on top at the end of that scene. Mm -hmm. Like, Well, because he smashes uh, through the window then as well. Well, yeah, then he smashes through the window. And, like, he's still got a smile on his face at the end of it. He's like, 
Oh, that was silly. That was fucking dumb. Lol. Um, never mind. I guess I'll finish my speech. Like that's his attitude. Yeah. Well, in this one, he's he just like self-conscious and vain. Yeah. Um. Because he tries that, and then uh, he complains about the squeaking, and then Jane says, uh, uh, "Meek's taking minutes." And then Thor goes, precious minutes we don't have. You want the kids back? I'll be back in a minute. And then smashes through the roof. He also says, write that down, Meek. So, what's wrong with this? Many oh, things. Yeah. First, this was him trying to be like, look how impressive I am. That's what all of that was. Yeah, felt miserably. Even to the point of being like, I just used the word minutes in a different context, but in the same sentence to mean a different thing. Isn't that clever? He even has like, a, I think he winks at them after it. Like, eh. It looks like it. Like, okay. His desire to go and save the day means he recklessly destroys the fucking building he's in, in Asgard now. Yes. Once again, he's completely oblivious to yep. uh, the world around him, the implications, how... But isn't it funny? Uh, and it makes him look like an idiot. But you laughed, right, Shan? You were like, ha huh. No, oh, no, no. Like I, oh. like I said, I only came I close to a chuckle just... almost that one time, and everything else is just like... Uh, I think around right? that time in the cinema, I realized that if there was laughing, it was like very selective few people who were actually laughing <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, but it doesn't stop like there. Uh, he's just stated with Stormbreaker, I'll just go save the kids. And what he's referring to is that he can teleport right to them. That's what the power of Stormbreaker has. So, nice. Why the fuck hasn't he tried this this whole time? Don't like know. straight away. You Wouldn't know? that be the first thing you do? Mm-hmm. But oh well. Yeah. He only did it when he felt prompted to impress other people. And so that they could destroy the roof for the joke, and then have yeah. him crash into was, the thing outside. I, I just don't want to lose on that point too hard. Like, the, the, that is incredible. That is such strong characterization for vanity. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. But who okay. cares? It's funny! It's they funny, explain funny how they joke! Knew... Did they explain how they knew the kids were in the Shadow Realm? I, I remember it comes oh, so up, again, I can't remember how they um, just it. Don't okay. worry, I did all of my prep so that we would we would... Fully understand yeah. the events of this movie, 100%. Yes, everyone in chat, I'm sure, is following along perfectly with how this fucking movie totally makes <laughs> sense. It's great. Yeah, it's really well structured and paced well, so it's easy to yeah. follow. He flies off, and they all look out the window because they can hear that the Stormbreaker uh, bridge light comes down, and he smashes into another structure in Asgard, struggles to get up, and you hear in the distance, uh, Stormbreaker, what are you doing? Is this about Mjolnir? Oh. Oh, stop. And I remember being like, you're not, you're not serious. Uh, Stormbreaker's fucking with him because Stormbreaker's jealous of how much he likes yeah. Mjolnir. It's not good enough, we ruin characters. We have to ruin inanimate objects as well. Stormbreaker go doesn't big or work go properly home. because the axe is jealous of the hammer. What the fuck are we doing? So, like, what, so what, what the fuck? And this, this why, is one of the... Why? This whole next set of events is so fucking choppy uh, that I'd be curious how much raw footage they had of this community center and talking in it. Because he comes back in and says, um, uh, I couldn't find them. And it's like, you couldn't find them? I guess that means, that means something. I guess, you know, hopefully we'll get there. Um... And then, they, is that, hang on, is that what he says? Like, like he's, yeah, don't worry, I'm going to yeah. get through all the important information as the okay. scene unfolds. <laughs> okay. So that's what he says when he comes in the room. I couldn't find them. Like, all right. And then, so they they go over like, what do we know about Gore? It's like, well, he travels through shadows and makes monsters and wields the necro sword that can slay gods and uh, it corrupts whoever wields it, which means it must be corrupting him. I remember like cringing out of my fucking skin when he when he did that. I was like, what do you? That's like, I don't know, me being like, someone streamed for eight hours. That means, that's like, that's like four hours twice. <laughs> like, yeah? Good job. How did you, like, if you know this about the sword, why are you only now realizing the thing that you describe it to do? It's so weird. Yep. But yeah, because it's corrupting they think the audience are idiots, and they're also idiots. Everyone's fucking stupid, yeah. Um, I don't even know that this is supposed to be him being dumb. Like. 
I don't think so, no. I think that was supposed to come across as like expositional I mean, developing dialogue. Yeah, for the audience, the Jadoon have got us on a tractor beam and they're bringing us <laughs> under their ship. Like... <laughs> <laughs> What's happening again? Could you tell us? I don't know, yeah. I, I can't follow it. Well, it's, yeah, so I think what was supposed to happen in this scene was them telling us that he can't get to the kids because they're currently in a realm that like the Rainbow Bridge can't get to. Only that's not going to make sense soon that's, enough. No, yeah. it's not, actually. <laughs> so yeah. all I have to go on is that Dawnbreaker's acting up, which actually has supporting references soon, but you're going to have to bear with me because this, like I said, this seems yes. so Imagine. fucking choppy. Don't worry, I've not missed anything. You'll think I'm jumping around. I'm really not. Yeah, this is no, how it goes linearly. Yeah, yeah. The floating head appears. <laughs> Say that again. The floating <laughs> head appears. The floating head. <laughs> this floating head is quite famous. It's made it around Twitter because it's one of the most embarrassing effects oh. Marvel have ever done. Uh, it's yeah. just... <laughs> it looks like it belongs in like a 2007 CBC, CBBC production. <laughs> <laughs> it really does, yeah. It looks very bad, guys. I will I will put it on screen in a sec. $250 million, dollars, guys. Yeah. $250 million. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, I'd like to... to... <laughs> Why well, we're talking about this bad CGI with two? <laughs> uh, <laughs> come on! What, Jesus, what? that is come mad. On. That is mad. So uh, it it really does look. It looks like the fucking baby in the sun dude, from Teletubbies. It, it, like <laughs> it looks like you've you've taken an image in Photoshop and done like the <laughs> you've used the brush and then put an outer glow over the yeah, image and yeah. popped it on. It's the all store. tinky winky. Yeah. It's Tinky white tinky. Just makes Look you at it. Just makes you wonder what they did it with all the money. <laughs> just makes you wonder. Christian Bale Where did all this money go? Because I I it recently wasn't... watched I recently watched R R R. I think I I, I told uh, told you about it mutually. Uh, that had like a seventy two million budget, and the CGI in that is pretty impressive. It's like really really good. Uh, I just this is like two hundred million, and then you have well, you have fucking this. I just, I just what, How, what, what are they doing? doing? You know what? You know what the problem probably is, and is the case with these films. It's not a matter of like CG used to be, well, and it still sometimes is used very selectively. Mm -hmm. So, like for instance, in I don't know Dead Man's Chest, like sure, Davy Jones is like a CG character. But there would have been a decent amount of the locations that they were on and sets that were, like, physical and were built and that didn't need visual effects shots. Whereas now, with, like, a Marvel movie, probably, like, 90% of these have some sort of visual effects shot in them. Your resources are spread incredibly thin to where, like, you, you need to do this work. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> um... But yeah, I mean, it, I feel like Avatar 2 will really tell us where the technology is so that we can have a direct comparison of what ought to be expected versus what yeah, you get in Marvel films. Kind of looking forward to I am seeing too. Avatar. I really just I, I just want to yeah. go into a theater and sit down and watch the pretty blue people swim around for three hours and just marvel at the the what CGI. It's, That's it's, just kind of what I trailer for this what right before horrible. this movie. What if it's like, what if the story yeah. is insulting and it hates you? Well, I, oh, you know, I, hate, uh, I don't. It seems like it seems like James Cameron really is passionate about Avatar. <laughs> like he really, yeah, seems kind to be. of. What if what if it's horrible? He's about the first one, and it was pretty. What if it's so. horrible? It might be. Yeah, but I mean, if he's passionate and it's mid, that's that's better. Than Already like better. Right <laughs> I mean, it might be horrible, but I guess we'll. I'll accept see. mid. Very well. Um, yeah, it is your I guess it's just... to feel optimism. It's just, um... Let me feel I, something. Let me feel the, something. Feel pain. No. Uh, the point, though, when you look at an image like that, a frame from a $250 million film, is that for $250 million and you're Disney, something's gone wrong. There's something wrong with the way that you do this. Yeah. There's there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's There's something wrong with the process that you use to make films. Well, it seems like they wasted a lot of money on overshooting because they shot so much additional footage that they didn't end up using. I'd also say that Tons they're probably getting a yeah. lot of the people involved massive fat paychecks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's probably the, part of it. 
Frankie, you, you said this was the most expensive Marvel movie. This yet? is the, I believe it's the most expensive standalone Marvel movie. So the Avengers films cost more, <laughs> um, but Thor: Love and Thunder cost more. Man. I think it costs more than No Way Home. Um, and maybe it is like paychecks because I'm pretty sure that uh, for Thor one, um, Chris Hemsworth got paid like five hundred thousand dollars. Now he's getting paid like twenty million dollars per film. You know, or what? Some, I, something in that that realm. I also, I bet Natalie Portman was like, "You better pay me the same as Chris Hemsworth, otherwise you're terrible people, and I won't come onto the film unless we're paid equal and stuff." Well, I mean, Even I don't really she... hold it against actors like negotiating for as much money as they can. Um... Uh, yeah, they, they can, can yeah, negotiate like, for as much, but to say as much as a character who's playing a more prominent role is a bigger draw we for she's well, I have no well, idea. Of course, uh, I wonder that, if she did. I get their suspicion. But that she does. Sure. but here's the thing though: the the way that people get paid for movies is like absolutely not based on. It's based on like perceived box office draw. That's like the main thing that will determine mm -hmm. how much people get paid. So you can have like I'm pretty sure um uh Robert Downey Jr. got paid more than Tom Holland did for Homecoming. And he's in homecoming for like that 10 be, minutes yeah. and Tom Holland's the main. Whereas now, I wonder, Tom Holland's probably going to be negotiating. Yeah. Well, it's just now Tom Holland's going to be, for like his new Spider-Man contract, he's probably going to be getting paid like $20, 30000000 million per, per movie because like just kind of the nature of how um yeah. actors. And I mean, Natalie Portman is like probably one of the highest paid actresses in general because she's got a recognized name and a backlog. Mm -hmm. She's Academy Award winner, I believe. Maybe, maybe that's how people, like for me though, Christian I, Bale I probably got Jane, paid a shit ton the of character money. Jane is not a draw or Natalie Portman. Oh, sure, Jane might not be a draw, but I think yeah. I think it would be safe to say that Natalie Portman was a draw. And the film is making a lot of money. It's like the fifth highest uh, opening for a Marvel movie, I Yay. believe. I think it's the, it's the highest for Thor. It's already made $300 million. It's made more than Lightyear has in a weekend. Um, I wonder what's going on at Pixar if they're like, if it's not a great time over there. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'd be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like oh, Taika Waititi he probably doesn't have too much influence about who gets paid. Um, I it's probably a, a producer decision, yeah, not a. Producers. I don't know if it's a director yeah. decision. I, I guess it's just. Um, I think the the broader observation is not anything specific to do with actors or anything. It is the allocation of resources where like more money is getting paid to actors and and the the people who are more visibly involved in the project you need more visual effects work, but you have less money to spend on it or less time. I think time is the biggest explanation. Like if Dr. Strange is doing reshoots in March and it comes out in May, that means you got like two weeks, two months to, to like yeah, turn around yeah. visual effects work. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if like the process is, I, I saw a tweet. There was people posting on Reddit. So obviously, you know, take it, uh, like, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But it was like people who worked in the industry talking about how working for Marvel on visual effects is like a really unpleasant experience because Marvel can't make up their minds on what they want. So like they'll have teams make multiple revisions of things or they need things to look a certain way to show to producers, even though in the pipeline, it's not like, that's just not how the process works. It's like you've got corporate politics and things in the background. Meanwhile, these poor visual effects artists are just trying to get their work done with like no time to do it and insane expectations and constantly having their mind change. I can believe that, that it's it's well, really not fun to work on these films. Funny you say that, because that link is getting around a little bit where it's a clip of Taika oh, yep, yep. and Tessa Thompson <laughs> making fun of the special effects in Thor Love and Thunder, which everybody's interpreting as... Look at this um, work people have fucking sweat blood and tears over that's not good. It's like, ooh, yeah. careful, guys. This is well, yeah, just good. like, does this look real? It's like, someone made that, man. Like, <laughs> they probably did their work. best with the time that probably they under budget With the time, time they had. It's awkward. Yeah. 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 You, know, you know, as a director, that you um, can do stuff to help it, help the visual effects <laughs> artists do better, right? Like, like plan better on the day. Give maybe, you and maybe if you put tracking markers on Natalie Portman's face when she was supposed to have a helmet, you know. And you know what? Like if, if Marvel didn't give you the time, and there's nothing you could have done, maybe just don't besmirch the people who worked on your project. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, what um, would your film be without that's CGI? Why it's so joke. We're all able to like have a complete separation. This is a product put out to, for you sale that we're it, judging. Yeah. But this is the guy who organized the entire thing, making fun of it. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I figured you what's would also funny about this? Like, go for it. This CG effect 
technically wasn't even needed. They didn't need to do this no, to establish no. communication between Thor hole? and Man. like there was the original scene with uh, Thor and Heimdall where it just cuts to Heimdall talking to Thor and then cuts back to Thor talking yeah. to Heimdall. They didn't even need an effect. Yep, Ragnarok mm. did it better. And it was yeah. cheaper. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ragnarok did it better. And cheaper. Oh, I have to make sure that's understood. Let's rename the film say. that. I will say, I, I'm glad that we're finally normalizing. It's not visual effects. It's the it's 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 when it's bad management, bad priorities, um, like poor planning on set that we're actually mm. kind of finally realizing the efforts and the hard work of visual effects artists who work really hard, work very long hours. It's kind of the same problems as exist in the video game industry, where it's like overworked, probably paid all right, but probably should be paid more given the amount of work that they put in. Um, and it's just nice that it's finally being appreciated. It's not the visual effects. It's not. It's not visual effects, and it's not the visual effects artists. It is the industry. There's a problem with the industry yeah. and how it makes movies, and unfortunately, it's been rewarded by us audiences by making Marvel films that are made in this way, the most successful films consistently, like every year, and the most successful TV shows. Yeah. Maybe to yeah. steal, man, that just to reference that movie again, the Indian one, uh, with a 72 uh, million right. yeah. uh, budget. R, 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 like the letters, R, R, R. You have like this kind of CGI in there. Like, just look at this. This is what you can do when you have time oh, to damn. work. Yeah. Uh, that's impressive as hell. Yeah. And it's is like, that that Indian film that I saw on Netflix? Yeah. I haven't I covered, watched it, but I've seen the ads. I, I've, I've watched it. I covered it on Metal's Forge uh, last week, two weeks ago. I already forgot. It's good. It's worth a uh, watch. I would highly recommend it. It's super R, entertaining. R, R. Yeah. It's one of those over-the-top um, on... Indian films, which is just crazy yeah. action, where they play it with a straight face, and it ends up being hugely entertaining, even though it's all utterly ridiculous. It's, um, it's amazing. Uh, because oh, yeah, the movie see this. The movie shows you that when you have the action scenes, like you, you have like godly powers, those, those main characters. But it makes it very clear from the get-go. Uh, and the action yeah. scenes are like silly and over-the-top. Uh, yeah. I, yeah I, 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 the the visual work just... in that movie is actually pretty darn impressive. I reacted to what, uh, a film that's made by the same kind of um, area. Uh, it's not exactly India. It's one of the north or southern provinces, but it's called Bahubali. It's this epic, um, you know, massive epic war film made, and it has got such ridiculous over-the-top action, but it's done with such a straight face. It is amazing. And and so, yeah, I actually have a video reacting to this stuff. Mm. This stuff. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. So, yeah. People are on the fence. I covered it on Metal's Forge. Go check it out. <laughs> As I said, I guess, yeah, getting back this to is film. as linear as yeah. I can get it in terms of describing the events. <laughs> the floating yeah. head appears. Turns out it is Heimdall's son using Heimdall's power to like contact people and see them whenever you are in the universe sort of thing. He's one of the people that's been ca captured by the, the, by the uh, creature-y box thing that Gore is doing. And so, um, you know, asking for help. And we get um, a great little moment where Thor's gonna go give the kids a bit of a, a bit of a conversation because he can be transported there, like visually, so he can speak to them as though he is actually there, but he's not actually there. He's like a little ghost. Um, mm -hmm. Well, because it's Heimdall's. You've explained it's Heimdall's son. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't quite. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way it works in Ragnarok. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And his his name is it was Astrid, but he changed it to Axel after the singer yeah. in. Yep, that's kind of that's kind of disrespectful to have Heimdall be your dad oh. and he names you Astrid. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, Thor can, even mentions up, that. <laughs> so, of, I, I mean, you can come up with up. whatever. Nick, um, I mean, you can you can have nicknames if you like. Yeah, nicknames, nickname, I guess but like I insisting. What, what I mean is, it's, um, name, it's just something it's, you prefer. Well, it's what I find more interesting is that Thor presents the perspective that he would rather um, uh like use the name um that Heimdall had chosen the strong like that Viking that's kind name. of interesting uh well it's just yeah like I don't I just it's a bit whatever of, right what's it's weird not, to me is I don't know why they enjoyed. put this in the script anyway you just have Thor basically say I'd rather go by the name your father gave you out of respect for like strong Viking name and then it's like yeah but this is the name that uh Axel has chosen and then they go back forth back forth and then Korg is like the name is Axel now listen to him and uh, it's just like, okay, uh, mm -hmm. all right then. 
I don't know. It just seems like it's uh, it's almost like a little road bump. It's just like, why did we even well, do that? Yeah. Well, why is it in the film? It's not a joke. It's just this weird thing. It's like I think it might be supposed to be a now. joke. Is this I, supposed it's, to be it's, a joke? It's probably meant to be a joke. But I, wow. I all think right. that's the only really reason they'd it. spend all this time and effort to really let yeah. us know that he doesn't want to be called Astrid. He wants to be called Axel. Why did they? Why did they cut? Why did they include this over two hours of? Um, some of the cut footage <laughs> is so much mm. better. Um, the Thor gets him with the kids in the little cage, and yet again, we are faced with an opportunity here. What is he going to say to these children? What's going to happen in this scene? It's Thor, leader of Asgard. Like, come on, buddy, you can do it. So he says, uh. How's it going, kids? And then they say, We're in a cage <laughs> with spikes. And he goes, uh. Right, yeah, not good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they go, after a little pause, are you going to do something? And he goes, well, no, not right now. I'm just like a vision ghost. See? And then he goes with his hands through. You should be able to guess from the way I'm describing this. He's not pushing the conversation. The kids are. Yep. And then they say, what's going to happen to us? And he goes, can't tell. It's a bad situation. But if you die, you get to go to Valhalla. Because you're all those guardians. And do you know what and they say some... to that? Oh my god, just go away. Go away. Mm. And some of the other ones point out that they're not actually as guardians. They're like from other planets and stuff. But well, that's a different but scene. But also, why, why would you tell them no, that? That's, um, that's a different scene. That's that's sorry about that. We're not talking about that. I thought it was, seems to be I thought it was treasured, the same one. put in a fucking chest and addressed when we get there, because that's a banger of a scene. <laughs> you don't want to mention the thing, do you, Molly? No. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it, it, they tell him to go away, and then he's like, don't worry, I'm putting together a team. It's like, ah, oh, like in Ragnarok when he says that, and then he goes, yeah. uh, my, my ex is a part of it, which I, I, I can explain that, but I, I won't explain it right now. Like, mm. your priorities are clearly in order, uh, Thor. Mm -hmm. Again, what are you food. telling me about him as a character? That Jane is all he's fucking thinking about when he's Jane trying is to on tell his these children mind while he's trying to, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> reassure these children in mortal danger. Yeah, I, this this conversation has actually really helped me out. I think the thing that Thor has been robbed of is his confidence. Um, I don't a feel lot of like things. We've priorities for one. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, but like the, I, I agree, but the thing that's like present scene to scene to scene to scene that makes the jokes feel mean spirited rather than like fun is um, before we would see like lol, Thor made a mistake and then he just gets up and brushes himself off and goes, ah, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. Um, well, that's yeah, what heroes do, right? When yeah, he's exactly. like, he brushes it off and then jumps back into action. This it's really um, subtle. To, to make mistakes and then just charge ahead anyway, like unrelenting and undeterred. There's something yeah, that was in this, he's like, oh, he would, he would, um, you know, he'd hit himself in the face and they'd go, oh, oops, oh, no, did anyone see that? Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> and then he'd piss himself. He'd piss everyone. Just, 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 just did anybody see that? And he's looking around, just looking around just to make sure. Well, he, he's just kind of like the Jimmy Fallon thing, right? Like, nervously laughing and looking around <laughs> to make sure that everybody else is laughing. Uh, but it gets worse. Um, they then do, like, a wide shot of where the kids are heading, and they all start panicking, and they all start heading toward him, asking him for help, and he just says, get me out of here, and then they portal him out. Man. Mm. Awful. <laughs> just a fucking oh. awful scene. I hate it. Um, but isn't that funny? I guess it was supposed to be funny. So, when he comes back, we then restart the conversation we were kind of having with these characters earlier. Like, yeah. Shadow Realm, that's that's where they're even, at. And then... Where color fears to tread, um, even though there's color. Like, it, like they're not there hey, yet. Hey, you can go to places you're afraid of. And also, I, I mean, it's not a big deal, but, like, the idea that there's a place where there's no color when color is just, like subjective like the color spectrum of human beings compared to like other animals or it creatures is, that is very low down on my list of complaints oh of course like, i mean i'm just saying it's like it's not a big deal at all <laughs> i'm just saying it's kind of funny i'm fine with her being a shadow i'll, I'll accept the like, shadow magic, realm right you know yeah it's yeah. a magical this, shadow wow. realm but then we 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 find out it's like in the center of the universe Hey, you're missing loads of things. Well, hang on. So... The Shadow Realm <laughs> isn't in the center of the universe. No. No, it's not. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't know where you're so... going, Fringy. Calm down. So, <laughs> yeah. Got... We're in the... Calm down. He says they are in the Shadow Realm, and Valkyrie's comment regarding this is, wait, if he's going to the Shadow Realm, isn't that where he'll be the strongest? And this 
is like a pet peeve. I'm so fucking infuriated that she's not listening to him. They are in the Shadow Realm, is what he said. And then she says, if they're going to the Shadow Realm, won't he be strongest <laughs> there? I'd just be like, going in there. They are there. They have made it they, there. They are there. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. That's what Thor said anyway. Thor said they're like, yeah, in well, the Shadow Realm. Obviously Valkyrie misheard it, or they just fucking don't care. I don't know. This is what I meant uh, when we were well, starting out by talking about in the, uh... There's pieces of dialogue that just don't match, and it feels like they're cut from different things being happening. I don't even know. Well, I mean, as we saw though in that in that clip, apparently, like the scene was cut with with certain lines of dialogue that were removed. But wasn't Tessa the, Thompson was explaining that in her the main reaction. One, it oh, well, she actually looked out for if that happened in the in the real one. Yeah, um, I was actually really invested in finding out because it was such a clunky edit that I was like, no way is this in the film? No, 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 no. So there's a part in the in the video that we're talking about where um they're making fun of the CGI where um. Because I remember I saw it in the clip where, like, she kind of, like, she blinks, but it's, it's like, a weird blink. It's, like, kind of almost shock. Like, it's a little bit of a recoil kind of thing. And she said that the reason why was because, like, the scene was cut differently. Like, it, it played out differently in that scene. But they changed it in the editing room, and, and Taika didn't notice that. That kind of looked weird. So, like, I can totally believe that there were, like, lines of diet. Like, that the, the scene this was chopped, chopped up in such yeah. a way that there were parts that were really important that were omitted, or that they didn't fit in anymore because of the way that the scene was cut together. I can believe that. Um, from her saying well, that... Well, if that's the case... Sorry, sorry, yeah, but if that's the case, it just shows how careless Taika has become as director, because that should be things that he is on top of. Supposed well, to be, yeah. 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 So the statement, he's going to the Shadow Realm, isn't that where he'll be the strongest? The response to that is, you're right, it could be a trap. We can't just march in there. It could endanger the children. We must raise an army. <laughs> Wait, or, no. do something, or do something yeah. clever, God forbid. Kind of a just, non sequitur, really. I just, I just, a lot of that is just like, wow. So it could be a trap. It's like, no, it is a trap. There's, there's nothing else to that. What do you think? He's taking the kids there because he's got a plan? Like, what... What about, like, he we just... know his motivation fully. Like, uh, we've seen what he's been doing. He's capturing the children and taking them to the Shadow Realm, presumably to feast on them. Where all he because is he's stronger. trying to get you to go there. He clearly wanted Stormbreaker. Yeah. Well, if you acknowledge that he'd be stronger in the Shadow Realm, and he's he's taking them to the Shadow Realm, just put two and two together. He wants you to come and save them, where he can fight you yeah. in the Shadow Realm where he's stronger. You got that. And then it's like, we can't just march in there. It'll endanger the children. It's like... Well, then by that logic, whatever you do with your approach to that place, it'll endanger the children, right? Would Mark the children be in less like, danger if, if you, you don't, don't even go? go? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. And then we must raise an army. It's like, wouldn't marching in there with an army <laughs> like, be just as dangerous? Or... Yeah, it doesn't just, make a difference. It has nothing to do with anything. Like, it, yeah, it would be dangerous comments. to go there. Let's go there with more people. <laughs> like, but like, this, that's not even the <laughs> fucking, this scene. This, this scene's almost fascinating to study as though, because like this was made by people. So he says all of that. <laughs> Which I'm having Allegedly. trouble with, like I said. And could, then... I, could I just interject with a because it's related to their planning of how they could try and um, especially the children because it's in relation to what resources they have available to try and do it. And I'm wondering how precise is Stormbreaker's very, um, very precise exactly when he teleports a Stormbreaker, he can choose to go right in the middle of a battle directly where he wants. And so, to me, if they were just wanting to get kids. One of the things they should address is like, can't Thor just literally teleport right to the children and grab so, them and teleport straight out? We're, we're getting to, we're almost at my con wanting to bring that up as a conversation mechanically because we just need a couple okay. more references. We've almost got them. So you got, uh, they say all of that nonsense that doesn't really line up with anything and nobody challenges any of it. And then Jane says, if it's color we need, then let's bring the rainbow and flies out of the room. Mm -hmm. God damn, that is so amazing. I don't have any like like I've I've been fascinated by this line. As you guys have known, I've asked you many times. I've rewatched the scene many times. I don't understand it. What is she doing? What is she doing? Yeah. Yes. If it's color, she can't need, summon the Bifrost. Unless, <laughs> yeah. So all she can do is fly, and yeah. it sounds yeah, like the... from what she's saying, like if it's color we need, then let's bring the rainbow to the shadow realm, presumably. So she's just an incredible moron. She has no idea yeah. that jumping out of the room and flying away with Mjolnir isn't even close to... Like, let me start crawling, and I should make it to Mars. It's like, what? I don't even... Uh, just, just to remind everybody, because I actually did make this mistake yesterday on Forge. Like, 
the the Stormbreaker can summon the Bifrost like on its own, but yeah, yeah. Mjolnir never could. Mjolnir Heimdall can't. needed to to bring you, so Mjolnir can't. Where is she going? She's just flying up, and she doesn't like, know where the Shadow Realm is. And why would she want to go yeah, there on no. her own? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Before they even discuss what their plan is, before they even know, like it's so yeah. it's just, so weird. She's but just then... gonna fly across the galaxy in order to get yeah. To and, and, the... and then they start talking about like, oh, is that a catchphrase she's got? And yeah, she's a little cringe with her catchphrase. Like, she yeah. keeps writing yeah. catchphrases. And then she lands back down and says, "Yep, jump the gun." Like, what yeah. does that mean? <laughs> what like what she's, happened? He's acknowledging that yeah, I probably shouldn't have ran off there because I couldn't literally do anything. So that was just because you wanted to have a shitty catchphrase and then have a little joke about it. Yeah. It really is shitty. One of those baffling uh, moments, and this whole scene is so stitched together insanely. Like I just like it's like ugh, it's hard to watch. What's happening? Was that the same scene where they uh, showed the? Uh, footage off, and it was like cut. It, it, it cut off Thor's sentence or yeah. something. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> that was in one of the clips. Apparently, like Jay was saying, that in the movie, that's not the same. Movie. No, the movie did. No, they, they played. I was just wondering if it was here. Yeah, I imagine the same... there was a shit ton of reels for this. They had, they probably had all kinds of stuff, and they just picked mm -hmm. some random shit and put it together. But yeah, uh, really hard to. And then, and then uh, he lands back down. She says that. But we just immediately go to, um, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it. We're thinking what? Wait, what are we thinking? Everyone says the word thinking, and that's funny. They come up with the idea at the same time. Thor and uh, Valkyrie. Omnipotent city. Yeah. And all the audience Obviously. is like, huh? It's like, oh, you don't recognize Omnipotent city? Book of Vishanti? Uh, mm. Eternity? None of these things mean anything to you? Oh, well, because they didn't exist before uh, these We movies. made them up. So. <laughs> not only did they not exist, we're gonna say that they exist, and we're gonna say that characters knew they existed. Yes. So, um, the these things have extensive history. Mm. Omnipotent City is a city populated almost exclusively, I think exclusively, except soldiers, by gods. Just yep. all gods. Including, but not limited to, Zeus, Ra, uh... Has a a dumpling Cartel, god, I think, is one of the ones he mentions. There's a whole like bunch a little of Gormenganders there. God. Yeah. Um, All the gods you would recognize, and even more. They're just... They're just all real and hang out at this city. Yeah. Yeah, all the gods. Uh, did they have any perspective on Thanos, or were they just, like, no. utterly indifferent to that? I mean, Pretty technically, amazing. they're a form of life. They should have been all... Half of them well, should have been killed with a snap you would well. think that, right? Yeah. But I guess they just didn't care and don't really. And also, just again, so like Zeus is real and just hanging out in like this city there. Zeus, the Greek god Zeus. Yep. yep. How invested is he in the affairs of Earth? Presumably a lot, but you I guess. You would think not. that it would be a lot considering this is Zeus, but uh, well, I guess not. Well, as we're going to find out who Zeus well, is. Well, yeah, because the reason why <laughs> yeah. I'm using these names is because they're the ones that even mentions as well, and he says we're going to make a team, and it's like, because he considers this a dire situation, trying to get the kids back from the Shadow Realm in which Gore has taken them, so we need real good help. That's why we're invoking the gods. And it's like, oh, man, man if only you had not, some other connections. Not think I wonder if there were any other need. really dire situations maybe. that you've dealt with throughout your yeah. illustrious career, Thor, like um, that time when Earth was being invaded by the Chitauri, or that time when Earth was going to be destroyed by the Convergence, or that time when a giant evil, when an evil robot was going to destroy the Earth, or that time or when just Hell the Greek was going financial to destroy crisis, Asgard. Be <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I don't know, man, like... Why did you never ask for their help, or alternatively request, like, you know, refer the Avengers or other heroes to them to get help? Yep. Yeah. Or that, or Thanos. I forgot about that one. Yeah, like the the one that ended Half Life in the universe. Seems like the the, the most cut and dry, right? Because like, yeah, you might you might be able to say, oh, like what Thor? Why didn't you ask these guys when like the Chitauri were invading Earth? And Thor might. Wait. Well, that would have been completely pointless. The, Even the gods, though they, they, do not, the they do not care about the dealings of Earth anymore, they would not help. Yeah. Right? Uh, well. I don't know. You, 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 it seems easier to dismiss with some kind of bullshit that only half excuses it, right? There is no excusing Thanos. It's like, hey, no. if you don't help, half of you will die. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he went to the place to get the hammer, but he didn't go to Omnipotent City to go talk to Zeus and let them know what was going on. Honestly, mm -hmm. if there, you would almost assume that they'd probably have some of the Infinity Stones there, to be honest. like I think that would yeah. be a fair assumption, but yeah, they all end up true. Earth mm -hmm. for some reason. Like, four out of six of them, I think. Mm -hmm. And as someone in the yeah. Discord had just said, don't even fucking think about how the TVA enforces all this shit. <laughs> 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 what do the TVA do if, like, Zeus is like, you know what, I'm gonna have banana bread today. It's like, nope. No, no, no. Have, they, have an orgy. Yeah. Their devices will just work. They, they'll oh, freeze them in time. melted. <laughs> they'll just be Freedom able to freeze them in Zeus. time. And, you know, th those time bombs, that will wipe out gods as well, because yeah. the TVA just... Uh, there. Well, the TVA yeah. are the most powerful entity in the MCU. They have to be. <laughs> oh. Uh, they God then damn. say, all right, then, that's the plan. Yeah. We're going to Omnipotent City. And it's like, um, we can't go there with Stormbreaker because Stormbreaker is janky. And the only just... reason they give for this is uh, that there's uh, a, like a love triangle happening with the hammers. Fucking insanity, dude. I just can't believe that's happened. It's and wild, then they it? say, we it, can't. It's... Archer crap. We can't use Valkyrie's horse because that horse is not big enough to take four people at once. Yeah. I can think and of a solution to that. <laughs> yeah, there's no, a way no, to do that. No solution exists. Is no it really solution not? possibly exists. And that's another point. It probably is okay to take four people on it. Honestly, it's a mythical, crazy magic being. Uh, it, yeah. You could probably get away with the four of them, actually. So it's probably it's like, still going to be faster going one stakes. by one, I guess. So, was, just do was, one um, by one, maybe? I was, I was gone for a couple of minutes there, by the way. Did anyone um, mention how dumb um, Omnipotent City is as a name? We did extensively yesterday. I don't know if we did today. Mm, but it is really... Tree, I, I, of it. <laughs> I, it's not what I'd call a city. I, comics uh, are very shit. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. No Chat, no cover your ears. No Chat, one cover one your ears. With that. <laughs> no Madness. That is true. Comic fans will happily tell you that lots of the runs are shit. But if they, if you, they're like, actually, lots this thing of is the really runs are shit. Is that what you just said? Lots, lots, lots of the runs, runs are shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. If you, if, if uh, they're like talking about a comic run they like, and they're like, it's good in the movie because it's in the comic, and you're like, that sounds shit though. They're like, but it's in the comic. Uh, that's when they get mad. They don't get mad when you just say that some of the comics are shit. Because they agree. Anyway, um, the whole Stormbreaker is not working properly, the horse isn't enough. What's the plan? Well, luckily, Jane Foster is here, and she <laughs> can answer the question. She says, Stormbreaker just needs a conduit, anything capable of space travel. It has the power to get us there, it just needs a focus. A ship could harness it. Does any of that mm -hmm. make any sense to anybody? No, nope. this is this is no. like that Sounds is like one has has mumbo jumbo. Is what that is. <laughs> you made all definitely one of those. Just... Well, if you say so, kind of things. Yeah. I mean, Thor has been using Stormbreaker Bifrost all the time, and he never needed a conduit. And nope. yeah, that yeah but that was before Stormbreaker was jealous. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, it's just arbitrary crap in the plot that they're injecting for because reasons. Because so funny, I don't think this funny. is because of the plot. I think this is because they want the cool visual of the boat. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is, it is definitely that. That's all um, it is. Because the question of why can't we go to the uh, Shadow Realm directly with, with uh, Stormbreaker is like, well, we're going to get there. This is like components, all right? So cause we're not going to Shadow Realm first. That would be crazy. That'll get the kids killed. We have to go to God City first. But yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe this line. Just that anything that's capable of space travel can act as a conduit for Stormbreaker. Like, uh, like if you what does it put even Stormbreaker mean? On the cable like, of space travel. What does that mean? Well, yeah, because technically, I don't know. Like, you could throw a rock into the air yeah. fast enough, and it could fly <laughs> through space. Like, it's yeah. capable of traveling. I mean, everything travels through. Wow, if we want to be super duper, I, I think that's fair to say. Like, I don't know what she means by capable of space travel, because oh, the traveling man. part is surely done by Stormbreaker. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of Stormbreaker. Um, what do you mean? Yeah. Do, do you mean like a, we need something to encase us to keep us safe would make more sense but to me? But... The ship has mm -hmm. no means of protecting them from the vacuum. Nope, but that doesn't matter. We don't talk about that. Well, you, can, you can at the very least presume that there's like some magical properties to the Bifrost yeah. like mechanism that protects you from space. 
Um, there, there is a rule that you could make to try and justify it, but the problem is that never be consistent with that rule in later things. And you could say something like, uh, if you are moving in a certain direction fast enough, that causes the Bifrost to be directed in that same direction. But that means the Bifrost could never be used to go to any other location when you're moving fast enough. And it is also contradictory because if you're on a planet, you're technically moving through space at a really fast rate anyway. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so... Everything is in yeah, space. Just, <laughs> we're, all, we're all moving through space. Yeah, so... Um, so well, and then yeah. I just wanted to go for the last line being that it has the power to get us there. It just needs focus. A ship can harness it. Like, and it's like, when you say a ship, accurate. are you actually talking about a ship? Just like, like a, a literal boat? fucking little dinky like, boat would be enough? Yeah. Well, it is. And it is. And it's, <laughs> it's baffling. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, yeah. Mm. Doesn't Cork say yeah. it's like, it's like an engine? Yeah, and then she's like, yeah, like an engine. As if it makes sense. <laughs> that <can make> sense. <laughs> because the engine doesn't tell me where to go which is an interesting uh, I, mm, whatever I like that uh, the ship creates artificial gravity because of like it's a ship in the middle of space but they can like stand on it I guess it's just magic 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 it's an Asgardian ship it's got magic. like yeah, but, Asgardian but, like, magic it's just, it's just a regular boat like it's a little rowboat that they go on tours with uh, no, 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 no 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 it's a flying fun. boat I could fly it's a flying Apparently boat it goes that they're using as a it yeah. flies it protects you from the vacuum and it has gravity uh right. and breathable Oxygen, yeah, it, I guess it, it, it's space ready. Is that was a requirement? So I guess yeah. yeah, that's just that. You know, space is really cold. Uh, at that's least cold. most of it is. <laughs> Not with his guardian magic and snacks. No. Nope. Um. So then we get another incredible scene because we've had so many dramatic scenes that it's time for a funny. I would say. Uh, oh. So Thor's like just just hanging around. He notices that Mjolnir is just hanging around, and he he walks up to him and goes, "Huh, you moved on pretty quick, didn't you? You are some piece Dude, of work." It's fucking hammer like what mm -hmm. the f i don't know that's pretty fucking hilarious to me wow good comedy um, and then uh jane pops up and he's like oh uh sorry sorry i've been acting weird i'm just trying to you know figure out who i am basically and then i saw you dressed as me so again it's just like, what are we doing what i don't even it's like there's like an acknowledgement in yeah. universe that she's literally wearing his clothing almost like his style which is Essentially true. We've got no other reason to think otherwise. She takes like, his name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, and nobody's talking about yeah. it in universe. Right. People, like, keep, people keep pretending this isn't weird because it happened in a comic. <laughs> Wait, movie Bob gave this an eight out of ten. He did. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> wow, <laughs> are you just me? Bob, so. <laughs> I, I just can't. I still don't um, believe it. Yeah, so he's, just, he's like uh, a, yeah. I, Sorry, I just wanted to agree with Jay. Yeah, it is weird. Like, like the fact that they're calling for a lot of people who have been calling out is like, this is just dumb. Why does she find her own name or just? To, yeah, it's like a it's lot because of, Marvel a lot, wanted. Yeah, a lot of Marvel the, comics. A lot of people <laughs> okay. keep saying like, oh, she doesn't want to be called Lady Thor because she doesn't want to be defined in relation to Thor. She's called herself Thor, and she's don't call she me Mighty Thor. Thor. Like, we'll get there. <laughs> Will I ever say? <laughs> like, <laughs> weird and dumb. True. So he, he, yeah. he, the way that he's saying this implies that she needs to explain to him how this happened. And that's this scene. So she says, well, I heard Mjolnir call to me and then I came here and now I'm Thor. And then he just, he's like, well, it looks good on you. You know, it works. And she's like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, see you later. But yeah. She leaves, and mm -hmm. then Stormbreaker slides onto yeah. screen, and he's like, what, what? We were just talking. Yeah. And it's like, so that whole scene was just the joke. It wasn't any new information. It wasn't actually anything meaningful between these two characters. It was just well, for the joke. Up. Again. I thought that Stormbreaker was jealous of Mjolnir, not Lady Thor. Um, well, if you Is remember, it both of them now? Sorry, the other yeah, thing that he did was say these tests if he was worthy with Mjolnir, so yeah. I think tries to pick up the, the angle hammer. is that he's still obsessed with Mjolnir, and Stormbreaker's upset about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, that makes sense now that you've explained it to me. Hammer love now, triangle drama that we can't be without. As I have said many a time, doing comedy, 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 even when kids are kidnapped, people are dying. Comedy, 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 comedy. When kids need to be reassured that they're gonna live. Comedy, 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 comedy. It's like, mm -hmm. all right. So what's next then? It's like comedy. It's like, well, 
no. We, we, we find out that Jane is still absolutely dying from cancer and she flashes back to memories of her mother's last words before she died of cancer, telling her to fight on, to never give up, and that even though she is dying, that she will continue the fight. I hope you caught all that, because it's time for comedy. That's Woo! about 25 seconds, I think. Um, okay. Um, just to my observations, I don't know much about cancer. Is it like... Can you inherit it? Is it a genetic? It can be a genetic disorder. That you, yeah, disorder it's, yeah, it's it's like a royal title. Disorder. When you die, you. <laughs> I, I, I think you can genuinely. I don't. I'm. I'm not one hundred percent. I think you can inherit a disposition for it. I think I, so. I think Jay's right. You don't inherit the cancer, but there can be genetic aspects of okay. your your family where you're more likely to get cancer. Yeah, I see. I see. Um. This scene is so whiplashy to me. I was so surprised. I yeah. never thought we were ever going to get anywhere near doing this. It, it, we're going comedy, comedy, hardcore, and then just you know, the hospital noises, the beeping, and then just camera panning around your mum saying, like, you know, don't worry, when I'm gone, you're not going to be alone. You need to, you know, never give up fighting. It's just like, what the f***? I, okay, yeah, I guess. Uh, I feel like... This should have been uh, built up too. This should. This is, this is a really important scene for like. This is this yeah. is a core characteristic for Jane that we have never yeah. seen before in all of her screen time on the MCU. Damn. And and then it's also uh... just re revealing something very confusing because it was for me, uh, especially like lots of people who are barely paying attention to this thing, which I wouldn't even blame them. Jane is still mm. dying from cancer. Like, wait, I thought hmm. I thought she How was. How can that four. be possible? Like, so how does that work? And well, I guess we'll wait a little before getting more on that. But um, okay. And uh, yeah, the, we go back to telling jokes in a, in just under that like allotted amount of time for you to feel sad. Uh, and don't be disappointed if you might watch this scene about the backstory stuff and think that it'll be revisited later and explored, and we'll learn about the character because of it. Um, hmm you're not really invested in that as a concept a yeah, and, then we, and then we and then we cut back and she breaks the sink with a hammer for some reason um not clear on that i guess it's just like I'm he's, frustrated, he's angry frustrated he's angry. Mad, she's angry dying or something all right that's all i got uh she hates a proposal sinks. uh jokes are generated from the fact that she does that yeah yeah because when oh, she opens yeah, the door, funny. she's like, I'm fine. And she's like, really? The sink doesn't look fine. And then she's like, <laughs> like oh, I feel like just these are uh. just, this is like a sitcom, like bad sitcoms where you have laugh tracks popping in every second to remind you that you need to laugh. And that was a joke. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Valkyrie catches this happening. And so she's like, you know, you they clearly having issues, and then she's like, okay, Valkyrie, do you think I should come on this mission? Like, yeah, you're a Thor, of course you should come. Which, uh, feels like I'm missing a lot of information at this point in the story, you know? Like, if she asked me, should I be coming on this mission, I'd be like, well, I don't know. What is your, what is the nature of your situation? You, like, are simultaneously a dying cancer patient, but also Thor. Look, if, if if I didn't translate it well enough, there's like a visual where she drops the hammer and she looks like she does like in the hospital, but you know, like bags under her eyes sort of thing, like worse than what we, we last saw her. As if to imply like, yeah, it's, it's it's progressing. And then she picks the hammer back up and she looks like Thor again. Okay. So hmm. from that, would you say, would you say she's battle ready? It's like, I don't know. I don't even know what I that don't means. know what she is. Yeah. But uh, Valkyrie doesn't seem to give a shit. She's just like, yeah, come with us. Yeah. Okay? He just accepts, like, oh, yeah, you're a Thor now. You come with us. Your friend. Oh. Uh, okay. And then she says, and you're a Viking now, so if you die, uh, and you die in battle, you get to go to Valhalla. Like, oh. Sure, I'll never come Yay. up again. Just, uh, I didn't even know that's how that works. She's a Viking now. Uh, all right? Yeah, because... Hmm... And Valkyrie yeah. says, I miss fighting. I miss my sisters. That, that's why you should come. Also, just kind of pet peeve. The Asgardians, they're not really Vikings. Wow, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're not. I mean, racisms right there. 
Well, they, they influenced the Vikings. That's the they did they the did. law. They 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 right. were there when the Vikings were there. They weren't Vikings themselves. Yeah, and now they're just calling themselves Vikings. It's like when did that start? Like Flames. it's it, it sort of sneaks up on you because the first character is there is I forgot her name like Jane's friend at the beginning of the film. It's like I could believe that she would call Thor space Viking. That makes sense to me. Right. Mm-hmm. It seems like a perfectly reasonable thing for a person on Earth. But not to, Valkyrie. Yeah. But not them themselves, right? They are not Vikings. But, like, from the cultural perspective of a person who lives on modern-day Earth, yeah, they're, they, they're, they're connected to the Vikings. Whereas for Asgardians, the Vikings are, like, these people they hung out with 2,000 years ago. You know, it's no weirder than them calling themselves, like, fucking uh, space... Who was anyone else that the Asgardians have hung out with? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. The Frost Giants? <laughs> well. I forget guys, what they, they were called, but yeah. You guys ready for another Thor speech? I would love oh. to hear another Thor speech. They've been great so far. Only if it's funny. So, they're about to leave on their quest to save the children. So it seems like an easy win here. Tim's speeches go, and he says, My fellow Asgardians, we shall travel at the speed of Odin's ravens, and we shall bring back the children, and we shall feast. And there's a pause, and he goes, Not not on the children. We don't we don't do that anymore. Dark times. Shameful so, times. Okay, we so, should go. So are we are we implying that Thor ate children? I don't think that's an implication. As old as he fact. is, that that's, is that's, yeah. they, they, that's just <laughs> that's that's Hey, it That's could be interpreted that other Asgardians ate children and not Thor. When he said we? He yeah, said he we. Said we. Yeah. He's, re- he's referring to the Asgardians as a people. Yeah, no, he's yeah, been alive for a while. Is... Yeah, he ate ch- Thor ate children. But yeah, Mul- just, just, just in case anyone didn't get it, this really funny undercutting of his rousing speech is the, the reality that the Asgardians devoured children at some point in their history. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking, like, why? I know for a joke, but, like, seriously, that's funny. the joke you decided to go with? Funny. I mean, funny. Oh, funny, oh my goodness. Funny. And again, like, that the third time that his attempt to just rouse up any kind of good feeling has been completely ruined yeah. by him being an idiot? Well, can I bring up the person laughing in the cinema now? Because I think this is the perfect time to mention that. Oh, you've got to wait until it happens in the... But, but, like, this is the perfect <laughs> thing to go. I wonder why they laughed at that moment, given this moment. Well, Jay, it does sound like Jay really needs to get it off his chest. Um, well, Jay, I'll allow it. In the cinema, someone just op- openly laughed. I think multiple people laughed when, uh, slightly later on in the film, Jane just says the words, I have cancer. I mean, there's a better way to set that up, uh, mm-hmm. uh, being the... I mean, this is, this is why I wanted to wait until later. Thor basically tells her he's, he's in love with her, still, and that they, they should make a go of it. They should, they should get together, they should do it. And she cuts him off almost in his passionate expression of his feelings to say, I have cancer. And he, like, stops. It's like, what? And there are people in the audience who laugh at that, because they are so broken on their emotional scales, or rather their reaction scales, they don't even know what's supposed to be funny anymore. Yeah. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure I can guarantee that wasn't supposed to be funny myself. I don't even know anymore. I have no clue. And yeah, with this movie, sure. I have no clue. Jay's version was funnier? That's the point. I don't think it's supposed to be funny. The scene... Isn't no, then like funny. Well, my version of the telling of the, the person laughing was funny. I, no, no, no. The I joke isn't supposed to be funny. That's the point. Is that people laughing no, at it like, when they, it's, it's funny that someone laughed at it, but it's not. I, I don't. I don't think you would sound that Jane have, saying she had cancer was. I don't think anyone. Would I think there are contexts where that could be funny though. Probably, but like I don't think that and would the be Liam the Neeson sketch question. comes to mind. The one we were well, What if it, what if this is like uh, a met? What if this was a meta commentary by Natalie Portman referencing that she is a feminist? What? I have cancer. <laughs> like I have, I'm a feminist. I have feminism in me, and that oh, is no. like a cancer. You, you know the old meme that uh, anyway. Never mind. Feminism is cancer. Yeah, uh, it's not a meme. It's just the tone meme. is so fucked, and the degree to which there's no borderline between drama and comedy has happened that I, I does feel like the audience is now trained to the point where they don't even recognize the training, and they're just like. 
uh, I'm recognizing signals for laughing or for drama, and I don't even know what to do anymore. Um, and yeah, it's awkward as fuck when she's like, I have cancer as a reveal to a, a person who loves her. So we would think that's a comedic beat. The only problem is that if Taika Waititi said that it's a comedic beat, I'd be like, oh shit, okay. What can you do? Die. I guess so. So anyway, hmm. uh, a bit more funnies happen. Oh, finally! They arrive at Omnipotent right. City and they start walking down just to get to, I guess, wherever they're going, and they have a little chat. Oh, I think but, of all the things they could chat about. Meaningful things. Can, can I mention something before that? I don't. I, have you said that they just crash into the fucking in the random oh, yeah, garden? I guess that's, yeah, that's worth bringing up. They didn't have any problem entering Omnipotent City, and they crash into that's it. That's good. No one cares. They just crash that's into good. a random garden, just going right in there, and then just leave the ship there. I guess. With well, it's all right if gods. everyone knows that they're here, so it's it's no worry. They're not trying to lay low or anything. I think that's no, fair. No, no. Uh, yeah, so it, it which was, I guess they uh, are. So that's the thing. It's not. I don't even know if it's worth bringing up. So what if, uh, what if then, as they're just walking down, we we get some dialogue, and, and you may be thinking like we could explore something character wise. Uh, we get no. Jane saying, "Hey, so I'm trying to come up with a catchphrase. What, what do you think of this one?" Eat this uh, hammer. And he's like, oh, that's pretty good. And she's like, yeah, I'm workshopping it. And he goes, Mine. Leo Fong has better action lines. He's like, mine is, this ends here and now. And then she's like, oh, that's really good. Hmm. Uh, you know what's not great? The tracking on the helmet in this particular <laughs> shot. <laughs> but continue. You know what's great? Not great is the dialogue in the scene. Well, yeah, well, yeah as true. Paula will continue you know, to explain. It's not great about to get movie. to it. Some, someone that, in chat yeah. said, eat this baby. Uh, <laughs> you get this that, baby. and then it's like, so what will be the next thing to be said now? And then she says, so, you got a girlfriend? Like, oh, okay, and that's what we're doing. Then he goes, oh, no, 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 I'm too busy, lots of work to do, just, you know, no. And she goes, cool, I'm going to check this place out, and she flies away. Flies away? Yeah. That's the, that's the conversation. Um, <sighs> yeah. It is so stilted that I could never blame the actors. It's like this this script is horrendous. You guys couldn't make this work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What would you what, what do you do to make this Much work? It's like Natalie Portman in Star Wars. Once again, she's being <laughs> fucked over. Just walk here and talk about your catchphrase and then fuck off after you ask him for a girlfriend. Good so, job. You dating anyone? No. Bye. Oh. Really happy you wasted my time movie. Thank you. Oh. I can't imagine why they broke up. And then, because she left, Valkyrie can walk up to him and be like, I'm detecting feelings. And he's like, uh, what? For, for Jane? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, like, what did we gain from that whole scene? It's like, yeah, Thor, Thor's got a crush on him. Still, he always has. That's, that's just, that's just what you ever do. Yeah. Alrighty. That is, that is very funny, though. Then we get another gore scene. So, gore's not doing too great, and we're halfway through the movie. <laughs> so let's see what this next gore scene can do. Mm. Um, uh, uh, Axel is telling the kids about what Thor's done, and it makes reference to how uh, Thor made a weapon in the heart of a dying star to decapitate Thanos and save the world. And it's like, all of those things are technically true, but obviously it's uh, connecting pieces of a story in different places to make... A, a satisfying narrative, you could say. Um, what? And, and and it's like, yeah, okay, fine. And, and it's probably a good choice from Axel to make them feel better about how that's the guy that's coming to save us. And then Gore is like, what a neat story. Like, oh, okay. And then he's like, so you guys like decapitation? And he grabs a little tentacle creature. I think he names it as well, right? Uh, Yeah, I forgot the name, though. And then he I fucking the cuts its head off. And all the children scream, and he like tosses the head away, and he's like, "Oh, I thought you liked decapitation." I don't like that he's and, mad, that he's bad to his minions. I don't even know what, what what's happening. Who is this guy now? This is like the third gore. <laughs> this is the yeah. one that's like, I just want to torture children in some way. I don't know. And it's just like, what does this have to do with anything we've learned about you? Why are you doing this? But that part's over now. Next part. 
He you, says, you think you think he, they were trying to do the things like, oh, look, the hypocrisy of you people or something. I'm grasping at straws here. I'm just suggesting. There's plenty you can do, but they, they decided to spend their time here just making Gore an asshole. Yeah, and um, then we leave. And then you got to see where For no you, reason, it seems. Uh, again, like cutting shit together. Um, yeah. You liked it a minute ago as meme potential gold mine. I guess that's what he says about decapitation. Uh, so it's, this the whole scene is so off to me. But then, yeah, so he's like, he's looking at all them screaming, and he goes, you know, I used to know a girl like you. She was brave and smart. She liked to draw. Let me ask you a question about gods. And at this point, I was like, all right, this is your opportunity. Let's <laughs> actually understand what the fuck is happening here. Because it seems like he's about to make a point that could explain what the fuck's going on. He goes, so <laughs> this part's great. So he says, gods are meant to protect you, right? So where are they? And then, and then one of them is like, Thor's going to come for us. And he goes, <laughs> I'm counting on it. No, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Most that, first of all, but you can't say that after what you just said. Yeah. Gods aren't coming to save you. Yes, they are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And Why then, you hate cards again? That's not even the end of the scene because we've still got other problems happening, which is that the writer doesn't trust the audience. He says, I'm counting on it. And so all of us in the audience are like, oh, that's part of his plan, eh? Oh, okay, yeah. No, I could have figured that out myself, especially when the fucking team of heroes have developed that this is a trap. But that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. He then says, uh, "ADR, that's my plan." <laughs> <laughs> His film thinks that you are an idiot, an attractive beam, and they're bringing you some. I couldn't shit. believe it. I was like, "You fucking kidding me?" <laughs> so what was that scene? It was Gore is using the children as a trap. Like we already knew that pretty much. What was all of that? <laughs> like, <what>? They completely <laughs> forgot who this fucking character is. And they tried to involve, like, dialogue that he might say, like, oh, gods are meant to protect you, and yet, where are they? You can't use that if the whole idea is to bait them with the kids, because they mm -hmm. want to save the kids. So now we're all just <laughs> baffled. Like, what the fuck is happening? You Gore forgot to write a question. script. I don't know. Like... <laughs> and that is Gore's scene. <laughs> it feels like yeah, it feels that's like a scene. scene that was improvised by a robot. I, don't... <laughs> I want to give the robot yeah. a little bit more credit. I think the robot yeah, would be like, like, like wait, that doesn't make sense. What the fuck I mean, is the, that? Like, <laughs> AI, like, like Cleverbot. Like, um, yeah, you know, right. one of them ones that doesn't actually remember anything other than the, the immediately previous input. And, and this is the stuff they chose to put in uh, over two other hours of footage that we have no idea what was there. Comment from Does chat. this scene even progress the story? Like, it doesn't actually need to no, be. No, we don't need it. They, exactly. They're worried, it's useless. They're worried you didn't realize it's a bait, but they fucking signpost it several times, so I don't know what what does this serve? Yeah. Anything at all. Or is creepy and evil. But Ooh, look how mean he can be. He's mean to children, and it's like, that's not at all what you said he was. And it's like, he is now. Like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, said what, in chat. What that, if that's how he raised his daughter, is like, just torments her by killing animals in front of her. No, he's corrupted, Shad, okay? That's why you oh, needed to know course, his motivation for corruption. killing gods, because it doesn't yeah. matter at all. Um, Crumpet. Yeah, uh, just from chat. Gore's using them as bait, but doesn't tell Thor where the kids are. <laughs> so he's lucky that Thor figured it out through other means, I guess. Yeah. Fucking weird, man. Whole thing is weird. Um. So well, that's it for that Gore scene. Very good. Then we get a scene that uh, it was only recently that I even like clocked this because scripts are hard to criticize when they all happen so fast. Um. Mm -hmm. They need disguises, because they wouldn't want to be spotted too early before they can make their case the best way possible. Which, you know, it was brought up earlier, but it's just funny that they crash-landed. Right? Disguises. It's odd. Okay. Yeah. Pretty or, odd. Why? because he's retarded, says, why don't we just wrap ourselves up in our own capes? <laughs> it's so like, funny. okay. Um, and then Valkyrie appears. She's holding a bunch of cloaks. She says, these cloaks are from the emotion gods. Each color signifies a different emotion. Okay. This emotion is very, gods. very, this is very useful information. Well, it, very it's, useful. The fact that I I've said it alone should that. put you all in a position of like, what is this? Like, why do I need to know that? What is, what did we get from this? It's like, that's a great question. So, um, Jane says, 
Well, where are the emotion gods? Implying, of course, that shouldn't they be wearing these? And then uh, Valkyrie says, eh, don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> that's Valkyrie! And, yeah, again, you're like, oh, that... Oh, that's a joke! Oh, the, mm. the idea is she killed the emotion gods and took their cloaks, I think. Why would you do that? Or, or beat I them mean, up I, and incapacitate I feel sorry for the emotion gods. I hope she didn't just kill them. And then you're like, wait, why... Why emotion gods? What does that have to do with that's... anything? I assume this was cut content. I assume that there was, like, a scene where the capes changed to colors and it, maybe it was some funny joke or something um and like maybe thor had an awkward moment where the 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 cape turned into a horny color um or something i don't know and then like but that was cut for time and we will all miss out on that content forever aha uh -huh. oh maybe no it's, maybe it's anyway. just for the best that maybe some things should be lost to time yeah 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 then we meet a whole bunch of gods find up Feel like the dumpling god should be mentioned. Dumpling god, yeah. Cutesy Which thing. is just a little dumpling. You god know, of the Krogans, cool. he's sitting on a throne made of scissors. Did you yeah. write god down the, the Krogans? Name? Did you write down the like a tism name? Hmm? The 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 Krogan god has like a tism name. Oh yeah, I don't remember what it is. Ah oh, damn it. <laughs> Speaking of Mass Effect species. <laughs> so um Zeus... a suspicious amount of gods. <laughs> Zeus shows up. And sort of remind yourself, we're on a timer. Um, especially they believe so because the children, you know, stuff like that. And uh, they're like, we need to get his attention and do this now. And then he's like, whoa, 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 we can't interrupt him in the middle of his entrance. He's famous for entrances. Mm -hmm. Right? And um, Thor's like, this guy's amazing. It's Zeus. It's top tier. I base pretty much everything I do after him. He's my biggest inspiration. Which is, uh, yeah. you know, it's kind of the problem they often have with establishing a history about a character or, or showing us um, that someone feels a certain way about them. It's just like, so that means they must have fulfilled some level of XYZ to be seen this way. Thor's been around for over a thousand years. He's familiar enough with Zeus to the point where Zeus is his biggest inspiration. So, what are Zeus's characteristics? Well, all we've got from this film is that he's an egomaniac and a coward. That's about it. Allegedly yeah. a coward. I, mean, I don't even think well, he's alleged. also horny. He's just a coward. He's horny. He's horny. Zeus is horny. Uh, he's he also horny. That's fuck. true. So, yeah, and and it takes about I think thirty seconds of Zeus's opening speech for Thor to lose his faith in him completely as a as a good person. Yep. Even though he was in the Marine Corps opening scene. Yeah. Um, well, look, we need to vu. that character we development. Is, uh, Zeus's opening speech doesn't actually contain anything like particularly damning. It's like, hey guys, totally I'm does. here. And... I don't know what you mean. Wait, what? Totally does. Wait, what's it, what's it contain? What am I missing? So, the, the way it starts is when are we organizing the orgy? And then they're all like unimpressed and uh, annoyed. And then Thor's like, wait, 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 the good stuff's coming. I, 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 the important stuff's definitely on the way. And he says, now let's look at the winner for who sacrificed the most human souls in the name of a god. Oh, I don't remember that bit. And then, oh. uh, and then Thor goes, okay. <laughs> My mind he's... was thinking about orgies. I was, I yeah, yeah, I was uh, still distracted by the orgies. Uh, Thor then says, oh, okay, maybe he's not great. And then I think uh, Korg says, oh no, not good. And it's just like uh, dialogue. <laughs> like, oh. all right, whatever. Fuck it. Yeah. So, so Thor is now like Zeus sucks. <laughs> it's just like okay. Hmm. So, it, uh, 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 what bothers me is like the Greeks didn't really practice human sacrifice too much to the, their pantheon, like according to that, you know. Religion. Look, to my knowledge, if we can just be I mean, more straightforward, they, some... they can they can do whatever they want, and they chose to do this. Like, nah. all right. Uh, have you, Shad, have you considered that what they did is funny? Uh. <laughs> As in strange funny. No, no, like, no it's funny. Very, you laugh, it's funny. Just laugh. Like, haha, ha, funny. Oh, like, I'm supposed to laugh? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so, it just felt out of place for me for the Greek gods promoting, was, but of course they had. I, I don't think they, they actually give all... a shit about their relationship no. to their real life. No, and, and well, I, they're I, I think they're all just gonna pantheons. Just make them dumb and stupid and arrogant. 
That's like, why not? That's just funny because we can compare, contrast them, contrast them, contrast them to Which our heroes are. who are desperately trying to save children while all these fucking gods suck and are already obsessed with their own image and stuff. And it's like, all right. <coughs> so anyway, uh, Valkyrie says, "All right, clearly these gods aren't going to help us, but we can get the thunderbolt. That'll be good enough." Sorry, like, sorry to interrupt. I just realized they had an opportunity. They should have done um, animal sacrifice, which is far more prevalent. And one of the things they sacrificed were goats. And Zeus could have been, all right, we need to sacrifice some more goats. Where are they? And then, because they got goats. Remember the screaming goats? Yeah. It could have been tied in somewhere. You could have tied that in. Yeah. Um, so they need the Thunderbolt. And then they're like, well, well how are we going to get that? And then uh, Valkyrie says, let's just bum rush him when the time is right. Like just yeah. just go, and Valkyrie's it's happening stupid. so fast. It's just like isn't isn't this like a huge place filled with all kinds of the most powerful gods in the yep. And you're just going to attack and take Zeus's stuff. What is happening? Why is this happening? It's a terrible plan. It feels Valkyrie. like this should what be treated doing? in such a way that you guys should be realizing like you could all die, but it's not true that way. It's just bullshit. All of it's bullshit. <laughs> <It's> like, okay. <laughs> um. So they're talking about that, and then Thor says, wait, 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 I still, I want to try and talk to him. And they're like, when? And he's like, when the time is right. And then Zeus says, hey, who's talking over there? Who's talking? And for some reason, Korg says, it's these guys. And, Fucking and points to them. Cabbage. I have no idea why why that happened. He just wants to sabotage That's his own funny. party. That's funny. Uh -huh. Hilarious because Korg, Korg is, is a moron. Isn't that hilarious? Dumb stone. Yeah, because even why. Thor is like, why, are you, dude? Why are you doing that? And it's like, well, yeah, I don't know why. At this point, at this point, watching the movie, Mola, we paused uh, in the cinema, and <laughs> we said, um, <laughs> "It's true, we did." Yeah. Uh, I'll say, okay, so like this was funny. Apparently, like, what I, I think I came up with an example of like what would have to be so stupid that people would actually be taken out like or like the Taika Waititi would think oh people will be taken out with this we can't include it it'd be too stupid and I think the example that I came up with was like okay Thor just stands up and he's like hey Zeus look at this and then he pulls down his pants and then you were like no actually that might fit within the tone of the film yeah it would and like I hate I would it, probably you know, actually like... have laughed at that though <laughs> yeah that would have been funny though <laughs> Watch this, Zeus. <laughs> Look, you Zeus is my asshole. I don't know. Maybe that would work. Uh, hey, Zeus. Look, I'm the I'm the moon god. <laughs> so Thor stands up with the intention of going to talk to Zeus, and he looks back at Valkyrie and and Lady Thor. Valkyrie says, "I'm bashing heads in five minutes," and then Jane says, "Heads will roll." I think she says literally heads will roll. Yeah, and, oh, and then boy. Thor's like, who are you two? And I'm like... Yeah, yeah and that's a yeah. joke, but yeah, it's, it's actually question. more an apt question. It's a very good yeah. question. Why are you guys so ready to murder? What's, so what's, weird. what's going on? They're all so fucking weird. Everyone's so weird. Mm -hmm. As if, like, the... This... There's nothing clever in this movie, and this scene really exemplifies that, how... There's no plan. There's no attempt to sort of use Zeus's um, his interests and his personality. Well, use his ego against him. against him. You know. Yeah. yeah. There, there's any, no any attribute of Zeus. There's there's plenty that have been presented so I mean, far, and none of them are like, oh, we could take advantage of this. We could. Well, yeah, no, Zeus. Discussion. It's just hey, let's Zeus, go yeah. Us. <laughs> yeah, he likes pretty he, ladies. They got two pretty ladies with them. They could have, you know, also used some seems to like pretty men. He he ah, called himself yeah. Thor as well. And you, oh, hang on, this was another quote we made in the cinema, Mola. Um, was uh, like, I don't think Mola's um, here. He, what? Um, where did he go? <laughs> he 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 had to step out for just a moment. Um, oh, I, I didn't I didn't catch that. Yeah, um, but I am um, interested in the story. Well, the, what were you saying, Jay? Was, um, <laughs> so, like, wouldn't it? And this might actually be funny in the comedy film, because mm. if they had, like, you know, they they were like, okay, so Zeus has been very clearly presented as this mega horny guy, um, and they go up to him and they're like, they've got two hot ladies there, they've got the hot guy there, and they're like, you know, they're, they're all trying to flirt with him to get what they want, and you can have Korg there as well, going like, yeah, and I'm here as well, you know, if you're into this kind of thing, uh, giant rock man. That could be mm. fun. Yeah, yeah. And in, in this, Maybe. you have both of these chicks, and they they say we're going to start this big fight here in the worst 
probably possible place that you could want to start a fight in the the like, yeah. city of gods surrounded by all of these super powerful god beings with Zeus right there and all these guards and like what you think you're just going to win the fight you think this is a fight that you can just win how stupid are you yep and, and you can actually name a worse place in the MCU like universe to start a fight this has got to be high on that list. Rags, I, I just noticed just your uh, animated little gif. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Button. Mm -hmm. That's I'm. It's very cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Look in there. It's I figure is appropriate for this uh, movie. We're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, another thing. Like I always thought, Valkyrie was a, a very low tier on the scale of the, of powers, and you could justify. Jane could have the powers of Thor because she's got Mjolnir, but when did Valkyrie suddenly become their equal? I thought she was always supposed to be weaker. But well, because she's an Asgardian, uh, which makes her stronger. But um, stronger than Thor her, yeah, yeah stronger I mean, not than other Asgardians, strong. right? Well, I figure yeah. she's not as strong, right? Yeah, you not as yeah, not be, as much as like, like Thor or anything. I always I, her. I'm sure she's quite a, a very competent warrior and fighter, but she's just not on the same level as Thor, and certainly not all of these. Well, her, the, it's it's not about her fighting prowess would be equivalent, like well, maybe equivalent because she's like good at fighting, but then there's just base strength, and you would presume yeah, base that power. Thor and um, also Jane have greater power than Valkyrie. They could have tried to just fight with her being now the leader of Asgard that she has a new special Asgardian weapon that was built specially maybe, for her to yeah. give her a power. I'm fine up, with her being a but, Valkyrie and just being really like skilled in combat and stuff because she's a Valkyrie. Yeah, that's that's true with me. Yeah, I, I it's it's just but a matter of even if you're like even Thor in this predicament, you're like, man, should mm -hmm. y'all shouldn't you you should not be starting fights here. This is really well, bad. Oh yeah, yeah like it, it's a, a bad uh, idea for Thor, for someone with Thor level powers to try and start a fight there. But Valkyrie's there saying she'll get in on the action too, and I'm thinking, exactly. where on earth For has she two. ever been depicted with that level of power to be able to take on gods? She's I never think, been uh, that strong. Well, she beat Loki. It would make. That's true. I guess it would it would make more sense to me if what came through with her is that she's a really good tactician. That just because she was a Valkyrie, that was like an important part of um what she did. So she doesn't just say, "All right, here's our strategy: uh, attack, like fight." <laughs> You know, as opposed to concocting some sort of plan or strategy. Yeah, there's no, there's no cleverness in these movies. Well, the, there's it, no attempts being Steve yeah. Mart. Like, I'm sorry, we're, we're pretending like, oh, she doesn't come up with like a clever plan. Like, no, she says she comes up with one of the most brain set dead suggestions of all time. Yeah, like, get rough. a fight in the middle of. Let's steal his uh, lightning bolt. What if he and like runs said, away or something? You know, like what if he gets rid of it? So matter of factly. Like yeah, it's it's like in it's like, PLJ when oh let's just go into the supremacy and and blow it up like it's just a thing they just say and that they just do that to, that's the plan let's just do this let's just steal Zeus's fucking thunderbolt here let's just do it let's like, just flick also, the switch and do it. Did you guys mention as well like so he's like I'm the god of lightning you're the god of thunder thunder's the sound of lightning also my bolt is called thunderbolt is that meant to be like a is that like a know. joke or something? Probably. Yeah, the, if you're ever down on the end of the now. He thinks yeah. that lightning is better than thunder, at least as a description, but his th his literal lightning bolt, he calls it a thunderbolt. It's a light that's gotta be a joke, right? I don't know. It has I to be a like joke. It. The writers are so stupid, though, Fringy. Sometimes that would have to be. It has to. It has to be shat. It has to be a joke. It's going to be a meme. Ah, uh, God. Uh, this movie, man. Are we done yet? Yeah, so if ever in <laughs> doubt, it's probably a joke. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunately true. Oh, mm. um, he warns Zeus about Gore. He's like, Gore's a thing. And Zeus is like, yeah, he's killed some low-level gods, oh well. Big but, deal. Yeah, right? who cares? Then he ties up Thor because he's being rude, I guess, and does the, yeah. the thing. And then does the thing that is, yeah, I don't like it. I mean, it's just I don't like it. nothing it's to just, like about it. It's just gross, um, I think. Um, maybe not just because of what it represents. This um, gets butts and seats. Chris Hemsworth has, ultimate, has um, openly uh, stated that he 
didn't want to take his shirt off for the previous films. He's like, hey, can I keep my shirt on this time? And uh, Taika Waititi was like, no. And then this time it was like, also your butt, also, and like, <laughs> you will just be fully naked in the film. Take more off. Even within context, it's played off as a joke when, like, I feel like we should actually be treating this as, like, This is a breach! This is this a breach! Is, like, a very this is a breach of boundaries. This is a, yeah, it's a, it's a breach of, and, like, I, I, I don't think, I don't think that they would treat many other characters with this kind of, in this kind of way. Well, I, know, I can what? tell you I two think... characters they wouldn't treat like that. Yeah. Um, well, I three, I guess, treat... right? Or so? I guess, <laughs> I mean, I guess Korg well. they wouldn't. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I would even mind it with Korg. I feel like he would be chill about it. Like I, I, I guess that would, could be okay as a joke. Yeah, just more rocks. Like if he said that. Yeah, because I, I guess because yeah, I guess nakedness for him is just not a thing. Yeah, and he's just like, you don't oh, have, okay, you know. <laughs> my clothes are gone. Yeah, well, I don't even think Korg would have any certain parts he'd want to cover because they don't even reproduce yeah, exactly. that. He's a rock. Yeah. He's just being... He's a rock, man. A rock. Like, yeah. he, he his species canonically reproduces by, like, standing and holding hands. hands over a yeah. molten lake or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, there you go. There's your, uh, there's your scene. Yeah. <laughs> Where mm -hmm. things happen yeah. and that does, and yeah. then it progresses. Well, yeah, the thing that's pretty lame is that they go, should we help him? And then they go, uh, eventually, while yeah, just staring eventually. at him. Yeah. Um, uh, swap those genders. Ooh. Yeah, it's a double stamp. If the genders are yeah, swapped, there'd be such outrage. Right, like... <laughs> Dude, people would be pissed as fuck. <laughs> but sexually harassed by Zeus. <laughs> Um, well, I think, well, you know, with Zeus, you're getting off pretty light. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to what he used to do. Look oh, you on the horse. At least he didn't eat you. Oh, and yeah, so, well. so, kind of my take on this is that I, I, sometimes you can have a comedic scene where someone might, you know, something funny, where it's like, oh, no, something fell off or anything. What's the issue here is now that there's such been a pushback against it happening to female characters, because that type of stuff, you know, accidentally walking in on someone while they're getting out of a share is like, oh, no, dear, and all that stuff happened a, a decent amount in past. Well, that's more but incidental such... than purposeful. Um, like, this is, yeah, this yeah. is, this was yeah, actually that, stripping someone against their consent. Yeah, granted. Um, um but. This... This is like a, I don't know, because like, um, my brain is going through this whole thing of like, okay, so this is an act that's like, it really crosses a boundary, um, but like, the thing is, I could see Thor getting stabbed being played as a joke in this movie, and while I wouldn't be cool with that, I guess, I wouldn't have the same like, visceral reaction that I'm having to this scene. Um, I think it's. I think the meta informs it, um, the meta being this was part of the marketing because they knew that people would want to yeah. watch it. Um, it's kind of hard to separate yeah. that, like a recognition. Because it was, yeah. Well, I know the, the thing is, that, that. Um, sexual assault of men being played as a joke is like a massive trope. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I, yeah. I felt that we had moved beyond it, but this is, and you know, he clearly does, he doesn't get like uh, sexually assaulted. I don't think that qualifies. I'm not. You know, what? I'm not actually well, sure no, no, it qualifies. It would no. That, like, if this happened to a woman, they would consider it sexual assault. Absolutely. Well, no, it doesn't. Like, it, that's not even the the argument, right? The argument is, I just don't. Um, it's it's not sexual like as as Zeus he doesn't consider whatever the specific term you. is it is a it is a bad it's thing a breach, that's right it's to, a breach. To, right? The yeah. thing is like um, Zeus doesn't do it on purpose he's trying to remove the cloak and he removes the whole thing um, but like the whole point is that like uh, this was a massive it was like a massive trope in like the nineties and the noughties of like <laughs> lol that man he well remember in uh, Fantastic so Four every time they fought so hard for every opportunity they get to have Jessica Alba when she was playing the Invisible Woman like they kept doing it um, well, yeah um, it, it, it's just like I don't know I what well, see what is that's this, a good you know? example like, the thing yeah. is like the thing is you would never get you, you, or at least very rarely be like lol that woman was raped <laughs> isn't that funny. Uh, whereas you would get that in comedies quite a lot with male characters. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like we had, I felt that we'd moved beyond that. And that's just, I, this is, feels like that trope creeping back in. It's not the full thing, but it does feel like it's creeping back. And I, I, I would prefer to be rid of it actually. Um, I mean, it does seem like a decent amount of people didn't like that 
uh, though, because I remember when the trailer came out, there were certainly people who were talking about that and how they didn't like it. So- I think it's because it's not it's so it's so on its face what it is. There's no there's no artistry to it. There's no cleverness. There's no point. There's well, it's, no, it's very cynical. It's just like well, if he was having you, a you know shower, we'd at least know like, oh, well, he's having a shower. No, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Also, like if this this is another scene where it's like if it was played seriously as like this is like a, a genuine low moment for Thor where it's actually like emotionally distressing as a scene. That's how it's presented. That'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that that feels about right. That's one thing, but it's played off as a joke. So, just, yeah. Um, I, and then not only is it played off as a joke, but a particular like... show, um, there is a character who gets. I, you know what? This, I'm gonna have to, without doing spoilers, I'm gonna have to make this so vague. There won't be any point. So never mind. <laughs> what were you gonna well, say? I was gonna. I was not gonna only is it use a Star Trek example. Okay, I was gonna say not only is it played off as a joke, it's played off as something positive and something fun to be enjoyed because they're like what a great yeah let's just enjoy the yeah. enjoy oh, the yeah. show i'm, I'm yeah. glad well, yeah that, that's, that's, the that's there's something about those two doesn't yeah. it the characters yeah. anyway well, i think it I also there's something about the matter to be honest i think we're supposed to be in their shoes i am not in their shoes no of course not <laughs> Now but we can yeah, move the to whole the context context problem, problem, I would, be in, their, I would yeah. be in their shoes if Thor was like, hey, look at me, I'm hot. And they're like, you are hot, Thor. And like Thor like was like, yeah, look at me go. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, yeah, we can enjoy this show. That's well, cool. as we can tell, he's not happy with this. Um, he clearly didn't want this to happen. Um, but it's funny, isn't it? Funny, funny. Uh, we've not mentioned the tattoos. I was just about to say <laughs> well, the next problem. <laughs> kind of hoping we don't uh, talk about this. Well, oh, I mean, no. I'll put it on screen, you guys... Whatever no, I don't want to, to look at it. Actually, um, it's hideous. Dad, you were talking about how the uh, scene with Sif was your least favorite in the film. This yeah. is fine. I, I want to I'm sort of tear into this. Does anyone want to join? Or like... Go for you, Jay. Well, sorry, I had to step up out for just one moment. What, what are we referring we're to? Doing the we are looking at the tattoos on uh, Thor's back. Yeah. So um, this is a great moment where... Are you like... implying that tattoos aren't real? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> So we get this, this cape is, is ripped off, you get like a couple of seconds of lol Thor is naked, and then it, you get this close up on his back that's like lol look how shit his tattoos are, and they're like all a memorial to Loki. So just to be clear, we've got R.I.P. Loki written in this Norse font, right? We've got Loki's helmet, it's not particularly well drawn, like it's a bit crude, it, um, it doesn't look that great. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably the best thing on this tapestry of fuckery, but between the horns, this one's a bit hard. Like this one, is, it's like it's it's clearly there, but like your eyes aren't drawn to it as easily. So I wouldn't um, blame anyone for missing it. Um, you have a little like clip art cartoon gravestone. Oh no, um, that's what that is. Oh fuck me. Yeah, it's even worse than I thought it was. You have the word brothers just written in a squiggly font next to one of the horns. Mm-hmm. You have a rose and Muller, it's a bit below the screenshot uh, that you've got here, but it's uh, a like an emoji style broken heart. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Fuck off. It's so, very cheap. Uh, isn't, it's not isn't elaborate. It or... Isn't it but, funny how but... cringily Thor mourns his dead brother? Look how cringily he mourns Jay, his dead brother. Jay, memorial tattoos are a thing. Shut up, Fringy. <laughs> no, they they are a thing. Them. I this was this was you know this. You were told this on Twitter. No, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> the, just you can't tell. Fringy is memeing. Um, <laughs> chat to be aware of that. I posted a screenshot. So Jay, Jay can't help yeah, but get yeah. trouble on Twitter. With- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This screen capture Twitter with the caption "Kill me," and I thought that was fairly <laughs> self-explanatory as what yeah. the caption was. But like instantly, I get several replies going, "What's the problem? He has mat- memorial tattoos for his dead brother." <laughs> People get memorial tattoos. I'm like, oh, you don't realize this is a joke, like. Do, do not see the, the do you not see what they like do you not see what they are it feels like they've genuinely read a script and it says thor has a memorial tattoo like they haven't seen it rip yeah. loki on it now it something like that might be your descriptions of the image an idea that could have been considered that i think would have been interesting uh would have been if there were memorial tattoos that were less overt for everybody who's died including yeah. odin and freya um, um of, yeah, uh, so, his mom, 
and uh, Heimdall and maybe even the Warriors 3 if you want to stop making fun of them. You know, but even the if they did that, even if they did that, having them revealed in this scene would still oh, yeah, be a yeah. slap in the face. It would need well, to be a were, yeah, time when yeah. where someone so, walked thing, past, he's on the boat, he's changing his shirt, and someone sees the memorial tattoos, and it's like a somber tone, and it's a reflection of his, you know, loss. That would justify. Oh, you could even have this as like an emotional beat, right? Um, you could have Thor, like, you could have, like, I don't know, Valkyrie. But come this vulnerability like, has been revealed yeah. Yeah, like, this um, the, because like, of this, this breach moment. of his boundaries. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I didn't I didn't know you had tattoos, Thor. And he's like, yeah, they're uh, quite personal to me there. We talk about the theme of him keeping people at arm's length. Yeah. yeah. And shutting himself off and not opening up to people. And then it's forced on him against his will. These vulnerabilities revealed. But no, it's it's meant to be funny. Look at his silly memorial tattoo. Oh my god. You just can't help but make a joke out of any given situation. Like, Laurel Thor's pain. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Like, all of the shit this character's been through? Yes. Uh, then he had to go through this fucking film. <laughs> I don't think that about Hey guys. Out. Thumbs up. <laughs> um. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to head out. I have a, a flight to catch, so my time is uh, is all gone. Um, oh how boy. much time do we have with you as well, Fringy? Uh, you got me for like two and a half hours. <laughs> That's it. So someone, That's funnily all. enough, I think super chatted, like, can't wait for this to be split into two parts of the super chats to come after that. And I'm just sitting here <laughs> well... considering... The, the fact we that still got half movie left. We still, well, we got that's kind of my point. We got exactly the same scenario as we did last time. No um, really. We're losing one of oh. our a guests that I really want to get their opinion on later stuff in this thing. And so, and we don't have a guarantee. It's like Rags last time, isn't it? But with Nerd Roddick, you know, it's like so we're losing. Oh, well, yeah. It's kind that of a similar thing. situation. Um, well, question, Shad. If we were to have part two next week, would you join us for it? Would you be available? I think I could. I'll need to check my schedule, but I think it's very likely I'd be able to. Um, Sweet. Because, yeah, that, that seems like a, a good a a logical good way to do place. It. Uh, and we'll, we'll all be reset. You'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll lose me next week, unfortunately. Yeah, what are you doing? Um, I, I agreed to help some uh, a good friend of mine move. <laughs> that was, was a long time ago. Yeah. Fool. Well, you were too far away. I couldn't help you, so get far. Wow. <laughs> I could have longed you over here. Well, you didn't. <laughs> Metal ships myself with FedEx. Just an arm through my window. <laughs> like, oh god, no! Slide down. Uh, well, uh, Shad, do you want to tell people what you're getting up to these days? What they should look out for? What they should watch? Yeah, well, I mean, if people don't know, I, I like, uh, you know, because I have a main, a big channel, but I've also started another channel called Night's Watch, where we've been doing our own media reviews, analysis, criticism, and stuff. Lots of fun. We've got a review. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Oh, got boy. a review of Thor on there as well, um, as well as a whole heap of other commentary stuff. So that's been a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, I have another new channel called The Shadlands, which is a, a more kind of wholesome, fun um, project, family, vlog, homesteading, eclectic kind of mix of a whole heap of things called The Shadlands. So I'm doing that as well. Lots of stuff. Wow. My goodness. And there's a link to, the, to your main channel in the description. I'll have to pop one in for uh, Game Nights. Right? Night's Watch. Night's Watch. I would, it, that's what it used to be called. It used right? to be Game Nights. <laughs> yeah, you said it started as Game Nights, and then was, we rebranded as Night's Watch when we yeah, were doing less games and more thing. reviews. Yeah. yeah, funnily enough, uh, uh, you know what? I'll send you a message about it. I, I won't say it right now because it's been kind of secret. But uh, the, the <gasps> okay. short vision, the point I was going to make was just that I've enjoyed listening to break some stuff down on that channel. Oh, that's awesome. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, <laughs> It seems like you you uh you have similar interests sometimes you know that that MCU and that Star Wars ain't doing well, are they? Yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I heard that yeah. The reason we were going to have you on originally was to talk about how because you love Kenobi, you thought it was a fantastic TV show. Like, <laughs> Very strange, no. Shad. I'm going to say. Can Booby? Kenobi got me angry. Like uh, it's, I, I, I end up ranting far more than I ever intend to. But I, there are multiple times in many videos I just end up screaming because I get so frustrated with this crap. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, Man, boring. child. Plenty more on the way, I'm sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, it'll be fun because like this film, uh, 
just like all of them, goes a little off the rails the further along you get. And uh, yeah. there is one thing that happens in the third act that uh, I'm sure all of us have a lot to say about. <laughs> it might just deal more damage to the MCU than any one thing ever has. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Um, uh, but yeah, man, thank you so there. much for, uh, for hanging out with us. Hey, guys, my pleasure. It's been absolutely awesome, as always. Always fun to have you on. Thanks, uh-huh. We'll catch you later. Get you around, yep, dude. I'll see you probably next weekend. Have a good, uh, trip. <laughs> Thanks, mate. All right, catch you. See you, dude. What? See you. Yeah. Alrighty. So, uh, how how is everyone else doing? Oh, I mean, well, I'm, like, I mean, I'm fine. But metal sounds well, my like my problem you is might... only that I have to work tomorrow. I'm technically fine, but you know, it is almost two a.m. and it's work. Because I suppose the thing to do now would be to uh, have a section of on into some of the Q and A stuff, right? Like that's mm-hmm. a logical thing to do. Um, but I, you know, if if uh, if I'm keeping you from being able to sleep a little bit earlier, then no problem. Because I was just thinking to myself, yeah, you probably wouldn't have been able to make it fully to the the, the certain parts if you were working tomorrow. Maybe yeah, not. I th- I think I would have maxed it out to like three a.m. for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. It's, that, that would be like six hours of sleep. <laughs> mm. Part two next Sunday or Saturday. That'll depend, I guess. On are you yeah. busy both. I mean, if days? it's, I mean, if it's Sunday, I'm fine. I'm just not around Saturday, uh, for the most right. part. I probably won't be around at night. I can tell you during the week. I might be around Saturday night. I'm actually not one hundred percent sure. Okay. Well, because uh, uh, we'll talk to yeah. Chad as well. See if he's got both days open or not, and then we'll see if we can get yeah, the lovely. full group back. Talk about. This movie. Yeah, I mean, technically, I have my forge plan for Sunday again, so we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it. It's fine. You keep keeping interfering with your plans every God. goddamn time. Um. Well, alrighty then. Is that all right with everybody? I'll, we'll we'll go for, I guess, a chunk of time. I have no idea how many of the time, but some of it. All right. Mm-hmm. Voiced one says today's animal of the day is the goblin shark. Oh boy. I think people have asked us to look at this one before. What's the one with the, like, the mouth? Yeah, sure that's all sharks. I've seen this one huh? before. <laughs> Such a handsome boy. Oh, it's the one in the water. I know that one. It's like the one with the special mouth. Special. This, this is one of the Spider-Man villains, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Spider-Man. Really? I'm the goblin shark. Um, here for the Thor 1 supremacy agenda. Hey, look, Thor 1 has good scenes in it. Let's, let's just calm down, all right? <laughs> yeah. God. Yes, calm down God. a bit on, on Thor 1. Um, God, I was so tired of the goat joke by the third time it was on screen. I agree. I was tired by the second one already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think I even laughed at the yeah, first yeah. one. I, just, I didn't. It just didn't work for me. I'm like, thinking oh. first time, and then the second time being when they burst in to save them in the uh, the no, thingy like, city. That might be the so, nature of me spreading it out. Um, so like the first time, I was like, oh, that's fun. I'm enjoying Thor's reaction to the goats. And then they cut to them in the ship, and I'm like, oh, they're still doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Immediately overstay their welcome. It's like, fuck. Almost like, um... It backfired in terms of them being like, oh, they're screaming a lot, and then he's like, ah, oh, it's fine. And then, you know, they, sh- they shoot it so that it's in the face of the camera on their ship, as if to say, like, we underestimated it, they're actually pretty annoying. And I'm like, yeah. You know, as a viewer, instead of like, haha, it's funny that they're annoying. Mm. <sighs> uh, please read the Pokedex entries for Guzzlord. Sounds hard. Guz, like with double Z's? Double Z's? Uh, Guz Lords. Pokedex entry. Uh, Bulbapedia, I guess. Yes. Okay. This, this, this one already looks terrifying, so that's a good start. Look at that lad. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a Pokemon? That seems like it. I think he's, he's from Monster he's Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> uh, let's see here. The first one is from Sun. 
It has gobbled mountains and swallowed whole buildings, according to reports. Oh. It's one so of it the ultra mountains. beasts. Okay. It must be a very large Pokemon, apparently. Uh, a dangerous ult that's from Moon, a dangerous ultra beast that appears to be eating constantly, but for some reason its droppings have never been found. Uh, okay. Oh. It's constipated. Oh my Whoa. god. Deep lore. Deep when it dies once it finally reaches its cap and just goes <laughs> and explodes. Uh, let's see. That then Ultra Sun, although it's alien to this world, it comes from outer space, goddamn. And a danger here, it's apparently a common organism in the world where it normally lives. So it has Pokemon from outer space. It's now. normal where it's from, mm. but not yeah. here where it's not, not from. Not here. Uh, and then we have the last one from Ultra Moon, an unknown life form called a UB. Oh, I guess that's Ultra Beast. It may be constantly hungry. It is certainly always devouring something. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. I mean, description wise, it's not the most terrifying I've heard. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm just kind of amused by the idea that like an extraterrestrial lands tries to communicate with humans and they just pack it into these little bowls and they're just like, you're a Pokemon. A <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, what? it's not a Pokemon. That's just a. a life form from another planet and that's just no nope, you're my prisoner now me. fight for me <laughs> about it yeah <clears throat> just ate at grimaldi's and they have a special pizza called the dawn Ooh. oh boy Hello, Massives. Can't stay long. Just wanted to remind you that Thor told us that you can't get to Valhalla if you die after battle. Hashtag, it was Loki. Yeah. What? Hashtag, it was Loki? Maybe once I didn't listen, I was like I said, something. I'm willing to count Loki's death by Thanos as in battle, but uh, the Odin one is the one that just throws me. It's like, that was clearly not a battle death. Uh, Hi, Rags and friends. Do y'all often ah. cry when watching movies, TV shows, and playing games? What piece of media has made you cry the most? I can get pretty teary-eyed. I don't know about crying, though. But, yeah. Um, the, the piece of media that's made me do it the most? Return of the King. Hmm. Um, if we're going with most, I think that's that's what would be the contender for that. Yeah, and and I guess clarification because like I don't think anything I don't think I've ever cried in the sense of like you know sobbing, um, but shed tears for sure at different bigger payoffs. Probably gonna go if it was a singular piece of media, it would go to Buffy and Angel as a a whole package. I got nothing specific that I could reference right now. To be honest, I would need to think very hard because I. I mean, not crying. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> um, the end of uh, the episode of The Simpsons when Homer is with his mom and then he's staring up at the stars um, as a credits roll, that tends to get me every single time. All right, Jay, the only one left. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Media that's made you cry. Oh, a lot. Um, I, I'm very weak and feeble. Um, <laughs> so most recently was everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Not too um, yeah, I, I cried a couple of times during that. Um, what else got me? I, I'm sure I've been got recently as by something else as well. Did Stranger Things get you? Um, the one that's got me... Stranger Things did not get... No, Stranger Things did get me. Um... The you know that scene that would have been better if a different thing didn't happen after that scene. Oh yeah, uh, that yeah. scene got me. Yeah, that scene's practically fucking designed to do that. I think. Um, and also, um, the uh, the other scene where a similar thing happens, but a different thing afterwards doesn't happen to make the thing worse. The thing, no, no thing like that happens. Um, that scene, um. Got got me as well, and also the scene between Dustin and okay. um, Uncle Man. That one got me. Mm -hmm. um, 
Oh, but but more so than anything, I think the film I cried at the most, and it was I think just because of like um, personal relation to it, and not not rather not just like this is the most emotionally and gripping film I've ever seen. It's more so like oh, personally, I have a connection to this. Was a uh, uh, Coco I really liked, and got yeah, Coco was really good. There you go. In terms of Pixar movies, I think it's uh, Wally, like the ending. Um, when Wally's doesn't have his memories, that uh, man, that's really sad. What about when C three PO lost his memories? I was actually someone in chat. I just wanted to confirm. Ray, you cried when Ray said Ray Skywalker, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, a powerful Ray. moment in cinema. Ray Skywalker. Ray Skywalker. And then and then the lady is like, that's not true. <laughs> you oh, liar. Tell me the truth, you fucker. <laughs> Skizzle the blaster. Give me your money. <laughs> I'm robbing I, I, you. <laughs> of course, it goes without saying, but we all uh, bawled like little babies. Of course, in Pokemon 2000, when Ash turned to stone, when he was trying to stop oh, the really? battle between Mew and Mewtwo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I, seen, I saw that in the cinema. I think. I did. When I said pretty sure, after that, I was immediately like, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rags. Hello. Please read Chainsaw Man. It's about a man with a chainsaw for a head. Chainsaw for a head? Yeah, it seems awkward. Nah, but, I'm you know. all right. They're trying to bait you. It's anime. Ew. Uh, manga. Ew. I don't think there's an anime yet. Ew. I'm just warning Rags, so he's not getting, getting baited. Uh, Hale, did you guys notice the really strange bit of ADR of Hayden yelling Obi-Wan right as uh, Obi-Wan walks away? They hold a shot on Vader's face. Hayden's mouth is visible, and his mouth doesn't move. That's the best kind of ADR, when you can see the <laughs> mouth is not moving. Well, I'd have to check it, but I could believe it, of course. Obi -Wan. Movie, bo movie Obi -Wan. boss level has that, has that a lot. That was a very bad movie I covered on the forge. <laughs> now I saw someone on Twitter say that they thought that him screaming Obi Wan was better than screaming Kenobi. Which do you guys prefer? Do you prefer Obi Wan or Kenobi? Which, which Obi -Wan. one? Do you prefer? I feel like he'd call him Obi Wan. He wouldn't call him Kenobi. Oh sure. I, I guess I'm just saying which which visceral guttural uh, scream do you prefer? Like in terms of overall as a scream. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know. <clears throat> I I prefer Kenobi. I don't know. I enjoy I enjoy that one a lot. It's just the way that he screams it. It's just I, really. Let's pick Reva. 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 You know one of my one of my favorite little screaming name things. This is gonna be really odd, but it's in the Page Master. When Dr. Jekyll transforms and is, he turns around and he says, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> I always thought that was super creepy. Hmm. You're super creepy. Whoa. No. Stop sending me your underwear in the mail, please. Why? I would okay, never waste point. good musky <laughs> underwear on the likes of Jew. On the likes of Jew, I don't think you. On the likes of Jew, <laughs> not I allowed. That I don't think that you're allowed to declare that you wouldn't give your underwear to a Jewish person. You must give the Jews your underpants, your undergarments. I I don't think that's. I I think you've gone too far in the opposite direction now. <laughs> giving them your their un underpants. I think your that, underpants? Um, giving a a a Jewish person your underwear is morally neutral. Uh, well, no. Um, compared well, yes. to the fact that the person is Jewish does not change the morality of the situation of giving them your underwear. Unless, I guess, unless there's like some kind what of. What if, if it was mixed fabrics and you gave it to him specifically for that reason, maybe? Oh, I wouldn't know anything about that. Because one of God, it's one of God's very useful, helpful rules. The whole. Don't wear mixed fabrics things. That should have been Gore's origin story, is oh, that you yeah. read that and was like, that's fucking bullshit. I'm just killing this guy. Gore's so great. Mm -hmm. well, you mentioned... that, it sounds like you just like seeing people get stabbed or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't it's... think I had to confirm that. It was pretty obvious. Get stabbed, he's nuts. 
Oh, oh, ow. Well, you mentioned before a love <laughs> for metal bands like Iron Maiden and Avantasia. Out of curiosity, are you a fan of Ghost or Judas Priest? Not really, no. Good a bit from them, but but not not uh, my preference. Uh, my friends interrupted me watching Prestige for the first time to catch this garbage opening day. Thankfully, oh, no. Prestige is one of the best movies I've ever seen and washed my brain of this tripe. Oh, that's good. Nice. I haven't watched it in a while to rewatch it. I like that so, movie. It's neat. It's good. I'm pretty sure you showed, him, showed, showed it to me for the first time. I showed, like, everybody it. I'm like, hey, yeah. you, now. Whoa. <laughs> Come on. Wings quote of the day. He started oh making sneak disses towards me, and that's why he got banned. Like calling me a one pump plump chump chimp. <laughs> <laughs> one pump plump one chimp. Plump. <laughs> that's a sneak diss. Like, that's a, a sneak, sneak diss? diss. Okay. <laughs> um. No, right. he's saying you're a fat simian premature ejaculator. It's pretty pretty thorough. Hi Rex. Hello. Do you ever get your Black Widow exclusive commemorative cinema popcorn bucket from eBay? <laughs> no, oh. I didn't. I never did. Oh. I'll I'll leave it there for someone else. A true. I'll leave it there for the true fans to collect. Damn. Uh, bye, Rags. Goodbye. Where is Smiler? Is he safe? Is he all right? Yeah, he's <laughs> safe, safe and fine as far as I know. Spends a little less time on the internet these days. Uh, though I did make him see uh, Thor. You monster. Which is Ooh. funny because he really liked Ragnarok, Some and so he was like, are. yeah, this should be fun. Then he, the, what he said when he came out of the cinema was, that is the most factory-produced thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, yep. Um, <laughs> Darth Vader voice. Did you really think you could defeat me? You lied to me. You hate on me. Electricity. <laughs> oh, the misery. Oh, gosh. Why not? Just do it. Uh, Oh, <laughs> today is my birthday. Watching Thor, Thor, Thor four in that, an hour. That that's that's a decision, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Well, happy birthday. Birthday. Enjoy while you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, also, Rags, you googled it wrong. It's not S R R T one. It's P R R T one. Stands for Pennsylvania Railroad. Amazing design. Also, fastest steam engine ever. Huh. Choo choo. Pennsylvania Railroad. That's one of the um, Monopoly railroads, right? Pennsylvania Railroad? I don't know. Also, Thor is not a name. It's a people. It's yeah, apparently. a people? It's not a name. It's a peephole. Oof. Uh, Taika Waititi asking Natalie if she wants to be f in Star Wars finally is a step down from him digging up Christopher Lee's grave and asking the corpse, do you want to be in Star Wars? Be the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, see that that would be weird though, because grave robbing slam. That would be somewhat more up. unsettling, I think. Yeah, there's there's a couple of elements to that that are kind of worse. And fine, it's all for comedy. Oh, then well, if you did it as a joke, that would be funny. <laughs> they catch him in the act. He's like, "It's a joke. It's a jo guys, joke, guys. A joke." And the police are like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you, uh, Tiger, uh, that died. Uh, you, 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 jokester, you." I've been playing Shovel Knight again recently, and my favorite boss nice. so far is Plague Knight, a green plague doctor that uses vials of goo to make explosions. Ooh. I remember that boss. Is it the... Okay, fine. Greetings, e-fappers. Hope all is well, and I'm happy I could make it today. Happy fapping, gents. Oh, well, thank um, you. Oh, thank you very much. Fapping we did have too. some pretty happy fapping. Yeah? Any fap shared is a uh, just just generally yeah. better. I feel like a tree inside a circle watching the sunrise. Is that a reference? Oh, I have no it, idea what that means. Tree inside make, a circle watching the sun. Does that make you a sundial? A tree inside of a circle watching the sunrise. I have no idea what that means. I ain't got nothing for it neither. How to character assassinate a Jawa? Obi Wan, how much? Jawa talks in cute. Obi Wan, that's too much. I'd buy it half. Jawa puts down the item and then says, "Look here, look, listen." 
<laughs> this. <laughs> also, Mola Stream MGR. Metal Gear Rising, is it? Hell yeah. Um, Mola, it is me, Jay, owner of EFAP. I order you to stream a playthrough of Jedi Fallen Order. In case you fail to comply, I will have to fire you. Sincerely, Ooh. your loving boss, Jamin Extraterrestrial Cinema Roberto. If if you're gonna use your one like free identity theft of me to make a demand of Mola, why don't <laughs> you go for a full playthrough of Fallen Order? That's weak. Weak so make him play something good. Oh. Or really bad. People like Fallen Order, Jay. Well, I guess, okay, so like that's just Jay, like I'll have you know I found game. that game, game to be quite mediocre. Like, yeah, it's, it's well, exactly right. It's just a mediocre mid game of like, oh it's fine, I guess. Like I can't imagine like a more boring thing to make you stream. Like, well, I guess there are probably quite a few things, but you know, it's it's just a very boring. I would recommend many other games before I'd recommend yeah. Fallen Order. Like, if I was going to force Mola to play one, I'd probably go for like I don't know something. Again, Subnautica. It, yes. Yeah. Oh, I would love to force you to to stream Subnautica. Um. Although it would probably become apparent very quickly if it was going to be an entertaining stream or not, because if the, like that game's particular style of horror doesn't have an effect on you, which has every chance it won't, then it might it might just be like, oh, okay. I would get submersed into the submersiveness of it. It's... Yeah, I would love to force you. It would. Game. Would the game submerse your expectations? I think so. Uh, what are you waiting for, Jay? Make a pun. Maps. It's it's Herculean, not Herculean. You massives. You're a massive. I can't keep up to date with all these pronouns. Lies. Let's call him Bob from now on. You guys sit in the top of the theater Bob or in the front? I am for the middle. Bob. Usually the middle. I sit. Too. I almost always sit in the middle because the middle is going to generally have that big open aisle so that you can cross through the middle of the theater, which means that there's a no. row in the middle where you okay. can where you can what? sit. Like I'm like I'm not I'm not that picky, just not too far forward, not too far back, and generally as close to the center of the aisle as possible. Like but like uh, yeah, it's fine. I always go all the way in the back if I can, and then the middle. Hell yeah. Mm. So if you have the screen up here... Do, do, and apparently do. getting scammed for my premium seats because they're normal everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. More so like seeing you seeing you say we, we have worse. What? True. Um, the premium seats that are standard in Australia, we don't have those. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love seeing your cameo in It's a Gundam's video. Love your videos lately, Rags. Keep it up. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, that was... um. Quite strange. He was like, talk about when in Kenobi if you want to. I was like, what? And he was like, you know what? You can pick any topic. And I, I gunned for Uncle Owen. That piece of shit. Old Uncle Steen. People still talk about Stranger Things Season 4 and they've already forgotten about Kenobi. Character work is really important. Also, Blind Man a Mini Wen, High Rag. <laughs> Hello. Don't know exactly when that will happen, but it will. And as for yeah, that that's it's pretty obvious. Stranger Things is like uh staying power social media wise was either about Max or Eddie. It's totally character based. It often is. Kenobi, like I mean, I'm not gonna say it disappeared instantly. There were some people who were like, Oh my god, it was so meaningful, but he would cry. But like there's just not much to dig out of that show, so it's gonna die. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing of lasting impact in that show whatsoever. It's very much... I mean, if you're in it for nostalgia and aesthetic and just references, then it just won't last. It just won't last. So they introduced another OP character. Love appears to be an avatar of eternity, one of the most powerful entities in Marvel. Uh, yeah, she has powers... Um. When you hit the end, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, that'll be the last thing we get to, actually. Mm. Yes, basically, you are correct. And I've heard that Eternity is apparently powerful. Obviously, we've never heard of it before because they didn't plan for any of That's this. That's how powerful it is. It is the power to remain a secret in Whoa. the narrative. Just says thank you. 
No problem. I got uh, you, bro. Morbius greater than MCU Phase Four. Morbius. I'm gonna guess. Well, I haven't that. seen Morbius, <laughs> so yeah, sure. I doubt Probably. it beats No Way Home, but you know, it I agree. Does beat the rest. <laughs> just by default it's any random whole. movie i guess that's the more interesting thing is that it might be better um yeah. and it's just kind of funny the perception yeah the sony marvel movies is shit it's like you know what it has also not been very good lately maybe it's time finally time to morb yeah. succumb to the morb. <laughs> i wonder if they're gonna make a sequel like <laughs> uh and that film made money but it probably didn't make as much money as they yeah. thought it would Probably gonna um, be there like the team up movie, right? Well, so I know that um because Madam Web, that film's got like a pretty extensive cast, so it's kind of like it leads to the conclusion that that's gonna be like a lot of Spider-Man characters will be in that film. It's like they're they're really um they're in a rush to like get their Spider-Man adjacent universe up and running. And they're probably making a good decision by doing so, really. It's um they're never gonna not make Sony's gonna hold on to those Spider-Man rights for like as as much as they can. Mm -hmm. That was like the best investment they've ever made. <laughs> like <laughs> that was that was a, such a smart decision to buy Spider-Man film rights. Yeah. Well, they uh, for seven million dollars as well, right? <laughs> like, able, how was it only seven million? It was. Uh, I think it was. The, if they paid twenty five million, they would have gotten access to all of uh, the Marvel film rights. But Man. they said that the only Man. thing anybody cared about was Spider Man. Imagine. They're um, correct to a degree. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, at the time, yeah. X Men, uh, unless they didn't have access to X Men well, at that Fox point, X Men didn't they? Um, well, yeah, but I, I don't know when they bought the rights to Spider-Man compared to when Fox bought the rights to X-Men, because X-Men was huge in the 90s. X-Men was, like, uh -huh. massive uh, at the time. And I guess if they didn't have access to X-Men, then, yeah, spider Well, of course, Spider-Man is, like, the most popular Marvel superhero, so, yeah. Ow. The whip. Um, out of context, EFAP. You remember Jabba the Hutt? I'm gonna ruin him. <laughs> That's a quote. I don't remember saying hot cream. But... Ugh, no. Give me that hot cream. Give it, no. <laughs> don't give it to us. Don't what, give it can to I get? Can I? Ha can I please drink the hot cream? Yeah, I'll give it. I to don't you. know why you even. Like, do you have enough? Um, do you have enough? Um, you you even say that. Okay, wait. How? What's the? Uh, what's the average? What's the volume of like a standard bathtub? And how much hot cream do you have? <laughs> I think uh, the volume of the standard bathtub is silent. Yeah. Shut up, rags. <laughs> I want to fill you with hot cream. <laughs> no, no, don't no, fill me with your hot cream. Rags. You sticky, slimy. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the, the rise of Skywalker. I, I, I did appreciate it's like that it joke. Makes I thought me it was actually funny. Shiver. The rise of Skywalker versus Endgame. Which is worse written? Hmm. The rise of Skywalker versus Endgame. That's actually difficult. I'm not gonna lie. That's rise tough. Skywalker is certainly funnier. Yeah. <laughs> Would you? S oh, Ooh. right. I have no clue. I won't need to rewatch both because I haven't seen I them in not a long time. With... I think I'll go with Endgame because it does more. Endgame's got crazy time travel stuff, and that's, there is a lot tough. of character stuff in there too. There is a lot of character stuff. It's just people don't tend to think about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps that we didn't have many characters at that point to ruin in Star Wars. No, they were all dead and gone pretty much by that point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Endgame kind of was the it was the one that put him in the coffin, so to speak. And for we that reason, I, I think it. It. having less to ruin doesn't mean it's better written. It just means that it, no, it of course. can do it's less damage. Less upsetting. Yeah. yeah, it should do less damage. <laughs> I would still say that uh, I'd still say Endgame's a worse written movie. It does seem that way to me. It seems like it does way yeah. more damage in how incongruent. And I it think is. it's more. It's more Some like some movies are more obviously bad than others. Mm. Uh, and I think that The Rise of Skywalker is a more obviously bad film. Everyone was primed for it. Whereas to be bad. Endgame oh, takes a bit of Endgame. Endgame we were hoping it would be good. What the scale yeah. I want to put it on is that Rise of Skywalker is more conspicuously embarrassing. Like it's 
it's an, it's a high on the embarrassing scale. You cannot miss the problems with that. It doll. is very embarrassing. Yeah, that's yep. I, I, I also just don't remember anything from the Star Wars movie that I liked wow. and enjoyed. So I I, I don't well, know. Well, it's just because Endgame's got like parts. Yeah, it has like some some good payoffs. Endgame has stuff. like legitimately good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. The well, Rise of Skywalker it's just is in its totality so taken together, and it like Endgame only really. The parts that you like have to be taken in a vacuum uh, without much regard for anything else in that film or like the broader series. Yeah. Eternity is the living embodiment of the universe. Cool. Okay. Feels like that concept was wasted, huh? Nah. I feel like you made that up. They never waste anything. It's for comedy. The fact that we will never get a continuation to Infinity Wars Thor will always be tragic to me. Also, hi Fringy, hi Jay, hi Mola, hi Mootle, hi Shad, hi Rax. Hello. 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 Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, if you took over from Tiger's work, you probably would be like, can we just, can we just generate a movie that takes on from that <laughs> timeline but goes a different direction, please? Why not, right? Thor, a d different worlds. Stranger Things, what that? Hi, Long Man, and hi, Rat. Hello. Hello. Remember, every honestly, Thor movie is bad, so it's fine. I honestly feel like <laughs> if, we got, if we got a Thor movie after this movie, we could actually do some really significant repairs, though. I tough. think you could still. It, yeah, but but it's possible. I would consider having an actual fucking uh, Mephisto introduced that's been fucking with all the characters in the MCU. <laughs> He's been messing with everybody's brains. It was me, Barry. I, I wow. think that's, that's reverse flash. Not but... only it would take ages to work on this, but I think you could seriously make some good repairs with that. Well, yeah, because everybody's been acting insane pretty much <laughs> this entire. It'll. Um, I guess it would take corrupted. away from the stakes, the character stakes of all these movies. Be it like, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, bad, but it was there are no, there's but that's no the thing, value. They're so bad that like they're out of character. It's anyway. worth it as a trade. Yeah, or maybe we'd be watching also, the Bizarro universe, like of the MCU, like, where referencing Kang. It's like, no, we'd want to make this good. Like, we want <laughs> the Festo's goal <laughs> is to fuck with people. He had in a goal to so sow chaos and and disorder. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, and he's like, and, and what would it take, what levels would I have to push in people, and what can I make them think aren't options? You know, just try and, try and make something out of it. And yeah, you can repair so many people by doing this. You're like, what did he do to Thor? And it's like, he made him an apathetic fool who wanted to eat loads of food just to see if he could. Also, I don't know how you'd write it to make it more interesting than that, but I don't know. That would be one way to try and reset and repair. Oh. Mm. Oh boy. It's all fucked. It's all fucked. Whatever happened to the Aquaman EFAP movies, it is still being edited as far as I know. It is stay. Don't worry, you will get it, and you'll get the Batwoman one. Uh, ones, rather. But remember okay. Muller Steiner, because an extra bumped his head on a sci-fi movie 40 years ago, it's okay that Thor's a little clown boy now. I wonder no. if that guy knows the legacies left behind. <laughs> I saw someone say that Excuse on a discussion. Someone else said he died in 2016, the guy who played that guy. Uh, uh. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, it's just, it was oddly specific for it to be a lie, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Sad face. Have you, any of you seen the Phil Mento video where he says Age of Ultron is better than Avengers 1? I am aware of that. Wow. Video. Yeah, it was always, really? it was in our I've backlog. Seen it. I've seen it. Um, he, I know that one of the arguments he makes is about the whole color grading stuff. Um, uh, okay. At least I think so, but I, I'm pretty sure he as well argues, like, the writing is better. I'm pretty sure. Nah, come on. Come on. Age well, of Ultron, it's, really? It's really great fodder for a, an EFAP coverage, but it's, it's just hard. <laughs> Age of Ultron? Yes. Yes. Okay, alright. Pretty sure it's in his... You know, like, where Age of Ultron succeeded, where Avengers failed, sort of shit. It's like, excuse me. I mean, it's more like the other oh. way around, really, <laughs> but... <laughs> okay. Man, alright. We. It's one of the videos that made me unsubscribe from him ages ago. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Who, uh, who's this? Tormento? The one that, when we covered oh, him first, my. people were like, leave him alone, he's got lots of interesting dude, things it's, to say. It's, hey, dude, people said that about Hightop. Like, yeah, that's... then we covered him twice. It was like, okay, yeah. he has a 
He says it, it happens every then, time. Dude, Let the tomorrow him finish, one was that. Yeah. That was it. Once he said the <laughs> Vietnam thing, it was over. <laughs> let him finish. No, go back. Go back. Let him finish too. Please don't let him finish. <laughs> don't even let him start. Good times. Don't let him spot. Don't let him spot. Oh, he spotted everyone. You Dumbos really need to look at Satina, World of Birds. Not only is it a good spec Evo, it has amazing stories about sapient species facing their death. Ooh. What's a spec Evo? Uh, it's a kind of Evo. Yeah, I guess it's a kind of Evo. I don't know. What a spec Evo is Sounds like Rags is satisfied with that answer. So we... <laughs> I'm still processing. <laughs> I I'm not sad. You know what? I'm fine to move on. I don't I didn't really care that much. It's one of those things you care about if the answer comes quickly, but you it, it takes a while to get an answer, then you're like, I you oh. know, I just I didn't know I care that much. Chat says a spe species evolution or sp speculative evolution. One of the two. There you go. Oh, that's, okay. That's the fastest I could come up with. I really like that. I should have known what that was. Well, Spec you didn't. Evo. No, you're stupid. Get fucked. Any Bibleridian fans in chat? Fuck you, just call you guys the nerds. Any, any, you mean Christians? <laughs> <laughs> fans of the Bible? Meridian? The Bible. Bible. <laughs> Bible. I've read the Bible. While watching Thor, my eyes kept drifting away from the screen and I began to zone out thinking about my taxes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what a great sign. <laughs> Uh, favorite original track from Stranger Things Season 4, I think I Wouldn't Remember Me Either, is super underrated as a track. I don't know the names of the tracks, I'm afraid. But I really Just, uh, like... how does it go? Uh, I... No, I don't, I don't even have, like, a favorite uh, from the soundtrack. From I like Stranger Things' soundtrack basically as a whole, like, all the seasons. I mean, I, uh, I think that the main theme is really great. I like it, it's so moody. It's fucking cool. And the whole intro is cool. It's so simple, but mm -hmm. sets the mood. I agree. Synthwave. Well, I guess that's something. Well, uh, that's probably not synthwave. It's probably a different um subgenre of like electronic. Oh, maybe it is. Hmm. I kept hmm. checking my watch to see how much time had passed. This film feels so long, but it feels not much happened. Yeah. I, I felt like the I... movie just went by like nothing. It was a bit it of a like, superposition oh. for me, where I could have told you I felt like it was lasting way too long and I wanted it to end, but also it was going so fucking fast. Yeah. Same here. Same here. I think um, I don't when know they were how fighting I in the... Uh, yeah. I think, well, maybe it's the same for you guys, but when they were fighting in the Shadow Realm, I was sort of there like, is this... This Wait, what was the end? Is this, like, yeah. is this the um, end or is this the second act? Yeah, point? when they What's were on, on the moon, I thought that that was the final fight, and we the movie would be over, and I would finally. Yeah, but then I remember that torture. in the trailer there was like some weird sort of temple place oh, that they okay. had gone to. So I was. That's why I was confused. I'm like, it feels like we're leading to an end point here, yeah, and yet we're not. We haven't done enough work. A lot of um, it's really difficult sometimes to argue pacing. Um. But like this one, everyone seems to think the pacing is off. Just, just completely. Pacing off. is uh, it's complicated because there is no strict structure that all films mm -hmm. should follow, and some films are gonna take uh, like the pacing. It's 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 sort of a gut feeling, like a something something's wrong, and that's that's not like great as a thing to appeal to, uh, qualitatively anyway. To me, it just um, seems like. But in this case, amount of like progress and information for time, like it can't have too much and you can't have too little it's like this fucking golden rule shit that's really hard to get and i don't think you'll ever satisfy everybody with it i mean that applies to everything but no um, but, um, not my dick this one just flies so fast yet it at does. the same time it's just like but we're not done yet though right there's an int intuitive understanding with a lot of films of no but we've still got more we need to do we've still got more work mm -hmm. um ahead of us narratively to be honest, even after this, I'd still look forward to any independent projects from Taika Waititi, though I'm scared for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I mean, you should probably be scared for that anyway. That's that's probably fair. Yeah, and, just uh, as part of Taika, the Marvel thing. I guess until I think otherwise, uh, he just 
the shot in the dark. I don't know what I'm going to get from him now. Yeah. I think it's that a, he thinks gamble. this film is funny. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man. Well, I'm sure he does think it's funny, yeah. Uh, hard to believe. Dare he think that. Uh, EFAP on EID. How did I get so lucky? Moeller is gay. Huh? Gay. EID. I don't know. <laughs> EID. Um, extinction. Oh, no. Interdimensional dinosaur. Whoa. Uh, what dinosaurs? I have been falling 30 minutes. Is one of my favorite jokes <laughs> in the MCU. Good. None of the jokes in this good movie good. come close. It's so funny. <laughs> it's great. There's loads of really fucking good jokes in Ragnarok. Yeah. Oh, what happened? I bet Taika thinks I mean... the MCU... There's just comic stuff, but cares if you ruin a dramatic moment or ruin a character. It's all just goofy comic nonsense anyway. Oh, who cares if he... I mean, you know that I he wouldn't feel dumb. that way when you actually talk to him about some of the stuff that happens in Jojo Rabbit. You know that you'd be like, why wasn't there a he joke here? Yeah. He'd be like, because that would be inappropriate. Yeah. Maybe it's just like... Because I forgot to put his own <laughs> project, but this is like a Marvel thing. And maybe there's a different attitude that he takes in terms of... Yeah, but, but Ragnarok, like, this is like, my Hitler, and I don't want him to be in. <laughs> he might genuinely not take the MCU seriously as artwork. Like, he might just be like, this is my money work. Um, but didn't didn't he... He pushed back against the Martin Scorsese thing, remember? Um, so I suppose we could go the angle if we want to get really thingy about it, that he's just trying to ensure that he has the work for the future. Yeah, right. I, I don't trust directors, or like... In this kind of industry, professionals public comments on anything like in, like ultimately Except, everything they uh, say could just be a thing that they had to say um i guess uh hmm. or a thing that they yeah. said for their career yeah maybe maybe uh jane talks about interstellar so christopher nolan movies exist in the mcu the dark knight trilogy exists in the mcu gore is batman in the mcu canon <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. It'd be funny if you watch this, like, yeah, yeah that begins. Uh, it's like, wait, wait a minute, huh? That that fella, he kind of looks yeah. like me. Fucking incest hello, dude. <laughs> I swear you just said fucking incest hello, dude. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. Both those things make me feel the same thing. Disgust. I see. Arousal. Uh, Ron Gilbert doesn't deserve hate for the art style of Return to Monkey Island. Return of Monkey Island. Let this man create his work and give it a fair chance. Return to Monkey Island is the new one that's coming out, right? I I don't know anything about this. I don't even know who Ron Gilbert was. I think uh oh I, he I'm pretty sure he's the guy who made uh, Monkey Island, and I think they're making a new one. Um. I, oh I I didn't I didn't even know that there was like any controversy surrounding that game. Yeah, I didn't know either. <laughs> got nothing for that one. Nebula immediately trying to kill the goats was by far my favorite part of the movie. Also, high rags. Hello. Um, I I did not appreciate her trying to kill the goats. They were just having a really stressful day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems a bit much to me because I'm envisioning like he gets the shot off and its brain is just blasted all over the walls, and I'd just be like, Yeah. Fuck and no. then the other one starts screaming even more. I don't well, think it resolves that anything. One. Just like, this doesn't... This, I get Didn't the, the Nebula... last one teach you anything? Violence begets violence. Exactly. Yeah. Gore the God Butcherer is one of the most metal names for a supervillain ever, not gonna lie. Um... Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm actually now thinking about... This, this might be a topic, so apparently there's, um... The the on the subject of the Last of Us remake, I think it's being sold for full price, but it doesn't have the multiplayer that the uh, original game had. It'll be worth it. Mm. Now, I don't know if this is a hot take, but uh, Last of Us had really great multiplayer mode. I really liked that multiplayer. I played it for like a year as like my main multiplayer game. I didn't play. The Last it. of Us has really cool multiplayer. It, well, what was really interesting about it is um. I think that the design of that game shined better in the multiplayer than it did in the single player because you are competing with other players with the same attributes as you. 
and you don't have the um, bad AI as a factor. So it's like you've got to deal with crafting and um, uh, inventory management um, against other players who also have the same tools. It's um it's really fun. I'm not quite sure why Last of Us 2 didn't have multiplayer, nor why you would do a remake of the first game without multiplayer. And I think it's hard to rationalize selling a remake of a game with less content for more money. I was really, uh, really well, miffed that they didn't that have movie. multiplayer in Doom uh, Eternal. I really enjoyed the 2016 Doom multiplayer. I think you Quite were... Uh, you were in the minority. I remember. Uh, I remember Total Biscuit didn't like it much at all. I remember at the time he really liked I the single player, but the multiplayer was not. not I a think the multiplayer is quite. Uh, there's a lot to like about the multiplayer for 2016 Doom. There's a lot of really I good maps, it, great modes. There's a good amount of balance and variety in the weapons that you choose, and I, I think it was really the well paced. Consolidation of resources. Um, like you know, if if you if you get the um, if you get the feedback, single player was great, multiplayer, eh. I uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to consolidate all of your resources into building a really good single player mode in your next one. Um, I guess in The Last of Us 2, it didn't really pay off. <laughs> mm. There's not a uh, there's not really a huge improvement in the mechanics at all. In some respects, like the dogs was not a um that was not a great is that we've talked about that, right? The dog enemies are—I don't think that they work pretty well. Like dog ever. enemies are just dogs in video games as enemies are often very poorly done. Annoying. They're just—they're they're they're often either annoying or they're just yeah. horrifically mm -hmm. balanced, or they—they're just frustrating. I think um, the way I would explain it is that in stealth games, it's—it's um, it's really into it's. It's not even intuitive, it just makes sense. It's really easy to account for sight. Depending on the sound engine in the game, it's uh, pretty easy to account for the sounds that you're making. Um, it's really hard to account for your odor or your scent. Um, you know, when, it, when having to deal with um, enemies that you need to avoid. Like, what, what, what can I do as a player to understand the scent that I have left behind? And how the dog is going to be able to track me through this environment? What am I meant to do? How how can I know this without using the um? Because I had that in the the, the, the super duper of, eyesight mode. Even involve scent though. Like a lot of my most annoying dogs come from from software games. They don't use. Oh, okay, right. What, what I would do is, if I was going to have scent and dogs in a stealth game, is they'd be like a special type of enemy. Um, they would, if you were in, within a certain proximity of them they would very slowly track you. But as long as you moved, you could easily move away from them because they would track you very slowly. And there'd be an animation where they like sniff around to tell if they're in range or not. But they'd uh, very well, slowly come after you. So you'd have to keep moving, though it wouldn't be necessarily difficult. You, you, could, sneak fat, you could sneak faster than they could move, but you would have to keep moving. You couldn't just sit down, which uh, I think could be a really well implemented. Because I th I think I agree that that's a better way to do it. Because in The Last of Us 2, they had a little warning prompt that would say, the dog has caught your scent. It's like, how is this not a failure of game design that you need text to this tell me? This needs to be way, di yeah, you need to make this diegetic, which is easy to do because yeah. dogs do things like move and make noises. And yeah, so... like if he went, rup, rup, and then they're like, I think he's got something. Yeah. And then that's, that's how you know, rather than literal text box, omnipotent text box saying, you have, the sense has been caught, um, you're in trouble. And someone might be like, well, isn't that what it is when it's a detected thing? It's like, I think detected is a little more, that one is still integrated better in that there's like a little prompt on their head. Um, usually they'll shout something if they've seen you or go like, huh? So like a lot of games will even allow you to turn off the detection signal because there's enough, there's enough features built into the game that you know um, when you've been found. Sound design is a big part of it, rather than the omniscient text box saying you have been noticed. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and remember the only way that you could uh, you could track what the dog it. knew was with the the super duper sight, like the eagle vision thing that showed you the dog uh, and your trail. But I can't I can't like tell that visually in the same way that if I walk out in front of a dude who's seen me, I can tell that he can see me because he's looking at me and I'm really close, you know.
And it, yeah, like it should be like Hitchman. that. Like, just have the dog. The dog is sniffing around. That's the animation visually. You could hear it sniffing for you. And if you need to exaggerate the sniffing noise a little bit just for the gameplay stuff, that's fine. That's, that's okay. Big, yeah, that's okay. All. You know, and and as long as you, it's that thing you hit where oh, now you're starting to encounter dogs every once in a while in these levels, which means that if they get too close, you you just you can't just chill in a spot forever. It gives you a little bit of pressure that you have to move around a little bit, um. And that can, you know, you can just tweak how difficult you want that to be. It could be not a big deal at all, or it could be a big one. It's up to you as the designer. That's where the uh, talent comes in. Um, well, I'm going to bounce now, because it's getting late. Goodbye, Shut up. All. Uh, Yeah, so I guess we, we just, you just let me know what, what the day will be for the, the other one. I sure will. And uh, uh, if Chad, if you want to see me and Fringy's opinions to the fullest already, Whoa. we did a Metal's Fortunate yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. Go check that out. I thought it was a very good episode. Three hours of I madness. Like it. it is three hours yeah. of madness, absolutely. Uh, I don't know which link you put down there. I don't know if it's the Forge one or not. I haven't checked. But uh, you'll f just look for Metal's Forge. You'll find it. Uh. I, I checked. You can find it with that wording. It's great. Uh, yeah. And now I'll well, go yeah. to bed. Uh, All righty then. <laughs> See, ya. See you around, guys. Bye bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Even more Shad, or else. I want Shad to be a regular. I'm, well, he's, he's That's kind of, fairly he's, regular. He's got his own show that he runs regularly. He can't be a regular on another show. Nobody does that. Yeah, it's That's not, ridiculous. It's not Look possible. The totality of shad content. There's a good amount of it. Yeah. Go, on seriously. a weekly basis. It's like it's like EFAP where you're like, I wish they did more episodes, and then you go, Oh, there's two hundred of them. Okay, I'll check that out. Do <laughs> it a few years. I wish to request the most aggressive chorus of blah, 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 the present host guest can muster. Also, salutations, Raggleton. Oh, hello to you. I don't think, I don't think you know what you're asking for. <laughs> oh, <damn>. Yours is <laughs> really weird. Weird. That was the most aggressive you got. That was... <laughs> <laughs> I, sure do it. I feel like you're holding back there, Mola. Hmm? No, I went as high pitch as I can. That's about as good oh, I can do. Oh, is that what they're asking? High pitched. Oh, well, aggressive. they said most aggressive. I suppose you can interpret that. Because most aggressive to me seems like, like screaming it very loudly while doing it. Um, I, I always thought that the, the joke with that, especially going back to good old uh, uh, Malignant, is where it, it's like, that's where it's at its peak. It's like mm. the, 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 yeah. the, the, the absurdity, the clowny nature of it. Like, the more intense it gets, the more high-pitched and silly yeah. it gets. Whereas screaming isn't really silly, it's more scary. <laughs> what if Chad just said y'all are you weird? I don't know why they would have said that at this point. Everything we're doing is we're very normal. We're very normal this people. Very normal. Um. <laughs> there you go. That sounds a bit more like uh, Jeremy, though. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, that's what my mind went to. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the idea that one person in chat right now is thinking. Who the fuck is Jeremy? <laughs> who is Jeremy and why does he go? <laughs> and then there are some people who will be like, oh, they be geeks and gamers. They'll be like, what? <laughs> Jeremy yeah, he from makes geeks that noise gamers. all the time, absolutely. <laughs> Every time he jumps into a call. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, no, the quartering Jeremy. And you're like, wait, how many Jeremy's are there? Every Jeremy. Too many. Clearly. Jeremy from CinemaSins, that's who we Oh, mean. no. We mean oh. Jeremy Clarkson. Oh, you know what? Cinema Sims would be improved pretty immensely if instead of the ding, it just went. <laughs> like yeah, but I think the Cinema Sims, uh, like, and when they all the theories, I I used to change the sound up a lot for a joke. It was really fun. <laughs> but when they removed the sin, it should go backwards. Like <laughs> that would be. Yeah. <laughs> that was, <laughs> you you know, it all backwards. That that was really good. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of my I don't know. It's just it seems to come naturally. Like uh yeah, I mean once my uh, when I was uh, I was living in student accommodation and one of my flatmates came in, he, he made a an oh, he was like, Are you recording? And I was like, Yeah, and he made the weirdest noise he could into the microphone. And I was like, Thanks for that. And then he said, Can that be the same counter? And I was like, Yeah. 
<laughs> that, that, whole, that whole audio got into the episode. That was uh, on Shrek 2, I believe. Wow. Um, I was going to mention, by the way, speaking of cinema sins, I'm actually like tired of how long it's taking for the culture to turn on. You know, like this popular uh, tweets or threads, or whatever, where they just go, cinema sins ruined an entire generation of critics. Just be like, I, I wanted yeah. to turn over to stop blaming Cinema Sins for everything. He hasn't been relevant for fucking ages. No one cares. Nobody talks about. Well, how many how many views do they get on their video? But the thing is, like, nobody's ever gonna cite them as inspiration. No, and 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 I guess as I pull it up, even though their videos still get a good amount of view, well, uh, not as good as they used to be. Every single thing they've released in um. The last few months has been less than a, a million views, but I mean, still, it's like hundreds of thousands of views. But, but yeah, you're right. Like, despite they're kind of like the avatar of um of like movie, you know, yeah, everybody, right. everyone knows the about them. Nobody, no one like latched onto it. They're nobody's favorite channel. Yeah, it'd be like oh, maybe Transformers, ruined, like, <laughs> yeah. Transformers ruined movies, I, and you'd be like, did it? Really like them. Um, for a long time, I really enjoyed watching their videos. I don't really understand what I got out of them now. Because I remember, um, right, like, my, my art got into, like, this is how I started, right? Like, I, I wouldn't have been able to make a series on them if I wasn't, like, pretty deep into them at that point, um, having realized that they actually kind of suck. Um, yeah. But my art started with, like, Honest Trailers videos. They're really funny, and they are. They're really well written. They're really good comedy. Actually, maybe they're not anymore. I don't know. I haven't watched them in a while. But, like, they definitely used to be. Um, and then uh, I started watching cinema since they're like, they're like, okay, if I want, like, they're, they're longer, so if I need, but they're not as good, so like, um, and then eventually I just started wanting that more content so much that I started to prefer cinema sense to honest trailers, and eventually it became like the channel I watched most, and then I started shitting on them. The, the one thing that the comment that they made, um, that, that was like, hmm, that, that really got me going on these guys aren't actually very good, are they? Was uh, you guys remember the shot at the, at the beginning of Force Awakens where you see the sh the silhouette of a star destroyer in front of a planet? Yeah. Um, he says, "Why is this star destroyer's shadow so big on this planet?" <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't tell you myself. I don't know how. I have no clue why that would be the case. Are you memeing or? Yeah, I, I, I am memeing. <laughs> I figured, yeah. <laughs> it was so played so straight, I couldn't tell. It's all in the delivery. It is I'm all Only in pretending the to be retarded. <laughs> Ooh, Jokes like on Thor. them. Except he's Much like, uh, I wish it was pretend. You need a vital organ or limb replaced. Which do you choose? Wait for someone to die so you can have it. Or growing an identical clone of yourself and taking said vital organ. So well, um, surely um, someone's going to die with it, right? Yeah, an identical clone of myself um, would be a person. Yeah, I think that's yeah, exactly. I can't take that from is. them. So yeah, I do believe an identical clone of myself would. That, so that would just be murder at that point. Um, yeah. So like, like you and, know, in the same way that yeah. like you, you don't have full control over your kid's autonomy. You don't have like a clone is the same thing as just having a kid own my clone the clone owns himself if he's like sentient and alive you know and um and capable of making choices um your clone would be and, if, if, and, if, we're, if we're talking about scientifically feasible cloning here rather than like mm -hmm. um you've popped into a machine and like a duplicate has popped out who is like an exact copy well, of you I mean, at this point in your life even then they're their own person but like that's a separate thing um, if we're talking about like scientifically feasible cloning, where you just create someone ident uh, genetically identical to yourself, they're going to be less similar to you than like an identical twin would be, because they have grown up in a completely different context at a different time. Um, they well, yeah, they're they're, they're, they're biologically you, but they're not you. Yeah, they're not they're not you. They're just a different yeah, person. Yeah, well, like an they are, will be. They, um, I think genetically they'll be more similar to you than an, an identical twin would be. However. Um, I'm not sure though. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that would be 100% genetically identical, right? Isn't well, that the whole I don't point? Know how of clone? The cloning process is. Well, I thought the be... question was that they were like a. <laughs> I don't know oh, well, the I... cloning process. Why would you even say that? That's it's a well, hypothetical. Like, thought... Well, as in like no, as in like I'm talking about like the perfection of the cloning like, process. Has, cloning perfection has happened. happened. Um, it's yeah, no, I don't like, like that's cheap, right? And I don't know yeah. if like a cat's 
a clone is more similar is more genetically similar than a like just an identical uh twin cat because like the the like the both processes I'm going to go ahead like, and assume this is not based on our code. reality because it involves just taking the life of a human clone. Well, like I don't think humans have been cloned, but it's plausible, I think. I don't see any reason why they couldn't be. I don't see why it wouldn't be plausible. Yeah, no, this is, um, this is not a thing that you have an option to do, is my point. IRL, it's yeah, hypothetical. We know that, yeah. it's a hypothetical, yeah. yeah. So, you don't need to worry about like, finding out from real life how viable cloning processes are. I don't trust the cloning. <laughs> the whole point was just that, like, this person who is not you will be less similar to you than, like, just a twin would be if you had an identical twin. Oh, I mean, I figured they would be more similar, but I don't think it matters. Um, no, but... like less. Um, and if we're talking about, like, who they are as a person... They oh, grew up I in mean, highly different circumstances to you. I thought I Whereas, thought you said genetically. I thought no, uh, isn't the whole point. It's like the other than genetically, possibly right. They might be more similar, but I don't know if they would be more similar. I well, know. I guess at that point, it, it depends on um that that would inform our perspective on what makes a person a person. How much of it is your experiences, and how much of it is just like how your brain works. Like in terms of the kind like... of personality they would develop and the kind of decisions they would make, um, they will be more different to you than a twin would likely be. I assume well, when it was uh, raised in similar circumstances to you. Well, so what I'm saying is it would be interesting to observe the similarities and differences and then try and figure out how much of who you are is down to your genetics versus how much of it comes down to your lived experiences. Also, I wonder how long it's... I, I wonder if embryos can be frozen. Um, like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, 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 the Cryogenically. No, not that it. word. I'm, it's a basic word that I know. Uh, it's just not coming to my brain. When a sperm goes into an egg and the... the Zygote. No, like the... What that process is called. Not fertilize. Inception. Fetus? Inception? Not conception. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, conception. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, or inseminated is another one, right? Before. That's a process yeah. of fertilization. So, oh, yeah. so, oh like, right. I wonder okay, if yeah. an embryo could be freeze to, uh, frozen, freeze, fucking hell, uh, frozen after conception, um, because then you could have genetically identical people being raised at very different times. Because um, I've I've frozen um, some 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 my some my some my stuff, so I can have kids maybe, um, and that lasts for like seventy years. So that's neat. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I thought it was clear, wasn't it? My opinion. Um, I think we've answered the question, though. It seems like we're all in agreement that, like, killing the clone would just be murder. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so when they present the option of, I can wait for a, a vital organ to come from, you know, someone dying, some horrible accident, you know, the standard way, just organ donor list, uh, versus growing a clone and killing it and taking that organ. I just feel like, yeah, I'll opt for the former. Yeah. I yeah. would consider it unconscionable to grow a fucking human being just to steal their organs and let them die. I just feel like, Well, Oof. have you seen, we talked about how fortuitous that we talked about Kenobi, and now we're talking about this, but have you seen The Island? Yes. I, I think I have. Good that's it's Michael shit. Bay. It's Michael Bay. Like, I don't shit. know. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, who well, knows, right? Who knows? Like the, the standards now, I wonder how, like, Transformers 2... Well, no, Transformers 2 is, like, absolute nonsense. But I would be so curious to see where Transformers 2 would stack up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Like, where does it rank compared to Phase 4 projects? Interesting. Mm. Uh, Sword in comic is a symbiote... So are the Shadow Monsters, was made by God of Symbiotes. Yeah, but they probably don't have access to the symbiote. Yeah, they're missing E on those words. Oh, uh, but I guess to answer the question, I'm, at, I'm guessing that um, I don't know what the nature is with Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, like symbiotes. Or oh, the third Godskin boss. Yeah, he does kind of look like the Godskin lads. Should hang out with them. Disney Star Wars seems to really not like using aliens. Well, they're fine with using aliens that look like humans. All right. Disney Star Wars really doesn't like aliens, and it's, um, I don't like that. It upsets me. Hmm. 
Wait, Bill I Nye was the... Davy Jones? Bill Nye and Bill Nye are two different people. <laughs> one's an actor, one's a science sometimes. bro. It was weird for me because um, Bill Nye uh, was the one that I knew really well first. I didn't really know Bill Nye at all. More of an American culture um, thing, I think. Um, right. And so when people would even partially mention someone called Bill Nye, I'd be like, I thought it was Bill Nye. And, <laughs> and they're like, no, it's the yeah, science and then, guy. And then we're Bill both Nye. just dramatically confused because it's just like we're not at all talking about the same thing. Um, I wonder how different a person's name could be before you stop, like before it's possible to start making that mistake. Like Steve Steve Johnson, I thought you, I thought he was called Dave Smith. John Smith. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. <laughs> that just goes past this invisible eye, you know. Uh, is killing a god like eating Pringles? Once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I will. I vow to now kill all the gods. Like, okay. Like, I've forgotten go. his name. The character in the first episode of Smiling Friends. That felt good. Oh. Uh, fuck. Why don't I remember his name? The one they picked Desmond. By the end. Desmond, that's it. Yeah. Desmond, that's his name. Yeah. That's what the Smiling Friends are here. <laughs> yeah, that was important, that impression. It had to, it had to be made. Desmond! Desmond? The smiling friends are here. Imagine if a person of different color wronged you and you decide to kill all you know. What? I already made that joke <laughs> in the stream. Different, what what's are you, the, wait, what's the, the, the joke? Dialogue. Um, the gore was, gore was wronged by a god, so he decides to kill all gods. Oh. I, right. I referenced the... Uh, That's why I became a racist, yeah. Yeah. It's, I can't stop thinking about this. One of my favorite lines of dialogue in anything ever, and I never hear anyone else reference it. Pretty good. Hey, new EFAP fan, and people. catching up on the last two months. I know you guys expressed disinterest in The Boys Season 3, but I hope you cover it at some point still, as the finale was contrived and lame. Wow, that makes us really want to see it. Um, well, I can start I giving reports. I have seen the first two episodes, gradually going through it whenever I got food to eat. That is, that is the uh, process in which I throw on some random shit sometimes, and that is currently the boys. That's how I did Stranger Things. And then I was like, oh shit, it's actually like not, not cringe. Uh, the boys, though, is pretty cringe. Um, it's better than season two, the first two episodes I've seen, but they're still, like, um, more so they're willed at this point. I just don't know how anything fucking makes any sense. You, you guys know how, like, Homelander, they've got that leverage on him from the, the airplane footage. Yeah, that. like all of the everything to do with that in season two is fucking ass. But like in this season, they still got it. And then like they're trying to figure out who's going to join the seven. And the the bosses of Vort put Starlight as a co-captain to piss him off, I guess, or to try and get a better image for Vort. And Homeland is like annoyed by this, um, but he suggests the Deep rejoin. And then she's like, "I'm not gonna." have the fucking guy who mouth raped me on the team and then homeland is like oh yeah well you, you know you can't stop me and then she's like i'll release the video and then he's like go ahead release the video because then i'll have nothing to lose and i'll just kill and destroy everything and i was just like is that really the the that that's the conclusion of the leverage we had on him in season two, he just said, I, I don't care. I thought that was the conclusion in the first place, though, where he said, I'll kill everyone, and then Maeve was like, yeah, but they'll all hate you, so... That's what that's I'm saying, like, it's me. so unsatisfying that we've... Because basically, we define then we've lost our leverage on Homelander in season three. He's scary again. Yeah. Like, oh, for fuck's sake. Why would you introduce the leverage and then just say, He just nah, says, I don't you know care what? anymore, Because they didn't know what they... Yeah. They never knew what they were going to do with it. Which is odd, when I think they knew before season two ended that they were going to have a third season like they and they had to have known because the show was so popular there's also like just classic lame writing to me um you know the 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 character who blows people's heads up you know what they were uh, yes yeah so she and huey have been working together and they're really good friends for a whole year that's the gap between season two and three and then like this guy he just comes in the office and he's like, i want to speak to her and refers to her by a name that's not her name and huey's like that's strange and then, like, when she's leaving work, the guy is again there, like, hey, and calling her by her name is not her name, that he follows them. 
they go into an alley and then that guy is like we've got to tell the world about what happened to you and me and she's like no and then they get into a fight and she explodes his whole body and Huey sees all of it and he's like oh my god she's a soup and she's evil and I was just like yeah I, 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 thought I guess that that, that, I thought the whole point of the setup in season 2 was going to be that that would be unknown for a while it's not um it's just a really boring way to get that information revealed like oh well yeah. there you go some some person from her past comes up to her and is like you're the person that you're not saying you are Rah, oh no you blew me up and he weasel the whole thing all right there you are i guess um so i don't know uh this is this is all very you know like i'm 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 watching it not watching it, not not too interested. I'll probably go through the season and then just tell you guys about the stupidest things that I see. But like, I've, I'm just not too invested in doing like an EFAP episode for it, you know. And you guys yeah, haven't even seen it, really. so <laughs> this, this is probably not going to work out. Uh, but I've seen people say like they were enjoying the season up until the end, and I'm already like, I, I already don't think it's well written, and I haven't gotten anywhere close to the end. So, oh no. They do, um, there's just a lot of, like, really, just, just, like, basic as fuck writing, where they're like, hey, Butcher, Temp V is a thing, and then Butcher's like, I don't fucking want to be, like, you disgusting assholes, and goes to throw it away, but then doesn't, alright, and then his next mission involves, like, like, fucking around with soups, and so it's like, yeah, you're probably gonna need that Temp V, because you wouldn't want to get killed, and I was just thinking to myself, like, well, but, isn't that what he's always done? He's dealt with soups his whole life. He never had Tempe before. And then they put him in a situation where he's he's close to getting killed by a soup. And so he has to take the Tempe. And I was just like, yeah, I guess that's the way you do it, I guess. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I just like That wasn't interesting to me at all. I was just like, Butcher, you want to go after the soups, don't you? Well, they, 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 they can hurt you. So what if we made a storyline where you end up getting a soup power? Whoa. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in seeing what they do with this soldier boy, just because I do like Jim. So, um, I was telling Jay about this, actually. You want to know one of his lines? The first time you get any footage of him at all, it's it's in, like, uh, 19, like, 50s or something. This is MAGA country? No, uh, but, you know, like, I, I wouldn't expect... Surprised they eventually go with something like that because it's the boys they write to you so fucking on the nose. But he says, um, to a girl, he keeps trying to get in like a girl's pants and she's like, nut, nut, nut. And eventually he's like, oh, you know, maybe if you were a little nicer, you'd find a man and you can stop being Captain Lesbo. Like, what? And then he goes, you should smile more. <laughs> and I was just like, Fuck it, Al. <laughs> you guys are so good at this. I like it because it's so subtle. Yeah, they're just really, really good at it. And, and, and I, I think there's some people out there who just be like, God, this is so fucking biting. I love it. The satire is so top-notch instead of just being like, wow, that was easy. These are misogynisms. So yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep updating you on my adventures with the boys. But 1.5 hours in and we're at the opening scene. Can't wait for part two next week and hearing this super chat read out next week after that. Hello, Rag of the Future. Uh, hi. You were wrong. Well, they were right about half of that. Yeah. So, about me in the future. Yeah, that was also true. The only part they missed was when we'd read mm -hmm. that message out. You know, they did pretty well. That's, that's two out to, of three. I want to scorn them. Go, go. Scorns are coming out soon. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Infinity scorns. Oh. Uh. Hi, Rags a Rock. Oh, hello. I want Shad's knights on here, please, please, please. All of them. How many knights does he have? Is it three? Remember, I think there's a maximum of four on his uh, watch parties and stuff. I do. Uh, Love and Thunder is a two-hour SNL skit. Yeah, I agree. It, uh, it's starting to get to the point where it's really hard to escape into the world of the MCU, you know? It feels all very tacky and fake. Uh, Fringy's rant about wanting more aliens over humans is the Transformers community in a nutshell. We're pretty anti-human most of the time. Hi, Rags. Hello. I think that makes Yeah, I mean... Humans <laughs> suck. 
want to see more of the Transformers than human Karen. Yeah. What? You don't love Sam Witwicky? You know what? Next not, thing, not next thing you know, Fringy will be saying, "Oh, I don't want to see Godzilla. What I want to see is a bunch of people talking in offices and some military guys, and I want drama. I want family drama from some people." I don't want to. I don't want to see the big monster fights. That's not why I. That's not why I watch Godzilla movies. Yeah. How Jane have cancer when Cradle from AOU exists? I mean, did they explicitly say that thing can cure cancer. No, That's... it just seems to have some crazy healing properties. Is all. Just if you're being as good faith as possible, you. I have to assume that with all the advancements we have, none of them do anything about her cancer. When in reality, they didn't bother to check. I don't care. She has cancer. Cancer kills people. Shut up. A child in battle equals how to make a psychopath. Yeah, it's kind of something that this film does multiple times, and they don't, yep. like, ever... It's kind of really fucked up, the idea. It's I mean, at the... I, are, can we just talk about it now if we're in the post discussion phase or the I mean it, there are going to be some people who go through the movie our POV strictly All right. made it this far so I don't see why not or dies well in fact I was, I was considering <laughs> wrapping up very soon anyway so uh. Uh, fair enough yeah I could use a lay down I suppose um Thank you for the content. It made time fly by when I was in the military. A bit late and not much, but I felt the need to send some love. Oh. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad we we can help the time go by by talking about movie, television, video game. Hey, maybe we'll do one on uh, Gorn, if everyone ends up playing. I will probably... Um... The only thing I foresee stopping me from playing that when it comes out is the reviews come out and they say either, no, we've been misled, it's a horrible lie, non -finished and this and is stuff. like scam, or it's not finished, yeah. Because um, if else... it comes out and people say that it's just it's just not in a playable state, then I won't play it. But it, I mean, it's looked pretty good based on what I've seen. I It seems like a nice, slowish sort of paced, semi-puzzle, atmospheric sort of... Yeah. Walk around the light shooty game and I, I could I'm down for that. I think I would really enjoy that. I uh from what I've seen, the mechanics seem incredibly simplistic, which is just you know, information. I don't know what that means. It yeah. looks yeah, it looks like a game that isn't gonna be particularly difficult or complex, but it's gonna be engaging enough to keep you going from environment to environment, which is I could go for that. Yeah. If it's not too expensive. Hello there, everyone, and hi, Ragskadoodles. Hello. I turned drinking age today, so here's a brew on me. What are some underrated movies that this toxic brood would recommend I watch? Long live Rhino Milk. Underrated movies? Uh... Hmm. Chronicle. Underrated movies. I don't think that's underrated. Everyone well, seems like, to say really no, good like, things well, about this thing, it. Right. So underrated can mean two different things when people say it, as in like underseen oh, and really, under yeah, underappreciated or underpraised by people who know about it. Isn't like people always say that's a seven when it's a ten, or no one's heard of this ten, but the people who know it they like it. Well, I guess I would say prestige. <laughs> that's oh. a good one. Uh. I'm I'm trying to think of the other side. Movies that people say or don't have as good of a reputation as they should. Uh oh, uh coming. What's it called? Patriot. Well, yeah, I with the that, context that it's often shot down to like, you know, it is often very unfairly maligned, yeah. People say that movie is way worse than it actually is when it's pretty Why is everyone saying hood fairly good. I, I know of that movie, movie. But I've never seen it. Yeah, it's uh, that yeah. That came out a long time ago. EFAP, that's true. Ben Horizon. I mean, most people have good things to say about it, except like Red Light Media. Yeah, I assume it's kind of a bit of a sci-fi classic, a horror classic. 
Someone said Thor, Thor Love and Thunder. Thunder. Hey. No. <laughs> no, how dare you. Stardust. I can agree and... with that. You'd think that movie would just be a Wait. lame, but I remember liking it. Really? Yeah. Because I've seen that. I'm aware of that film, but I, and I remember enjoying it as like an eight-year-old. The 2007 but... film? Oh god, you yeah. were eight when you saw it. I, I was not feel old. Uh, the... There's a guy, there's a, there's a thing in that film, I'm pretty sure, that would qualify. I, I'm going to ask you this every time, Fringy, and you're going to answer it every time. What's the guy's name from 2012? <laughs> uh, Gordon. There's a, that death in, in Stardust that always annoyed me. Um, I, I almost want to collect all the films that do that and make a top 10 list. Top 10 noble characters that get horrible deaths that the fucking movie doesn't seem to notice. Yeah. Heroes that the film that doesn't understand are heroes. Like, uh, I would, I would love to watch it to revisit the film because, like, I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I don't actually remember really anything that happens in it. I remember enjoying it, but since it's been so long, I guess I couldn't say if it's actually good. I can't even say if it's underrated, to be honest with you. Like, I don't know if, how people a rate it. A film that I would really like to for us to, I, I, I would like to see it again, but particularly for EFAT movies, is we need to see Mortal Engines. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's an underrated film. Ah, uh, I'm joking. I've not actually seen it. I have no idea. Okay, all right. It, it, it's bad. It is mega EFAT movies material. It's like one of. The, I think it's. I think it's the biggest movie flop ever. Yeah, it's one of the biggest flops of all time. Yeah, it lost like two hundred million dollars, which is pretty funny. nuts. Well, it, it was such an expensive movie, and yet, even when you see, like, that trailer, like, back before it came out, you just kind of get the impression, like, really? Like, that much money for this? Are you sure about that? <laughs> like, Are it's kind of the impression you get. Yeah, I don't know how he was able... I mean, he is Peter Jackson, but still, it's... Yeah, so, um, it was... Uh... The film cost between 100 and 150 million, not including marketing. Uh, and it grossed eighty three point seven million, so it lost the studio an estimated one hundred and seventy five million dollars. And that, and yeah. the thing is, that movie looks f expensive. Yeah, you 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 watch that movie, and you could see that this was a very pricey uh, production. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't and good. Uh, though it looks like adjusted for inflation, the biggest box office bomb of all time is John Carter. Oh, I saw that one. That's another one. Well, oh, I don't even know if that would work for, because I don't. I, I think it's just standard action movie kind of stuff. I don't think it's. I don't know if it was just lack of interest or it just sort of had that middling kind of meh quality to it that no one really went for because i watched it and i liked it for just being a standard sort of action movie i but... don't think it would i don't think the expectation from disney was that that was going to be a standard action film they wanted that to be a franchise um, um yeah it cost a lot of money to make they planned sequels um and yeah it just didn't pan out i i'm pretty sure that it was um yeah that, yeah that was a big bet for them and it, it just didn't didn't pan out for them hey bly manor uh... The rating for that should be higher than it is. Yes. Yes, it should be. Because that's incredible. Um, Duke Longschlong of Mubefordshire Lane. Have you given any thought to a smash fap of Masahiro Sakurai's Ultimate Smash? <laughs> and there's less on your plate? Would be a game fap for the ages. I fringy <laughs> bird seed for the good doctor. Oh wow, that's changing it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I I could see us playing. Sometime, yeah. Maybe Shmish. Uh, Sif's arm Spanish. was not in Valhalla. Poor payoff. Zero out of ten. I think they would would have done that. You think they would have done just anything else with that character? Hello, Brood. As someone who personally didn't enjoy Thor Ragnarok, could you explain slash point out a prime difference in the way Taika Waititi handles the comedy in that film versus Love and Thunder that makes the latter feel more ridiculous by comparison? I feel like we did it a couple of times. 
Um, yeah. I think it's knowing when not to try and be... They say wisdom is knowing when you can't be wise. Sometimes good comedy is knowing when it's time to not make a joke. Uh, yeah, and, and more than that... Um... But one of the obvious ones to me seems like the plays, right? There's... Why does it happen in Ragnarok? It happens because, uh, narratively speaking, the realms are becoming in chaos. Why? Because Odin's not in charge of them anymore. Why? Because Loki's trapped him somewhere and he's taken his place. Okay. And this this little play, which is, I guess you, you could argue, has value in and of itself as a joke, just because it's like a, a, a stupid version of what we actually saw, but uh, of a scene that turned out not to be true, right? That Thor in Thor The Dark World was sad that Loki had... Uh, died for him, but in that same film, they reveal that Loki faked him out. He didn't actually die there. So now you got Matt Damon and Liam Hemsworth recanting that scene um, and making a show of it while Odin is appreciating it when you know that that's actually Loki, and then you know that Loki probably wrote this and forced it to happen to have everyone appreciate how fucking great Loki is when he's not actually dead. He's enjoying all of this. It, it, it all... Has a narrative binds character motivated. Meanwhile, in the new one, it's literally just. Do you remember when they did the play before? This is another one. There's, okay, there is more to it than that. Like there is not really. As in, like I, I like the concept. I oh, no, actually, I like the execution of the visual gags of like, hey, look, this is a, um, a stage pr uh, production of Thor where they have the transform and the hammer moving slowly on a string but contextually the way they justified making those jokes doesn't work and it does like if it was like um if this was a play that had been put on for children about thor right like hey kids today we're gonna learn about the exploits of thor right and it's whatever right i could see the jokes working i could see the transform and then their outfits get ripped off and they've got their thor outfits below and their loki outfit below there's stuff in there that's it's more it's more than just hey you remember this this happened good before. point Jay if you change it it becomes a different thing. What do you what do you mean? The question was what's the difference? I just gave well, no, it. As in, like, no, <laughs> but um, what you said that what you said that there was nothing more to it than that, hey there was a play and there was a play before. Correct. I, there are visual gags in there. Um, the reason I don't like the gags is the context in which they are portrayed. But I, but there is there is more to it than just hey there was a play before. The visual gags are something new. Why wouldn't that be encased in that point that there was a play before? Because it's more so than it's. That's not just hey remember the play. This is a reference to that. That's that's another layer to the joke. No, it's you laughed at that other play. We're doing another one. So of course there's going to be new things in it. Like Melissa McCarthy playing Hella is a joke well, in and of then itself. There, and there is more to the joke than surely it's not just. It's it, the joke isn't simply hey you remember but that's this. That's the point. There's more to it in Ragnarok than there is in Love and Thunder. You saying that like it's just there because they did it before? Yeah. Because I I, I understood you saying um, that the entire joke was just it was a reference to the fact that they. I done think it. it happened as a result of writing a narrative in Ragnarok. I think it happened in Love and Thunder because it worked in Ragnarok. Yes, I agree with that. So that's the problem. And that's how he's written a lot of the stuff. Because uh, if you're asking, like, why is it you find that funny but not that? And it's like, a lot of the jokes, I would argue, in Ragnarok are very character-supported. I don't, I don't feel that way at all in Love and Thunder. Half the time, I don't even know if a joke is happening or not. Yeah. That's not just because people are out of character, but because I literally don't understand. Like, anybody delivering the lines, I wouldn't know. And then, of course, uh, yeah, the, the, um, the tonal the whiplash seems much worse. There's there's a bit of tonal whiplash in Ragnarok. I don't want to say like it's there's not the, any there at all, just because we've seen a way worse example. But I think they handled it better in Ragnarok. Um, the way with which Thor is just treated, as in um, he is allowed to walk a joke off, and um, he's allowed to still be cool and confident when a joke is made as it, it is in his expense in Ragnarok, whereas a joke at Thor's expense um, brings down Thor's mood in um, Love and Thunder. He he often feels worse, so and and they they feel more mean spirited as a result. Um, he he doesn't get to he doesn't get to be still like hey yeah that bad thing just happened to me anyway moving on that was kind of funny and goofy. He doesn't play along with it anymore. 
Um, I would even go as far as saying there are, like, I don't like the fact that he's defeated by an electric sort of brace on his neck in Ragnarok. Seems uh, really kind awful of visually. Really? Yeah. Um, this is kind of what I'm saying. Like, uh, this is like the evil Ragnarok where all the good stuff is drawn out of it and maybe the worst elements are all cranked to 11 and spread everywhere. Because um, in some ways, I guess, I can see how the same person made both films uh, when there's like architecture that's similar, but um, it just seems to me that so much more work was in Ragnarok for making it all much more cohesive. And that must be the difference, because, you know, there are some people out there who feel like they're the same, like in terms of how cringe. Uh, and I would just argue, yeah, a lot more work went into the joke writing. And I know that Taika's capable of writing good jokes. Very clearly. I don't know what the fuck is going on in this movie. If it's color we need, let's bring the rainbow. Isn't it funny it how read? like that doesn't really mean... Well, that's that. It felt like an ad read. Well, I mean, the whole... It's like you said, that that uh, that whole scene feels like, like an Skittles ad for... For a, yeah, well, I think it was for a broadband, uh, for broadband, right? <laughs> broadband yeah. service. Yeah, I think that's apt. Because now I'm like, bring the rainbow. Does she think that Mjolnir can open the Bifrost? Is that the joke? Makes makes that mistake. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, it's too much in this film. I don't understand. I didn't have this problem with Multiverse of Madness, by the way. I felt like it was very straightforward in how broken it was. Yep. Um, but this film, I have trouble sometimes pointing out what's not working because I'm not given the information I need straightforwardly. Uh, the way Love and Thunder is described, it sounds like y'all watched a season of Picard. Looking forward to more Majorica's mask metal. Bet the rags. Oh, yeah. Everything I hear about Picard makes me dread the day that I'm going to eventually end up watching it. Ew. Also, Fringy, look up Sandwich Eater Mr. Heavy Show on YouTube and you'll laugh. It's like 10 seconds. Sandwich Eater Mr. Heavy Show. Okay. Uh. What? I have to describe it to us. <laughs> what? It's uh it's it's Mr. Frog, um, but it's like Team Fortress and like the the uh the engineer is like this sort of weird little bug holding a, a giant sandwich and then Heavy scrambles in with very floopy limbs and basically does the Mr. Frog thing. That's neat. <laughs> Uh, 59 is a true EFAP classic. I revisit every so often. We got introduced to the Lef Resnick clown talent agencies, and of course, Yeb, also high rag. Hello. Oh, so that would be the misogyny EFAP then. Uh, Jenny Nicholson, whatnot. That's what Jeb got introduced, or was it, was it before that he got introduced? I could have sworn that's the Jeb introduction story. Uh, Lord Longbong of Mewshington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'll be a movie fap for the ages. Yes, I will wagsies. Just for the good boy. Hello. Um, there's a good chance. Check out Peter Jackson's Long Kong. Remember, a lot of complaints about that movie. Long. Takes too long to get to Skull Island. But what is the time spent on? Is it character? Is it plot? Is it good? Is it bad? We were talking about pacing. No? Wonder how well paced it is. I know there are people out there who think the Lord of the Rings is poorly paced. Jay. I didn't said that. I didn't say you said that. I didn't say that you said that you said that. And I didn't say that you said that I said that you said that. You're going in circles! I haven't said anything. I didn't say that you no, haven't you, said anything. No. Stop it! He hasn't said anything. <laughs> and uh, on that brain melting note, what I'll do is just collect up what brain messages melting. we had left. I imagine it should take us three hours to get through the rest of Thor, and then we will go through all remaining super chats from this stream, and then the ones from that following one next, either Saturday or Sunday. Hard to say. 
when it will be. What I do know, though, and I just remembered, is I'm pretty sure Adam and Stitch's 200th stream, their show, is on next Sunday. Oh, Beans. wow, that's exciting. I may have already agreed to be on that, at least partially, so I don't know if we'd be able to, to run an EFAP on the same day, so maybe it has to be Saturday. I don't know. Mm. We'll figure something out. I mean, you know, emergency, I'm pretty sure they run for 12 hours, right? So, in a sense, I would be able to go on there anyway. Then that'll be a long day, and that's okay. What we do on the But, before we, uh, before we go, uh, Jay, do you want to, do you want to tell people about what you're up to and what you're doing? Yes, um, I am hoping to make a video on this film. I also hope to make a video about Kenobi, and I don't think, it's still a chance that that'll happen, but it'll be like a later down the road at this point if it does. Um, and I, uh, oh, that'll be on my channel. I'm currently um, deep into working on a video about Brickleberry, which conveniently makes a lot of the same mistakes as Thor Love and Thunder does, and the jokes aren't funny. And that a lot of the jokes are just, hey, lol, look how shit this character is. In fact, like, I just finished my section on why those jokes aren't funny. Um, which felt really weird to just, like, describe all the problems. Go, go make a video describing the problems with Thor Love and Thunder before having seen the film. I feel like, oh, I just made a video describing all these. Anyway, I'm also doing a podcast with Metal on my second channel called Jay and Metal's Star Trek Podcast. You guys, you guys like metal. You'll enjoy that. You're still sticking with that name, huh? It's funny. Um, yeah, yeah. There's Sorry. also yeah, uh, actual art is. on that podcast now. Like the the thumbnail art is now fi finalized, so it looks nicer. Have you abbreviated the podcast? What, what do you mean abbreviated? <laughs> I mean, would it be jamstup? Jamst, jamsp. <laughs> Jansp. You should Jam. just call it Jam. And then really? we're like, what, is, what does it mean? It's like, Jay and Mel. And we, we're not just going to do Star Trek. We're going to do all kinds of things, that maybe. That's a good idea. Call it Jam. Great name. I like Chris Morris. Oh, that's, it's, it's very fun. Fun. It's a very good show that we make. Very good. Call it JFAP. Good to do, yeah. <laughs> maybe I will. Uh, Rags, Brainy, anything you guys wanted to say before we go away? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I haven't really got anything. Well, all I'll say is that I look forward, as time goes on, to being able to talk more about the work I've, I've been doing. But there's... That's nice when you can do that, isn't it? Yeah, but for now, I have to just not and keep working on it. Uh, it's a large lad, as they always are. But, uh... Yeah, you can expect us to return to your screens in probably a week's time to finish off talking about Thor, Lorv, and Thorinder. I will be on Real BBC on the Tuesday. Then I think, wait, I'm not sure exactly what's happening with the catch up for uh, the Supercats that came in on the last open bar, but you'll probably see things about that too at some point. Um, oh, shit, I think I've. I'm, I'm, I, I, Thought of something else that might be happening next. Well, man, I'm gonna need to write a schedule. Anyway, thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you very much for the kind donation and the chat about the wonderful present and future of MCU. You guys, you all, you have goodbye. Yeah, catch you all later, everybody. Bye. Mm-hmm. See y'all later. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, he's back. <laughs>